Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. You came on a good night. My reality show is here, so welcome to it. You're on it now. I'm Kathy Griffin, a potty mouth comedian who won't take shit from anyone. Can I have your autograph? Wait in line. A lot has changed since last season. My touring schedule is out of control. I'm playing bigger venues, and my reality show got nominated for an Emmy. And I thought that Hollywood had finally taken notice. That's right. I'm an Emmy nominee and also an Emmy loser. I was beaten by those ass of Extreme Home Makeover. This and if that wasn't bad enough, my marriage ended. And there went six years of my life. I went on Larry King to set the record straight about what really happened between Matt and me. It actually bothers me that people um, think he cheated or I cheated or he's gay or I'm gay or all these outrageous things that I read. It's a hard thing to get beyond. I actually care that people know that I took my marriage very, very seriously. So like most celebs on hard times, I pulled myself together, slapped a smile on my face and embraced my inner publicity whore. But I'm not the only one who's been working the publicity machine. My assistant Jessica is a big reality star now. So she needs her own assistant. Kathy Griffin's office. Jessica found Tiffany on MySpace, and now, as it turns out, <laughs> Tiffany is as much of a diva as Jessica. I'm gonna go home. I hate this hotel. Wow. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I also hired this guy named Tom to be my dog sitter. Oh yeah. And then, since nobody else wanted the job, I promoted him to my tour manager. Here he, here he. Kathy Griffin show tonight. Now I'm realizing that Tom has no qualifications for this job and can't do anything right. Hey Tom, do you have a highlighter on you? A marker? I just have a sharpie. Well, a sharpie is going to cover the words, Tom. <laughs> But through good times and bad, I can always count on my parents. And even though they're not getting any younger, they're still finding ways to get drunker. You're going to a gay bar? I had $4 wine. Kathy. Between my parents' wine bill and my supersized staff, my monthly nut is getting even bigger. So I gotta take any gig I can get. One, two, three, go! I have a show. If you'd like, I'll be happy to give you tickets. Let's have a chili cook-off, mother Ow! Ow! Life may be bumpy, but one thing is for sure. For now, my feet are still firmly planted on the D-list. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you. Cause I ain't no ass to kiss when you're living life on the D-list. You know her from Suddenly Susan, stand-up comedy specials on HBO, Comedy Central, Bravo, and countless talk shows. Sell it, goddammit, sell it! I'm trying, I'm trying. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin! Thank you so much for coming, you guys. All right, first of all, all these celebrities love to confront me, right? And let me tell you something, once you've had Whitney Houston do in your face, you learn, you get security and you learn and you change your locks. Okay, so I think it's good she's getting divorced from Bobby, don't you? I think that's a good thing. I do, although I will tell you, I miss that show. I love that show being Bobby Brown. I love it. Bobby! Bobby! That crazy crack voice. I could listen to it all day. And she and Bobby would close the doors on the camera because they'd be going in the bedroom to have sex, right? <laughs> and the sex sounded like this. <laughs> Company meeting in the living room. <laughs> Is anyone down there? <sighs> Company meeting in the living room. Show a little enthusiasm. Okay. Matt used to come with me on a lot of jobs, but now that he's not around, I need some new staff to pick up the slack. So I hired Tom and Tiffany. And today, my A-list sized staff is prepping me for two upcoming gigs. The first is a corporate film for Redkin. Okay, so it's a film for the Redkin sales reps. Yes. Right? And, and some, some hairstylists oh are gonna good. be there. Yeah. By hairstylists, you mean gay guys who worship me? Yes. yes. Okay. Tom, do you know anything about this? What are Redkin products, Tom? What is it, what is it hair? Hair and makeup? No. Oh, oh Tom. You You've humiliated me in front of the Redkin people. <laughs> Tom can screw up all he wants with Redkin, but I've got the biggest gig I've ever had coming up. I'm playing Carnegie Hall in New York City. It is ironic and yet typical that in my life, a typical week in my life is I do a Redkin hair product ride along industrial video, and then a few days later, I sell out a Carnegie Hall. Who's on the list to come so far? Uh, Bar Walter's hair person. 
Okay, what? Yeah, yeah. he likes you. Barbara Walters hair person? Mm -hmm. Not Barbara Walters? No. no. That's it. That's nutshell. There's the nutshell. So I'm on my way to my mom and dad's condo. My dad has not been feeling well, so they're uh, less likely to come over to my place. So um, I'm making the trek to their condo. Hopefully they'll be sober. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> So, how you been, Dad? How are you feeling, Dad? Yeah, not bad. I had a pretty good day. What are you guys drinking? Is that is that apple juice? I'm just having some, uh, <laughs> I forget, it's uh, old supine. Boy, Mom's like a bartender. Uh, Have you guys been recognized at the grocery store lately? It's, it's tapered off a lot. It has, oh. yeah. What about when Dad's on the scooter? Oh, oh the uh, scooter. Well, time, people oh, yes, laugh. yes, last time we were at Rage. <laughs> oh, we're not supposed to be. <laughs> You're going to a gay bar? Rage is a gay nightclub. It's a gay nightclub in the heart of West Hollywood. It's called Rage because when you go there, you dance and get yourself into a gay rage. What the hell are you doing at a gay club at 4.30? Oh, they had $4 one. Kathy, they had well, a sign, hors d'oeuvres, $3. What if my father gets molested? Have you ever thought of that? Well, if he does, he's on his own. He's not safe. He's sauntering around peddling his ass like a $2 whore. He's on his own. Yeah, but Kathy, the bartender is so nice to us. He said, hi, Miss, Miss Griffin. Yeah. We are big fans of Kathy's. We love yeah. her so much. And we agreed with him. We yeah. could have told him things if yeah. we wanted. Hurtful things? Yeah. See, we were nice. You could have said who? My parents are television stars. Now, it's their show and I'm the sidekick. So it's, it's like Suddenly Susan and their Brooke Shields. So look, Carnegie Hall is sold out officially. Oh, all right, good. Do you think there's any chance you could make it or no? No, no. So the doctor says my parents are well enough to go drink in gay bars, but apparently not to come to New York. I know it would have meant so much to them and to me if they could have come to see me at Carnegie Hall, but I get it, they're not physically up to it. We really thought we'd make it. We yeah. were so excited. It's God is my judge. Mom, God is your judge. We I think you should remember that when you're at we gay bars. I All right, know. I'm going to go, you guys. I got Dad, don't get up. You stay right, here. Dolly, yeah, I love you. Yeah. Feel right. better. See yeah. you. Take care now. Okay. So my parents are great, my staff is great, and my work is going great. But there is one thing I've been avoiding talking about. Papa, oh, i I got divorced last year. I'm not going to lie. Divorce sucks. Breaking up in any way sucks. I actually have not seen or spoken to my ex-husband in about eight months. So yeah, I'm, I'm uh, single again. I'm like still traumatized by my divorce because it's not that we were a couple that stopped getting along and then grew apart. There was like a lot of betrayal issues. So I think that's been the toughest thing for me. I thought he was a nice guy who loved me. Now I don't think he ever loved me. We were very sad about yeah. it because um, we really thought that was a marriage that would last almost yeah. forever. Ooh, I haven't thought about this for a while. I feel like I lost my best friend. And I know a lot of that isn't true because, like, I think my perception of our relationship wasn't accurate. But I definitely feel like, uh, like a failure. Like, I feel like it's the greatest failure of my life, for sure. So... What can I tell you? I miss the good times. I don't miss the bad ones. Oh, he got me. Oh, he got me. Here we go. What? I am moving on past Matt out of necessity. You know, it's kind of like a fear of flying. I can't really afford to have a fear of flying, so I just don't. It would be good to wallow, though. I would like to wallow. I just don't have time. In a few days, I'm going to be starring in a corporate film for Redkin with one of their sales reps. It'll be shown in a few weeks at a convention for Redkin employees that I'll be hosting. My friend Eric, who's a really funny comedy writer, is coming over to help me brainstorm for jokes for the gig. So I guess I'm doing a ride along with a hair sales rep. Trent? Trent, yes. Trent Steinbrug, which by the way is far too long of a name. I know. He can just be Trent. Mm -hmm. Or Mr. Trent if he's gay, which he clearly Trent. is. Yeah, I can't imagine his yeah. Trent. Um, All right, opening banter. Tell me, tell me about you, Trent. How long have you been doing this? And by doing this, we mean blowing guys. <laughs> um, so you're in touch with your feminine side. 
What does your wife think about that? I think it's fascinating that he's married. Yeah, and he sells hair stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I've right. got a wife to support. Mm hmm. A wife Which... named Harvey. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I should have him touch my hair too, and then I'll see if he's gay or not. <laughs> you can tell? Oh, yeah. Just by but... the touch of the hair? Oh, yeah. How do you? I heard. Well, a, a gay guy goes like this girl, you need to work on those ends. Right. And a straight guy goes like this. Oh, I got a boner. You're gonna make Trent gay regardless of whether he's gay or not. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's, so he's gay. I'm outing him like Clay Aiken is gonna be butch compared to <laughs> Trent by the time I'm done with him. Are you gonna hog Rick and stuff on, at Carnegie Hall on stage? For the right price, yes I will. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, do you ever get hit on by the stylists? I have. They tell me that some hairstylists are of the homosexual persuasion. Now, I've never met one, really? but I hear they're out there. Yeah, there's a few. I'm not convinced Trent's straight, but I'm not convinced really anybody is straight. If my parents are going to a gay nightclub for happy hour, I don't know anything anymore. Repton's here to save the day. Give it up for Trent. Ow! When we were shooting, Trent kept trying to bring it all back to the hair products. We have a promotion. Uh-huh, you always have a promotion. Yes, I do. You probably think Trent was all focused on being a good hair care product salesman, but you're wrong. Trent was just scared I was gonna try to out him again. So you're straight? Yes. Prove it. Me right now. Yeah, I said it right to your face. Also married. Well, a uh, straight guy would totally go for it. Trent is married with a baby, but I have not ruled out seeing him on Oprah in six or seven years as someone that um, has changed to a woman and is happy now as a woman. All right, see you all in two weeks. Outside, I asked Trent who would be performing at the corporate event where this video was going to be shown. Is yeah, it Britney it's, Spears? No, it's... Uh, Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> no, 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 no. Celine Dion? Then one of the ladies from corporate turns to me and tells me it's Jennifer Hudson and Fergie. Jennifer Hudson and Fergie? That's like a... I thought someone was kidding. That's a big lineup. Fergie and Jennifer Hudson, and he hasn't heard of either one of them. Fergalicious deaf. Fergalicious deaf. You hear that song? She's got a big hit song. <laughs> if he doesn't know who Fergie is, he's got to be straight. And if he doesn't know who Jennifer Hudson is, he's for sure straight. And white, it turns out. Come on, Trent, we're on a mission. Let's be honest, this, this gig was a little bit D-list. This is not how Reese Witherspoon spent her day. Other than that, you know, I'm happy to be working. I love hair! I love red hair! I'm not afraid to shout it on the freeway! I'm leaving for New York City tomorrow to perform at Carnegie Hall. My goal is to have Liza come see my Carnegie Hall show and love me. What's going on with Liza? I'm crushed. I haven't heard back from Liza, and I love her in a not safe stalkery kind of way. Can we get Pat to Grush on the phone? As a D-lister, I can't get anywhere near Liza, so I'm gonna call a bunch of agents, agents assistants, assistants helpers, and maybe some backup singers to see if I can get that in with Liza. Do you know Jim Caruso? All right, Bernard, I need your help with this. Is, um, is Jonathan around? Jim Caruso, like David Caruso, but Jim Caruso. Lovey, I need your help so much. I have a gay dream. I call the gay mafia personally. All right, um, now do you know Liza? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, I thought you were gay. I guess I was sorely mistaken. I was gonna stop at nothing. I was thinking of calling Mayor Bloomberg. I thought he must know her. Where is he? He's in the meeting. Time is running out. For, for me and Liza, really, when you think about it. So we're all working on it. All right, well, call me back if you hear anything. This is a perfect example of life on the D-list. If I was on the A-list, I could probably call Liza personally, but when you're on the D-list, there's a lot of channels that, let's say, Cameron Diaz would not have to go through. Can I give you a call in about maybe half an hour? All right, I'll be at this number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did hang up. <laughs> I'm in New York with my entire staff. It's nice to have company on the road. Plus, it's important to have an entourage when you're playing Carnegie Hall. My show is sold out, but it's always important to do press, to be on TV and in the paper and in magazines. That's my whole life, I'll tell you right now. You know, like when they say when old people die and on their deathbed they say, I should have spent more time with my family and loved ones. Not me, I'll tell you right now. I'm gonna say, I should have done seven more talk shows and then I'll die. That's how I'm going. So what's the schedule today? All right, so we need to leave soon to go to Whoopi. Okay. And then we go to The View. And then we have dinner with Joan. Today, Whoopi Goldberg and Joan Rivers are giving me advice on playing Carnegie Hall. And I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that Liza will get back to me. We're here at Wake Up With Whoopi, which is a daily nationally syndicated radio show. I love Whoopi Goldberg. I got to know her on Hollywood Squares, or the Squares, as we used to call it back in the day. Hello. Hi, Whoopi. Hey, what it? It's so Thank good you. to see you. Oh. I think what Whoopi and I share is that we both say things that get us in trouble, and she told me one time that I was precocious, which I didn't think you could say about anyone over seven years old. Good morning, it's 8-19, it is Thursday, January 18th. The fabulous. 
Kathy Griffin. It was my honor to be in Whoopi's presence. So now, tell me, because I, I love this, you love pop culture. I love it. And I love what celebrity has become now, which is so ridiculous, how everyone is followed going to their, literally to their trash can. Right. And it's a news story when Nicole Richie buys a new handbag. You know, right. although I will say it's horrifying to me that when she was arrested last time, they do weigh you. So I've never been arrested, but if they are going to try to weigh me, uh, I'd rather go to prison. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I will wrestle you to the ground, and then we'll get assault charges going because you are not putting me on a scale. <laughs> Tell me about the show. Okay. Tell me I'm everything doing, about the show. I will, I'm doing Carnegie Hall tomorrow night. Say that one more time. I am you know doing so Carnegie Hall tomorrow night. Oh. Sold out. Yes. Sold out. Yes. Are you nervous? I'm a nervous wreck, yeah. I'm, I don't know if they've ever heard as much swearing in that building at one time. <laughs> yes, they have. Uh, <gasps> I have played Carnegie Hall. Oh, tell me everything. So you walk out on the stage and your heart's pounding. You go, it's Carnegie Hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. It is wonderful. And it is part of history and particularly mm -hmm. New York history. And female. Not very few female comedians have performed Very there. few. We've been here with Kathy Griffin. She is going to be at Carnegie Hall. Kathy Griffin. I adore you. Ditto. <laughs> Now I have you for a few minutes. Excellent. Whoopi agreed to talk to me alone and give me some more advice on playing Carnegie Hall. How A-list is that? Listen, you, I love those shoes. <laughs> Doc Martens. I don't really? care if they're not in style anymore. You have a size three foot. I do. I have a freakishly small foot. My vagina is normal. Because I could tell you were wondering. Well, I have considered asking. <laughs> but then I thought then I'd have to reply and then we'd get into a whole other thing about how to Next thing you know, we got the tape measure and then who's got the bigger vagina? You know, pull it over it's not the about head. That it's for too me. much. It's just it's people. Too much. My vagina is exhausted. Is it? It doesn't even want to talk. Does to it me. have a monologue? <laughs> yes. It's like old school Poconos. It's like one liners and stuff. Yes. And it says like stuff like, is this on? And taps the mic. It's really a hack. <laughs> I'm a total hack vagina. Whoopi and I get along very well. And I feel I can talk to her about anything, even vaginas, which is what I want in a friend, period. You know, I'm afraid that the New York elite intellectuals who come to Carnegie Hall, right. I don't want to shock them in any way. New York audiences don't want you to BS them. They okay. want you to do what you do and just be you. Don't forget who else is coming to Carnegie Hall. Your people. The gays. Your, your audience is coming to Carnegie Hall. The unshockable Hall. gays. The unshockable gays and the unshockable straight folks are coming to Carnegie mm -hmm. Hall. So you t tell all the stories that you love. Okay. Because the only way they're gonna dig it is if you're digging it. She convinced me they're coming to see you because of what you do. They're not coming to hear you tone your act down. So I'm not gonna tone down one thing. You better beat the hell out of this thing with love. This is your day, baby. <laughs> so I have a bomb to drop. I decided that I was a fool to marry for love. And now I should only go out with guys I can be photographed with? You're too classy for that. Me? Get Take it back. No. How <laughs> dare you? Get the car. So I'm continuing my pre-Carnegie Hall publicity tour, and I'm off to do The View, which is a pure joy, because Star Jones is gone, and she was a huge pain in the ass. So now I look forward to seeing what? all the girls on the panel. I'm here on time and everything! It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm a little disappointed Barbara's not there. It's Kelly Pickler from American Idol, who is lovely, but has never interviewed Yasser Arafat or any head of state. And also, she might confuse the head of state with the head of lettuce. I was very excited to see Kelly Pickler. She's hot as hell. Don't hit on Kelly Pickler. There's a curve right there. Feel free to get all down in there. Get all up in there. Yeah. Those cans. Mmm, meow. You want to go offer to do Kelly Pickler's uh, chest makeup? <laughs> yes, he does. Hi, Kelly. How are you, sweetie? practically started uh, whacking off right in front of Kelly Pickler. He's disgusting, all right? And I think he thought Kelly Pickler was in love with him, which she clearly was. We're getting ready to change so I can go do it. Go do it, honey. Check. All right, I'll see you out there. All right, thanks. All right. Don't hit on her, Tom. That's embarrassing. You're representing my company. So, you by yourself? <laughs> That's Tom's opener. I'm not even kidding. He got laid that way one time. <laughs> you by yourself? <laughs> I'm from Fenton, Missouri. I'm Tom. <laughs> I just stopped beating off, and I was wondering if you wanted a date. Tom's all those guys that'll just, you know, like look at a girl's boobs when he talks to her. He likes boobs, and he's sick of ours. He's sick of my boobs, Jessica's boobs, and Tiffany's boobs. 
It's got a little thing for my mom, though, I'm not going to lie. So, first thing, we're going to start with uh, Rosie. She's going to say you performed me at Carnegie Hall for the first time. Yeah. Also, when we ask you, you know, you're pretty busy these days. Um, uh, with all your appearances, you're going to say you're doing Rosie's Cruise in February. Yeah. At that moment, we're going to, Rosie wants to surprise someone in the audience and give them a free trip to the cruise. Okay? So there's going to be a buzzer in front of you of a home viewer. I didn't know they were giving away a cruise. Well, I hope it's to a lesbian. Want to do it. <laughs> Let me tell you, a straight person's going to be miserable. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're someone that doesn't want to see two chicks holding hands, this isn't your cruise. Or you're just going to spend a lot of time at the uh, sculpture class where they'll be sculpting boobs. Is this somebody's chair? I don't want to take somebody's chair. No, no, no. You sure? Don't set me up. No, All right. no, no. I don't want Pickler coming in screaming at me. <laughs> That's all I need. For Pickler to be in one of her moods. Happy Christmas! <gasps> and my girlfriend, the assistant. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Oh, Jessica, of course. Oh, shit. It's my girlfriend. Oh. How could I forget? I know. And now there's Tiffany. Right. Tiffany. Tiffany and Tom. Yeah. Fantastic. How are you? Very busy. I can imagine. And how else is life? Good? Life is good. Mom and dad are fine? They're, yeah, my dad's been in the hospital, mm. so he's not feeling great. But when he's fine, he's like his old self. Now, will they be able to come on the cruise? They won't. And they're they don't want, even they in would, February? Just a little to the Florida? I, I would love it, and they would love it. But he's really not in great okay. shape. All right. Well, I'll leave you to your show. OK. And, um, well, stop breaking the fourth half. wall. It's not moonlighting. Oh, sorry. You're like super I'm, uh, shy moonlighting. <laughs> I know. All of a sudden, I think I should hang. How are you? Rosie and I really have a rapport, and I've had real conversations with her outside the show and stuff. So I find her very easy to talk to. All right. I'll see you out there. All right. Thanks. And remember, everyone here thinks you're funny. Yay! Because <laughs> we have some absent people. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who she meant. Maybe <laughs> it rhymes with bar bones. So, yeah. I don't know. She's funny. She's fearless. She's my friend. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. Oh my gosh, hi, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello. Before I went on, they said, oh, they want you to talk about hot topics. And three of them were very intense and actually kind of sad. And then one of them was the starlets going pantyless. I was like, that's my topic. I think it's funny when these girls, and granted, they're followed by the paparazzi, and that has to be awful. I understand that part. But they also know you don't necessarily get out of the car like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A wind tunnel yeah. effect. Yeah. When cold and flu season, I can't risk it. No, 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 no. I understand. No. Now, Kath is coming on our family vacation again. Yes, you I'm going to stand up on the Our Family Cruise. I was thinking we should give away a free cruise. <laughs> now, see these home viewers? Three, two, one. I could tell everyone in the audience wanted to go on the cruise. And I think Rosie sensed it, too. Oh, it'd be great if fun. everybody in this audience could go. Is it totally so bad? All right, wait. Here's what I'll do. You'll all come with us as well. So when Rosie gave out the free cruises, I thought it was something that was planned that they just didn't tell me about. I really didn't know that it was absolutely a spontaneous thing she was doing. That's what makes her great, okay? Star didn't invite the audience to her wedding. Rosie's giving out cruises. That's a cool thing. Donald Trump. Kathy Griffin is performing at Carnegie Hall. There's no one funnier. Go see her if you can. Kath, I love you. The life on the D list, fantastic. I gotta tell you, ever since Star left, doing The View is such a blast for me. It's one of my favorite shows to do. I really do love those girls. They're very nice to me. And uh, I, I, it's much looser for me. All right, what'd you guys think? Kelly Pickler looks good. Will you stop I with the Kelly really Pickler? <laughs> well, here's what you should do. Take your pants off and just wait for her in her dressing room <laughs> and then ask her if she came here by herself. We should. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a really good idea. When we got back to the hotel, Kathy was in a really good mood. So I didn't want to tell her about the bad news that I just got. Liza can't make it. 
it didn't work out. Yeah. What'd she say? She said to thank you for thinking of her and she's sure you'll be fantastic. Getting 100% no from Liza hurt and it hurt in, in my gut. So uh, all my organs were sore that day, mostly my heart. Is that an organ? Yeah, it's an organ. Why does Liza hurt me? Uh -huh. Do you need a hug? I do need a hug. Hug her. Thanks. <laughs> Jessica, what happened? You're too busy to hug me? No, <laughs> she's a closer. Hug her. Do it. Ooh. Thank you. All right, let's go. Liza Minnelli did squash my gay dream. And I know she's built up many gay dreams in her lifetime, and she cannot fulfill every gay dream. But I thought, you know, maybe she could suit up and sit in the back row and clap every couple of jokes. No. Tonight, I'm having dinner with my good pal Joan and a couple of her friends. Whenever I come to New York, I see my pal Joan Rivers. You know what I love about her? She's very genuinely interested in other people, which I think is very unusual for a celebrity. Tom, my tour manager. Hello, Tom. And Jessica and Tiffany. Hello, Tiffany. I'm so upset that I'm not here tomorrow night. So I know I'm crushed. She can't come to Carnegie Hall because she's got a gig in Reno. I'm nervous about tomorrow. If it's sold out, then you've got fans. People that are coming, yeah. I yeah. want to make sure the gays are there. And That's make key. sure they're all in the front row. Z how do you how do you move them? I don't know. I, I swear to God. Tom, that's your job. You get the you yes. tell the gays to get down the front. Yes. Quit their bitching. So I have a bomb to drop. I decided that I was a fool to marry for love, and now I should only go out with guys I can be photographed with. You're too classy for that. Me? You take it back. No. How <laughs> dare you? Get the car. Just at that moment, the chef from the restaurant came over to say hi, and I thought, oh great, a big time New York chef. This might be the perfect guy for me to go out with for publicity. What about that as a good guy for me? What about me and a chef? I like the idea of a guy feeding me. You already went through. You know, it's not the red carpet. We're not judging best and worst. Joan thought that the guy was too heavy set for me, and I don't care about that. I couldn't care less about what a guy looks like. I mean, I don't think I should be with one of those people like on Entertainment Tonight, where they go, Tonight we're with the 1,600 pound man who can't get out of his own doorway. I'm not saying that. He's got it. His dick has to be functional. You know, I'm a sure thing. Hit the right I mean, first date. I'm a whore. I don't know. I want to be direct, Joan. I don't want to play games anymore. Hi. Oh, my pants just fell off. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Were you ever married? Yes. And what happened? How many children? Three. Three. That's so good. College kids, gone. Oh, In college. Oh. Strange and not speaking. <laughs> this is going very well. Look, he's walking away. <laughs> he's had it with me. That's every date I've ever had. The guy's just sick of me and just leaves without saying goodbye. Dinner with Joan is better than dating, I gotta say. You know why? Because I've had many dates that aren't good, and I've only had good dinners with Joan. Carnegie Hall. Yes, oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Carnegie Hall. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Look, it's me tonight at Carnegie Hall! I need to remember to speak slowly. I'm nervous. I just want that first laugh and then I can relax. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Tonight's the big night, my Carnegie Hall appearance. I want pictures because who's gonna believe I played Carnegie Hall? I can't even believe it. I would love a, a picture of me on the Carnegie Hall stage. So any of you coming tonight, feel free to snap away. Is that gonna distract you? No, I like it. Okay. Today I'm in prep mode. So I wanna, I wanna eat properly, and then it will be a whole process of going over material, deciding when to go to the bathroom is big. I can't just be on stage and have to pee. Hey, uh, what do you think? You gotta get going to oh, Carnegie to right. do a sound check. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna go sound check with the curlers. I'm going to leave my hair in curlers, even walking down the street like a crazy person. But I think in New York they've seen outer things. <sighs> hey, it's what's your name? Wait, say that again. You have to say that again. I got this what's her face. Yes! Yes! I'm gonna get you on mic saying that because people don't believe that people say that to me all day, every day. It's D, it's D. You graduated me up two letters. I thought it would be like every poster. That's what it's showing. I know. One night they can't do the main one. Keep going, keep going. It's gotta be the next one. Aww. Yay! 
there's a poster. Because I have walked by every time I've been in New York since tickets have been on sale and there's been nothing. But now I finally have my poster and I want as many people as possible to see it. Fellas, look, it's me! to my public to stand here and be rejected by New Yorkers on about a 37 to 1 basis. Look, it's me! It's from the picture! Boy, people in wheelchairs can be vicious. See, I think bigger stars should do stuff like this. I think Angelina Jolie, just one day a year, should just stand on the street in New York and take some pictures. That's what makes me very different from Angelina Jolie. There's a few other things, but that's the main reason. Everybody, I have to go to sound check. After the sound check, I just ran back to the hotel to make sure I had my bullet points for my act. All right, it's 7.10. Time to write my act. I don't like to do the set list until right before I go on. Then I'm more open to new things instead of, here's the list, must not stray from the list. As I was preparing my set, I absolutely could hear Whoopi saying, tell all the stories that you love. Okay. Because the only way they're gonna dig it is if you're digging it. They didn't come to hear you say something anybody could say. They came to hear you say the stuff only you're gonna say. We're at Carnegie Hall in New York City, and uh, we're here to see the amazing, uncomparable Kathy Griffin, who is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I'm nervous because I just want it to be perfect. I don't want one person to not have a good time. The Larry King stuff, I think, will be good. Yeah, Larry King I always like. Okay. I see how I'm getting into uh, Lindsay Lohan. Oh, Lohan and Rehab. I love her relationship with her parents. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. They are the funniest parents I think I've ever seen. Mom and Dad. I think I'm gonna do the stuff about you because I think there are gonna be more straight guys in the audience than I thought. Really? I don't argue with me, Tom. Just trust me. We're some of her main gays. <laughs> yeah, no, we're like, yeah, we want to be her main gay, so we're trying. Okay, we should go. So I'm nervous now. I just want that first laugh and then I can relax. I want it. Thanks. <laughs> I don't have deodorant. Hmm? I need to remember to speak slowly because I'm nervous and I want to rattle through it, but I think the acoustics are so beautiful. Exactly. I just need to calm down. That's going to be the hardest thing for me is to like just speak at a normal pace. See you after. All right. Thank you. Tom and I walked through the performer's entrance at Carnegie Hall and all these thoughts raced through my head. Are they going to like me? Am I going to be funny enough? Will I be funnier than the What's symphony? <laughs> confess something. My actual performance wasn't filmed, but it's not my fault. Bravo was too cheap to pay for my film crew to come film it. How D-list is that? But don't worry, I've created a frame-by-frame -frame reenactment of exactly how my performance went. I stepped out on stage, so I remember thinking, put on a big show. <laughs> Those are my deep thoughts. Time for a big show. I talked about, you know, Lindsay Lohan. I may have made a very harmless joke that Lindsay's lost a lot of weight recently due to diet and Pilates and crack. <laughs> Without the diet and Pilates. I even surprised the audience with some new material about my life as a single woman. I never thought I'd be dating again and I'm, I'm just terrible at it. And I just tell a guy, like, if you take me to dinner, I'll totally you. Like, I have no, like... Oh yeah, and I get bored on a date. After 20 minutes, I'm like, now put it in. And then when I left, I just got a standing ovation. To have the show have gone so well, it was a great feeling of relief and accomplishment. And, um, you know, I, I can hear those laughs in my dreams. I can put my head down on the pillow and hear laughs and go, ah, thank you, Jesus. And I'm an atheist. I walked up 
the stage door, and there were a lot of people there. Okay. All right. Please Stephen, get in the picture. It. Okay. Yeah, it is there. It's by far her best show. She was hysterical, just as good as she is on the Bravo show. Loved the show. Reaffirmed that Kathy's a goddess on Earth. We should build a temple in her honor, because she's like a deity. This is a very A-list trip to New York. Yeah, I have jumped lists. Um, you know, I'll be smacked down. Jessica stole my thunder, and she knows it. I didn't realize I had such fans. <laughs> Usually I just stand in the background and do my thing, and then all of a sudden, a crazy girl. <laughs> She was drunk or high or what? She has my pen. Here's my marker. Here's the cat. But she was just like, oh my gosh, shut up! Do it! And it felt bad. I'm like, this is Kathy's moment. I'm pretty sure she was just whispering to people, by the way, I'm Jessica. And I think I saw her hand five dollar bills to the people that were screaming her name. Jessica has a fan base, and they are voracious. They will kill for her, and um, I'm becoming known as the person who knows Jessica. I gotta start protecting her more than you. I know. I almost got in a fight. You almost got in a fight. Well, who one of Jessica's fans? One day they'll just scream for you, Tom. <laughs> I hope no. Dear Cassie, you were amazing. P.S. When I found out you were staying here, I almost died. I got a note from someone who wants me to visit them, and it's a 13-year-old girl. When I got back from Carnegie Hall, I found some letters on my bed that the concierge had left for me. Dear Kathy, you were amazing. I saw you tonight, and you were better than ever. Ariane, age 13. Jesus, a 13-year-old came to the show? That's not appropriate. A-list celebs get stalked by some hot guy. Me, I'm getting stalked by a tween who's staying at my hotel. Probably with her parents. Great. I got a note from someone who wants me to visit them, and it's a 13-year-old girl. But I did get one note that I was really excited about. Liza. Dear Kathy, congratulations and welcome to the A-list. Playing Carnegie Hall is a thrill you'll never forget. I do look forward to seeing you in action soon, so stay in touch. So, you know what? I'm enough of a celebrity to get a note from Liza, which most people are not that famous. But I'm not quite famous enough to actually get Liza to come. But I got a note. That never happened to you. I'll get her. I'll get Manelli. She's not going to know what hit her. I'm going to sleep with it right here. So at the end of the night, I went to bed and had a soft and gentle slumber with my Liza Minnelli card on my pillow. Like a tooth that had fallen out. And believe me, a fairy is gonna come get it. This season on My Life on the D-List. I want to come up with a list of celebrities that would like to go out with me. I don't wanna date you unless our picture could end up in the Inquirer. I don't want either one of us going to jail. No, that won't happen. I've been there, it won't do it again. I'm going to do a guest appearance on HSN. If I can sell product, then hopefully I can live my dream of becoming Suzanne Summers. Someone gets me a pretzel, I will eat off that floor. In fact, I'm gonna sit on it, because that's how clean it is. What are you doing down here? I'm hosting the Gay Port Awards. I know that maybe we're not technically on the same team, but can I just have a little kiss on the cheek? I'll f you so fast, you won't know what hit you, honey. Where? In the prison, will I be performing? In the dining room, in the chow hall. Yes. Let me talk about Britney's pussy for one second. I'll tell you right now, I looked at it. I wanted to see if it was discolored like a chow tongue. I'm sorry, I actually shot prisoners. All right, so the goal is to find a handyman who's actually competent. Am I the biggest celebrity you've ever handymaned for? I can't say I, I know exactly what, what, what show you're from. Or... <laughs> in my own home. <laughs> Previously on My Life on the D-List. My workload's been insane. I'm a nervous wreck. I don't know how to compose a paragraph. So I had to hire Jessica, her own assistant, Kathy Griffin's office, and a tour manager who, it turns out, can't really do anything. Hey, Tom, do you have a highlighter on you? I just have a Sharpie. Well, a Sharpie is going to cover the words, Tom. The worst part is Tom is my roommate now. There's a mysterious fluid on the stairs. It's either yours or pom-poms. My dad has not been feeling well, but they still do their outings. What the hell are you doing at a gay club? 
I had four dollar one. Kathy. But the biggest news is that I'm jumping back into the dating world. I decided that I was a fool to marry for love. And now I should only go out with guys I can be photographed with. You're too classy for that. How <laughs> dare you? Get the car. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. Since my divorce, you know, my whole life was my husband and gay guys, right? Like my friends and stuff. So now that I'm single, I don't know anything about heterosexual men. Like I like to like put them in a petri dish and just study them. Uh, ladies, I don't know if you know any straight guys. Uh, they're freaks. They are freaks. First of all, what is it about straight guys that makes their balls itch more than anyone? It's like, is there something in their balls that like perpetually, like an itching powder that somehow is regenerating itself? And it's this itch that never goes away. Like, and got it. Like, it's never done. <laughs> Company meeting. Celebrities like me can't be expected to manage every detail of their lives. Company meeting. So I'm adding one more task to my staff's already full plate. Pimp me out and get me dates that will land my picture in the tabloids. I'm looking to f my way to the middle, basically. <laughs> and I don't think I should go out with any guys unless he can help get my picture in a magazine. I married for love like a fool. So this time around, I only want to date men who are a photo op. I think that we should arrange dates where, um, accidentally paparazzi, paparazzi shows up. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not going for George Clooney. I'm realistic. <laughs> but I uh, have always had a crush on AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys. Right. I'm happy to f any of the Backstreet Boys. Who else? Tommy Lee, Kate Fed, Ron Jeremy, Chingy. Any rapper will do. Uh, DJ AM. Oh. Or PM. Tom, what about any athletes? Terrell Owens? He might be looking for a team next year, though. So he might be, uh... What does that have to do with me? Oh, I don't know. This is typical Tom. Clueless. But I'll train him. All right, who else can I go out with? Cheerleader from Heroes. The ugly Betty. The winner of Survivor. The winner of Apprentice. <laughs> we oh still have God. the rest of the season to go. Well, get, I, that's not my problem. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing all this myself. Okay. As usual, I have to do everything. Right. Meeting adjourned. Okay. My staff has got their marching orders, and I better be fighting off the paparazzi very soon. And by fighting off, I mean smiling for them. My publicity plan is perfect, but there's one group of people who may not think so. My parents. So I'm going to beat them to the punch and let them criticize me in advance. They're very good at it. Hello. Hi, Ma. Hi. Good to see you. Oh, see you, too. Oh. Finally, you made your way over here. That's right. So busy with your social Hi, life. Kat. Hey, Pa. So you notice I don't get up to greet you? No, 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 don't get up. I'm I still have this very serious... Uh, Illness. Uh, uh, All right. right. My dad's been in and out of the hospital. You know, my dad's 90, my mom's 85. You came just at the right time, Kat. Uh, my dad, he's not as mobile as he used to be. And yet the two of them are as happy as ever. Ah. Oh. That's why we all got here. That's right, yeah, booze. Yeah. There you go. Oh. You know, now that I'm dating him, which I never thought yeah. I would or wanted yeah. to, but um, yeah. what advice do you have for me? Um, uh, gee, I don't know. We could, could we get a little list for her? We'll, we'll think about it. What's your list? Benny Goodman, yeah. Art Carney. No, Sean Hannity. Oh, oh Sean. What a son he'd make. Oh, perfect son. Put a gun to my head. Oh, yeah. No, well, he'd be a wonderful son. It would be a murder, murder, suicide. I'd kill you, you, then Sean me. Hannity, then myself. My parents have horrible dating advice because it's it's from World War II. You know, it's just stuff you can't use. Like, as long as a man buys you a nice pair of stockings. I'm like, Mom, you can just go to a store and buy stockings now. No, have, you, have, you, have you thought of a gay guy? Yes. I do have a dream of being in a marriage of convenience. I could be Mrs. Aiken, right? I look the other way when certain things happen, when the webcam is on. Who would you marry? The, the guys who... I'm not, not married. I'm not going to get married. All right, I'll go with I'm just going to f*** around. You're going to what? F*** around. I said oh, it right to your face. I don't God. care anymore. Oh, I'm banging a new guy every night. Oh, I don't give God. a f*** anymore. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. That Drink end. up, you two. Yeah. I am. Let's start the shit storm. You know what, Kathy? I'm so glad most of our friends do don't have cable. What's what's the matter? They're going to give you a, a sideways glance at the well, gay bar? Where the hell? You act like you're going to the country no, club. No, I'm talking about Like you have to go face friends. people at the country club. 
You never know. <laughs> my parents can act all embarrassed now, but let's see who gets the last laugh when my dating scheme okay. ends up with my picture in Us Weekly. Publicity is a top priority, but it won't pay the bills. So I'm headed off to Tucson to do a corporate gig. Normally, corporate gigs do suck, but this one could be fabulous because it's for jewelry designers. And where there's jewelry, there's gays. There's gonna be an auction after you're set for St. Jude's Hospital. Now, you know about these, uh, the guidelines for the show tonight? Uh, read it to me. If children are present at Kathy Griffin's show, the children should not be singled out during her performance as the audience will not react very favorably at all to this type of humor. The bad thing is with corporate events, usually they put all these language restrictions on me, which is tough because I have self-diagnosed Tourette syndrome. What's up, Baldy in the wheelchair? <gasps> oops. <laughs> no, I say oops, that's how I recover, oops. But here, they didn't put language restrictions on me. I just can't make fun of sick children. And what fun is that? I don't want to perform for children. I don't care how sick they are. It's not going to help them get well. You know, I'm picturing literally a children's cancer ward. Everybody's in hospital coats with like hooked up to shit, And then there's just one gay guy with a string of pearls. <laughs> If the show is at 9 p.m., no one's gonna bring their kids. It's sleepy time. Uh, Did you me? Is he gonna be at the show later? Does he have night care where you can drop him off somewhere? He's not gonna wanna hear my swearing. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later, bye. I'm seriously This way, okay. Having kids in the audience is gonna blow, but there are definite oh, perks to performing at a jewelry show. Hey! <laughs> Erica Courtney is an old pal of mine and she's a brilliant jewelry designer and she does lots of fancy jewelries for fancy celebrities. Erica loaned me tens of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry for this event because she wanted to show everyone how fabulous she is. All right, just because you know I love to hear it. Give me the retail. 30 and 50 and... 70, it's sapphires. 30. That's 150. Yeah. I'm a math expert. Okay, so talk to me about the audience. Are they rowdy? Everybody is saying, I cannot wait, I cannot wait. <gasps> Erica was telling me they were psyched, they were ready, and then I thought, okay, maybe I don't have to worry. Please give me a, a warm welcome <laughs> and a hilarious <laughs> Kathy Griffin, please. <laughs> people who love them. I think you should know that I'm not supposed to single out any vendor because all the vendors are so wonderful, but only one of you cheap asses gave me some free shit. That's Erica Courtney. Now look. When I started performing, I was relieved because there was only one kid in the audience and his parents literally held a hand over each ear like the hear no evil monkey. Somebody f me and rob me. Seriously, this is gonna be a good night for some lucky gay guy. Where are my gays at? Ow, shut up. Where the hell are the gay guys? No one yelled holla, not one person. This is BS. I guess you guys know this, that Bulgari is like an actual person, right? Like there's a guy, Joe Bulgari. I tried to do pearl, diamond, and gold chain jokes because that's what they're about. Paula Abdul, I hope you know this, has a jewelry line where she has charms, like charm bracelets and necklaces and stuff, with insane junky sayings of her own composition on them. So while I'm performing, all I'm seeing is people walking out, people not laughing, people confused, bored, and a little bit resentful. I was taking away valuable time from them when they could be getting a lap dance or calling their favorite hooker. Well, it comes between Kathy and smoking, and the smoking, and we have to smoke a cigar. I'm sorry. To tell you the truth is that it's time to go to the little boys' room. It wasn't good enough comedy to hold it in any longer. I bombed. All right, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I tried to gear the material toward them. Please tell me you saw Crazy Liz Taylor and Larry King pimping her jewelry. No, they weren't having it. I was warned about the sick kids. All right, I wasn't warned about the perfectly healthy heterosexuals. I want to thank you guys for being so nice. We're not done. We got a big auction coming up. Don't leave, sir. We need your money. Sit down and write a check. Thank you. I want you now to figure out how each one of these tables can come up with $5,000. I swear to God, you could have heard a pin drop in that room. If you thought they hated my performance, you should have seen him during that announcement. I'm giving 10. I gave $10,000 because I felt guilty because I bombed. Literally, I got my checkbook, wrote them a check. Although I'm nervous I set a precedent. 
You know, I don't want every promoter in the world to be watching this thinking, oh, she doesn't do well, she writes us a check. That was a one-time thing. Don't get any big ideas. Here, 10 Gs, take it. After I gave my $10,000 check, I just went table to table, shaming them into giving more money. Hey, we can set a record tonight, guys. I'm body surfing! A lot of people have gone to the bathroom mysteriously. There's a lot of empty chairs all of a sudden. All right, now, excuse me. I can see you're avoiding me. I'll give 5,000 personally. No sh Look at Tom! Look at how relieved the rest of your table is. Sweet! Kathy, yeah. we're gonna go on into the auction. We've got about seven, eight items. Hey, you talk about something great. You and a guest will attend the 2008 Grammy Awards extravaganza, sitting in two very hard to get seats. I wanna go to the Grammys. You do it one more time. Helping children isn't enough. I would like to get something for it. So I think if I do anything for a child, even if I say hi, I want Grammy tickets. What's up, little boy? Grammy tickets. Can I clean your bib? Oscar tickets, please. But to get 9,000, final call, but to get 9,000. You didn't come to play, people. Sold, 8,500 in the back. I think the person who got Grammy tickets donated less than I did. Kathy, you were terrific. We appreciate you staying with us. And I gave 10 Gs, too. And she gave 10 grand. I made the biggest donation in the room, and this guy acts like it didn't even happen. I'd like to see them fork over 10 grand for nothing. I mean, for sick children. I learned that heterosexual jewelers are a tough crowd. You know, they could have at least peppered the place with more gays. Because straight people, they will just let you down every time. And they don't know how to laugh at a good pussy joke. Bye, you guys. Girls, so um, how's the date search going? Tell her what we got. Who? So you wanted AJ from the Backstreet Boys. I love him. Yeah. But, but Nick was available. AJ wouldn't return her call. AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys won't even return a call? No. no. How D-list is that? I wanted AJ, the sexiest Backstreet Boy, and I have to settle for Nick, who's also the youngest. How old is Nick Carter? Uh, I think he's like my age. I realized that if he's 27 and I'm 32, that would be inappropriate and a half. But nothing sells tabloids like a scandal. I think it's gonna be like to catch a predator where I'm the predator. He's a lot younger than me. <laughs> so? Legal. What are you gonna wear? Who cares? Who gives a <laughs> I'm gonna go to jail at the end of the night. I should just wear stripes. Uh -huh. All right, I don't want trouble tonight. Because I think you're cool. All right, I don't want either one of us going to jail. No, no, it won't happen. I've been there, it won't do it again. How long were you there? I was there for like six hours. That's it? That's you serving hard time? In a couple of weeks, I'm booked on a two-stop Michigan tour, which is not exactly a gay mecca. My ticket sales in Michigan suck, which is unheard of for Miss Kathy Griffin. If sales aren't where they should be, I do radio interviews over the phone. Now I'm calling uh, Jane from the Herald Palladium, <laughs> Circulation 15. Hi, Jane, it's Kathy Griffin, how are you? I am fine. You're going to be coming here to do a show next week. Yes, I'm coming to Benton Harbor. We have been telling everybody it's an adult show. All right, and are they prepared to hear the level of swearing and cursing that they're going to hear? I just really cannot tell you how much I'll be talking about my private parts and your private parts. And also, I just want to be clear that they should come with a very open mind and that they should not bring children or their Bible. Okay, I will forewarn everybody. Good. No Bibles and no children. I think the people in Michigan want to laugh like anybody else, but they may not be as fascinated by Nicole Richie's DUI as I am. I'm gonna turn them around. At KathyGriffin.net, they show you in a pretty uh, skimpy little outfit. One of the guys here at the radio station wants to know if that's what you'll be wearing. I'm gonna be wearing that, except without the bottoms. Ticket sales are gonna be through the roof. Oh, good, that's my goal. <laughs> The night's finally arrived for my date with Backstreet Boy Nick Carter. I can't do this myself. So my girlfriend Rachel came over to give me some tips on my oh, fake date. Hey. Oh, come in. All right. Are you excited? Look, my love life's in the <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But um, I'm only to be seen with men who are photo ops from now on. Really? Mm -hmm. That's it? I say if you really wanna get some press, make a sex tape tonight. Backstreet's back 
And then it's me stick my ass up. And then I'm saying, I'll say. <laughs> There's a lot of double entendre involved. <laughs> now, you know he's going to talk black, and that makes me really uncomfortable. Oh, that makes me uncomfortable. He's going to call me girl. Nick Carter is a wigga. That's a white person who thinks they're black. He'll be talking to you normally, and then out of the blue, he'll be like, yo, that's dope. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to role play. You're me, and I'm Nick, Nick Carter. You ready? I'll try to be you. OK. Ooh, girl, what's up? <laughs> girl, you looking fine. She has a whistle, she has a whistle. My kid's just laugh at his face. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's what to say. <laughs> right. Are you going to wear something cute and lacy underneath? Oh, come help me find something okay. to wear, because I don't know what to wear. I say push the tits up. All right, tits are up. Pull it down more. Come more? On. Yes. Oh, for Christ's sake. Yeah, it that's is? it. You oh, can... I know. I'll push him up so much they'll look fake, and he'll love them. <laughs> exactly. I'll bet he loves Look, tits. I have made a lot of money pushing these puppies up. Here's the most important thing about a date. Just have fun and be comfortable. So whatever jeans you wear, make sure like they feel good. I'm going to be good comfortable and... when... Um, um, my picture ends up in In Touch Weekly with Nick Carter. <laughs> Keep the boobs up. Do not push them down. Okay. There okay. you go, Florence. I'm going to make him touch up, too. Ooh, rub it all over. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> all right. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right. Thanks. <laughs> hey. How are you? Hey, Nick. <laughs> I'm Tom. I'm okay. Kathy's uh, roommate. Uh, Since I'm living here and working for Kathy, she'll uh, have me do just about anything. Tonight, right. I'm playing babysitter for her date. Uh, so you guys gonna have fun tonight? Yeah, that's what the, that's what the idea is. And... I haven't been out in a little while, though. I've been kind of like laying low. What time is it right now, you know? Uh, you know what? I don't want to watch it. Just text me, too. She a fast dresser? Her. Kathy? No. Takes a long time? She takes Look a long up time. up here! Oh, there she is. She's ready. <laughs> well, I can I'm come fine. up. It's OK. Yes! Give What's me some up? sugar. <laughs> come on. How are you? Nick, how old are you? 27. Oh, f going according to plan. Nick was taking me to celebrity hotspot Le Do. Paparazzi swarmed to that place like Liza to Xanax. And then when we get there, Nick's publicist decides that she's not going to let the paparazzi take our picture. Asking you nicely, not Nick's going through a transformation where he's lost 22 pounds, and they're going to reveal it in another media source. I don't give a shit. The point is, I asked the guy out to be photographed with him, and now he's holding his hand over his goddamn handsome face. What good is the pretty face if he's going to cover it with his hand? What's up, Ronnie? What's up, my brother? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Nick was predominantly Caucasian throughout the evening, but he did turn black like three times. What's up, man? How are you? Chilling. Everything good? Nick is almost as black as Justin Timberlake, and that's as black as it gets. You want me to sit there or here? What was better? Sit here. I want to okay. sit here and cuddle. OK. Now, what's the normal drill when you come here? It's you and your bitches. Um, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you go bitch free? Yeah, sometimes. Are your bitches allowed to eat? Yes, they're allowed to eat. <laughs> what? I didn't say yet. <laughs> I scared you though, didn't I? Yes. Everything about you scares me. Are we fighting already? Mm-hmm. I don't want trouble tonight. Because I think you're cool. All right. I don't want I'm either one it. of us going to jail. No, no, it won't happen. I've been there. It won't do it again. How long were you there? I was there for like six hours. That's it? That's you serving hard time? Six that hours? Was, I've taken longer was, lunches that than was, that. That was enough. You know I'm a super fan. Really? Here's the lyrics to Incomplete. And here's the lyrics to All I Have to Give. All right, sing this part for me. OK. I tried to go on like I never knew you. I'm awake, but my world is half asleep. Incomplete. So, is that how yeah. you get a lot of pussy? Sometimes. I loved when Nick sang to me. I, I could listen to that all night. I was literally filled with glee in a schoolgirl type of way. But dinner was just photo op foreplay. Now I'm ready for some hardcore girl on Backstreet Boy publicity action. Please. If I swear to God, if I have to open one door. I, I got it. Don't worry. I I'm going to kick you in the I balls. Because okay. I'm a lady, goddammit. Now we're off to a red carpet worthy party where I have the perfect plan for getting that tabloid two shot of me with Nick Carter. All right, I'll just wait. Yeah. All right. You should do your thing. Nick's publicist made him stay in the car. But I'm not going to let her camera c 
block stop me from spreading the Backstreet Boy buzz. Hi, how are people in the You know, by the way, I'm here with Nick Carter. He's my date. You are? Yes, he's in the car. I just want to be photographed. Oh, look at you. I know. He's very, very cute. This is Nick Carter. photographers got a couple pictures. People wanted the picture more because we weren't supposed to be photographed. So I think the more his publicist pushes people away, the more we have a good shot of it looking like a secret picture. So note to self, next time I go out, if I shout no pictures, and if I go up to paparazzi and try to push them away, maybe it will become a valuable photo. The night was over and I was happy to take Nick home. If he's not willing to pose for even one photo with me, I have no more use for him. <laughs> Did you have fun? You have fun, right? I had a great time. Okay. <laughs> Come here. All right. I was gonna go in for the kiss, and then she gave me the cheek. Bye. Have a good night. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Sucks, man. I totally missed the freaking kiss from Kathy. Nick Carter is very cute, and I would love a photo, but I'm not about to molest this boy if there's no paparazzi here snapping pictures. <laughs> The date was a success with Nick Carter. And I don't mean we had a love connection. I mean, the paparazzi was there and it's on tape. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited. Mostly it's Nick's publicist telling the paparazzi that they can't shoot us. I'm asking nicely, don't make me get security. Oh. First of all, it says, the awkward duo. <laughs> She's a self-proclaimed D-lister, and he's a former Backstreet Boy, which is not true. I know, They're still, still together. Nice, yeah. yeah. Was spotted heading into Le Doux last night, surrounded by a television crew following their every peculiar move. Uber publicist Juliet Harris tries and fails to keep Nick and Kathy out of the glare of the flashbulbs. Jump a little higher next time, Jules. Um, can we have another strange love in the making? And look at I'm all smiling, and Nick's covering his face. I like how that's the awesome. publicist keeps going, I'm asking you nicely. nicely. I'm ask and I realize that's what I've been doing wrong. I, I look at the paparazzi and I smile and say over here, next time I just have to go, and no, not tonight. I, I am asking you nicely. I'm a person. I need my privacy. How's my hair? Yeah. yeah. OK, so uh, Nick Carter's publicist failed, and I succeeded. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a very successful date. Yeah. Which, which means I'll probably never see him again, but I was photographed by the paparazzi. Yeah. And that's really all that matters. Right. Paparazzi may love me in Los Angeles, but next week I'm headed out to Michigan, and apparently my publicity efforts there have been a total failure. Uh, how are ticket sales for Jackson and Benton Harbor? Ticket sales in Jackson are 48%. Benton Harbor is 40 40? Are you shitting me? 40%. Uh, You're flying the mall, so get ready to go to the Benton Harbor Forever think, 21 store. I don't think there's a mall there. They're just out in the middle of nowhere. It's just pretty much cornfields around there. You know, it's farmland. So as opposed to New York, where you have 5,000 people living on one block, in Michigan, you have four people, two donkeys, and a cow living on one block. But if I can get one gay cow, I'm in. Well, you're flying the, the, uh, the dairy store. The dairy store and the... Um, it's just the college and that's... Where they go wash the clothes in the, in the crick. In the crick. <laughs> you're going to flyer the crick? My staff knows that sometimes they have to walk in the snow to sell tickets. They're lucky to have jobs in this economy. What? Did you ship the sandwich boards? Oh, yes. It's you guys walking through cornfields with sandwich boards. <laughs> Comedy show tonight, a dollar no. off. Best chili in the house, and there's a redhead serving it. Please give a warm welcome for Miss Kathy Griffin. Let's have a chili cook-off, mother Ow! We finally arrived at the first stop of my Michigan tour, Jackson. Ticket sales were so bad that I'm pouring myself out as the host of a local chili cook-off. Hello, how are you? You're late. I know, I had to get the kettle corn. People were really upset that I wasn't here starting in the morning making the chili. You're the captain of our chili team. Well then yes. let's go. Okay. I can't be making chili, I'm too famous. Please give a warm welcome for Miss Kathy Griffin. I think the women were offended when I swore. I think everybody was offended when I swore. Bye, you guys, enjoy. And I will be tonight at the Copper Center at 7 
p.m. So come on and check it out. Bombing at the chili cook-off was not part of the plan. Now, how am I going to get people to buy tickets? Oh! See you then. Yeah! I love you, baby. Thank you, baby. Ooh, nice to see you. Fortunately, drunk guys do like me. All right. Andy Griffin. Woo! And everyone tells me the way to a straight man's heart, and hopefully his ticket-buying pocket, is through his stomach. This is our chili booth right here. It has your picture on it. OK, I'll should I go and man the booth? You should. Yeah, OK. Well, you Would you like one? Yes, please. Step right up, one ticket. Best chili in the house, yeah. and there's a redhead serving it. Who wants an anal exam? Are you coming tonight? I would love to, but I don't have tickets. Are you coming tonight? Yeah. I'm going to try. Are you guys coming tonight? <laughs> um, I don't know. Wants pictures and autographs. Nobody wants to buy a ticket. I want to walk around and do like a lap because I bet there's a lot of great food. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, I there's I really can't even think of another comedian that goes to the chili cook-off just to get business. Hi, Batman Booth. How are you? How, How are you guys doing? Good. Wait, you have any chili left? Our chili is all right. I know, mine is too. We'll keep fighting crime. Hi. There was men dressed as Batman. I don't know why. I don't think they were solving any crimes, and they ran out of chili. The staff wanted to drink because uh, they were bored, it was cold, and chili is spicy. It's very loud. The lighting makes me feel like I'm on drugs, so I'm drinking. Sometimes I give them tasks that are so horrible, I'll just say, you can just be blacked out during this, it's fine with me. Just get it done. Frederica, who do you write for? <laughs> After the cook-off, I had an interview with the Citizen Patriot newspaper. When I say interview, it was with, I think, a high school junior. All right, Frederica, who are you with? I'm from the Citizen Patriot. I'm um, the intern. The intern said she was 20, but I think she was 16 and a half at the most. I was afraid to swear around her. I thought I could go to jail. First of all, is this a cover? I only do covers, Frederica. I have no idea. Oh, they just tell me they're and that's I'd what like I do. I'd like a full page <clears throat> of a picture of me in my underwear, airbrushed. OK, I'll see what I can do, but I can't guarantee <laughs> anything. I'm just the intern. No, I'm not saying she's not well on her way to becoming Christiane Amanpour, but she did just laugh a lot and keep saying, I'm the intern. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time in Jackson, and it's my first chili cook-off. <laughs> I thought it was going to be harmless little ladies with chili. It was freaky, drunken dudes dressed as bad men. <laughs> All right, thank, well, thank you, you Frederica. So much. I hope you come tonight. OK. I don't have any tickets, and I'm an intern, so that means I don't have any money. Being interviewed by the intern at the Citizen Patriot paper is pathetic. But let's face it, I would do an interview with a kitten if it would get more people to buy tickets. A couple of Jackson fans emailed Kathy's website begging her to come visit them, and she agreed because other than a chili cook-off, there's absolutely nothing to do in Jackson, Michigan. That's something that the A-listers would never do. You don't see Kirsten Dunst just go into somebody's house. I will. I'm sure these three would love some booze. <laughs> they like chop chop. I do have to tell you though, when I grow up, I want to be just like your mom and dad. Well, if these girls keep drinking, they might catch up to my parents in a couple years. Awesome. Shout out to mom and dad. Yeah. feeling great right now but you know at 1985 they are wow. really going strong they go to the grocery store now to be recognized and they like linger at the grocery <laughs> store way longer than they need to and then they wait oh aren't you mrs griffin oh, what? Oh. and then next thing you know they're there for an hour and a half now tell me what do you think the audience is going to be like like do you think the gays are going to come out jackson has a gay community but they're very like DL. on the dl, on the DL. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay gays on the dl are married or act like they're heterosexual and uh, having gay sex a lot on the side, on the down low. There was a whole Oprah about it. Wake up. All right, so I'm going to get maybe some DL gays. Well, I'll there's get a ladies. lot of outed gays, but I'm thinking like your event will be a... It'll be oh. like a rainbow flag. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Good. Good. Hey, Kathy, we're yeah. going to have to get going soon. Too. Go, Kathy! Go, Kathy! Go, Kathy! Go, Kathy! Go, Kathy. Go, Kathy. Go, Kathy. So they were excitable nice. crowd. I am obsessed with the skinny husband. I want that. I want some skinny guy to adore me while I'm being loud and obnoxious. If my super fans are any indication, I'll be performing for a lot of drunken heterosexuals and down low gays. I better bring my A game. Hey, Carl! Come on, Kathy! Right. 
actually the theater is about two thirds full. That's good. So I guess the drunks and the closeted Michiganites came out to my show after all. head of all time. How does, how does Rush Limbaugh even still have a job? He would party with Keith Richards and Keith would be like, I'm good. <laughs> Go ahead, Rush, I'm good. But even if some people showed up tonight, my sales for tomorrow night are at 40%. They are in the crapper. So my staff better be backstage right now, texting their little fingers to the bone, trying to push those. We just want to yeah. make you pretty. I just want to sit Like there. the pretty princess you are. After being cooped up in Jackson, Michigan all day and drinking, we decided to dress up Tom as a really ugly Kathy Griffin. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we should get Adam to get Kathy's hair extensions. Yes. I think it's funny that Paris Hilton is so outraged that there's a photo of her getting out of a car without the panties, right? There's a photo of Paris Hilton's vagina online. And I'm like, uh, honey, we've already seen a tape of something in it. <laughs> No, he just has a mullet. <laughs> this is in the front. Kathy Griffin in the back. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm Kathy Griffin. Blah, oh, no. blah, blah. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about what Kathy's going to think when she sees me. She's either going to laugh her ass off or she's going to kill me. When I get off stage, I usually can't see anything because of the bright lights, and so Tom leads me by the hand off stage. But that night, there was an ugly woman trying to abduct me. An ugly woman named Tom. What? What's happening? Are you drunk? Tom was a really sloppy version of me. First of all, I don't wear my bra on the outside. Um, secondly, I keep the glitter down to a shout. Tom's one of the only straight guys I know. Take it off, you're gonna stretch it. And if he's typical, I'm super nervous. Wait a minute, this is what you do when you house it. No, That's what this we... isn't what I do. Yes, it is, Tom. <laughs> While Tom ran off to reclaim his manhood, my super fan showed up with a straight man proposition of her own. What's his name? Hottie, fun, Irish, Catholic, Jim. Jim, all right. I'm serious. Okay. He would love to go out with you. Perfect. Not. To be honest, I'm not really ready to be in a relationship. I mean, I'll f a guy if it's convenient, but I only want to date for publicity. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put this right in my purse. I'll that one. Nice thought, Katie. But if this guy can't get my picture in the Inquirer, I'm gonna have to pass. Hello. This is Kathy Griffin. I'm talking to you because why? Uh, I'm a big, big television star, an Emmy nominee. I'm, I'm letting you go now. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, oh. We're now in Benton Harbor on day two of my Michigan tour, and things have gone from bad to worse. So, what are ticket sales at? How many seats sold out of how many seats? It's 7 Eleven out of 15, 17. Yeah. Now, any gay people give free tickets. Anybody who <laughs> seems even slightly know. bisexual, free. <laughs> free, free, free. That's right. I'm not even trying to sell tickets anymore. I'm just giving them away. And believe me, that chaps my ass. But the only thing worse than bombing is performing to empty chairs. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Great. Thanks. I'm Christina, and I'm going to be serving you folks today. OK. Are you going to come to the show tonight? I don't know if I can get off work, but I'll do my best. I'll give you free today, tickets. Do you want free tickets? No. The free tickets aren't the issue. Can you call my job and tell them I can't come to work? Isn't this your job? Well, I have two jobs. This is my daytime job, and that's my nighttime yeah, job. Yeah, give me your phone. I'll call him. OK. It's cell phone. His or her name? Tim. Hey, Tim, this is Kathy Griffin, and can Christina have the night off work tonight to come see my show? Who is this? This is Kathy Griffin. I'm talking to you because why? Uh, I'm a big television star, an Emmy nominee. All right, I'm, I'm letting you go now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Ouch. Ouch. When you're a D-lister, you get used to this stuff. He's not the first person to hang up on me that day.
I'll get hung up on probably later tonight. Can I just say that poor girl has two jobs and one of them is here, all right? Look at you two, sitting around all day eating bonbons, <laughs> gossiping about Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> I'm cold, what's <laughs> Lindsay doing? Okay, what I'm happened? I'm gonna call him back now. Does he know who I am or not? Yeah, I explained it to him. He should be answering the phone again. <laughs> Tim? Yeah. You might want to change your tune. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we, you son of a bitch? Christina knows the rules. What's the rule? If she can find somebody to cover her shift, absolutely. Her Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> My tour manager here used to be a waiter at Thank God It's Fridays for 13 years. What if he covered her shift? I'm thinking no. Oh, I haven't forgotten Tom dressing up as Kathy in drag backstage. So if he thinks he can just borrow my bra and hair extensions without paying a price, he's sadly mistaken. Hold on, I'm gonna put him on to talk some waiter lingo. Talk some waiter lingo. Uh, Come on, Tom, dazzle him. How big's the station for one waiter? Uh, four tables. Four tables? Oh, that's, that's tiny. I can do that. Hey, I'll let her be here at 4 o'clock when she's supposed to be here. Otherwise, I am gonna fire Christina, how's that? Oh, God! I don't want to tip of stage to you. Tom, do might seriously do your shift tonight, for real. This will be great. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, yeah. All you wear is jeans, and they'll give you a Texas Corral t-shirt and an apron, and that's it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> a Texas Corral t-shirt and uh -huh. an apron? I love it. Everyone wins in this offer, because Christina gets to come to my show, one more seat is filled, and we get to humiliate Tom. After the breakfast, we went over to the Texas Corral because I wanted to personally see what I had gotten Tom into. Who's Tim? I'm Tim. <laughs> Tim, thank you. You're a pillar of the community. Because of you and my tour manager, Christina can go to my show. Great. Um, this is Tom. Hi, Tom. Nice to meet you. I think it's important that Tim really puts Tom through the ropes because Tom's got a little cocky, all right? And once he serves an armful of tater skins, then he'll be grateful. Yeah. Now, um, what if anyone, I don't know, poops their pants during their meal? <laughs> Who's what? Who poops their pants during their meal? Can Tom clean it? Um, absolutely. So I'm predicting he will at some point break down. Um, he'll, he'll get sick. You know, he might, he might try to get a note from his mother, but at some point he will cry. You can count on that. See you later, boss. All right. Bye. Tonight, I reach a new low. I'm sharing double billing with the home and garden show. But with ticket sales in the toilet, I'm not above sticking my green thumb up the Garden Expo's ass. I have a show. If you'd like, I'll be happy to give you tickets. In a few hours, Tom becomes a waiter for the night. But till then, he's on my dime. So I'm pimping him out to sell more tickets. Hear ye, hear ye. Kathy Griffin show tonight. Free comedy show. I was so desperate to get people to come to that show that I tried to force tickets on farmers. You're here. Yes, I have a show. If you'd like, I'll be happy to give you tickets. I couldn't give them away. I think Tom did better with the sandwich board. Two free tickets. Two free tickets? Yeah, well, how come they got two free tickets? Oh, you want one? This is worth two free tickets right there. Awesome. Is that great? Thank you very much. Yeah. We, we got every what? flyer we had. I'm flyered out. I did have fun. I you should do this on tour. I need a bell. Despite my evil intentions, Tom actually liked donning a sandwich board. But don't worry. I'll get him later when he's sweating up a storm cleaning those tables. Have a good shift. Your Don't menu. wait up for me. Attitude is gratitude. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Big smiles. I want him to come back to the room later and be like, oh, girl, my dogs are killing me. I kind of think he's going to do a fine job. Hey, what's up? You know, um, since it's your first day and you're a little bit late, we went ahead and issued you a write-up for being a little oh, about an hour and a half late. Well, I'm already starting out in trouble. All right. Well, I'll, I'll file this and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. You know there's a band opening for you? You mean the deep fried yes. pickle project? Yeah. So that's unusual. I don't normally have an opener of any kind, much less a local band called the deep fried pickle project. <laughs> but tonight it all happens. project aside, the humiliation of giving away free tickets kind of paid off. The orchestra was pretty full, even if the balcony was pitifully empty. Hello! I would like to give it up for the Deep Fried Pickle Project. And very nice. Thanks, guys. And I'm very 
grateful that they told the first pussy joke. But yes, I hope you guys know, I tried to warn people, I hope nobody brought their kids, all right, not appropriate. I had a woman yell out at a show recently, hey, we have kids here. I said, get them the f out, what are they doing here? All right, so anyway, I have a roommate now. He eats over the sink with his hand, like just like a bowl of oatmeal like this, like a animal, it's disgusting. Also, you should know this about straight guys. I'll just tell you, they beat off all the time. <laughs> they love it. I swear to God, I'm scared to go to my own house because I'm going to walk in on Tom beating off like in the fountain or something to mix it up. Oh. I had fun doing my Tom material knowing that he was waiting tables because I did a split screen in my mind where I was on stage absolutely killing and everyone was laughing and cheering and yelling, go diva. And then Tom was just covered in sweat with a pink t-shirt on and plates just all up his arm, trying to get the tater skins right. Oh wait, I forgot to do it. Uh oh, all right, you guys are waiting way too long. I can't even remember what table number it is. I'm too old for this. I'm about ready to... I'm, lo I'm losing my breath. Thanks, you guys have been so nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And good night, thanks for coming. Thank you. It was great, and I really appreciate it. I had an awesome day today. Did you? Yeah, definitely. Good. So good. Well, we're gonna go um, tease Tom now. All right, let's go check up on Tom. Okay. Let's see if he still has a job with me or the restaurant. <laughs> Hi. We would like to be seated at the station of the new waitress, Tom. Welcome to Texas Corral. Just stop verbally abusing me and get my <laughs> salad. like to be seated at the station of the new waitress, Tom. <laughs> as soon as we arrived, Operation Torture Tom kicked in. I'd like some skins, but I would like the bacon to be extra well done. And if that means that you have to put it back on the grill personally, then so be it. Caesar salad uh, with um, lettuce and dressing only. No croutons, no cheese. I'd like a toss, but light dressing. If it's too much, it goes back. You want just lettuce and... Stop verbally abusing me and get my... Salad. I had so much fun at the Texas Corral with Tom as my waiter. I can barely see straight. I had maybe more fun at the Texas Corral than I did at the show. I had maybe more fun at the Texas Corral than I've ever had in my whole life. No tip. You will tell you right to your face. There's no tip. Okay. And you're gonna bust this table. I'll be and also... right back with your drinks then. A gay guy probably wouldn't let me lovingly abuse him the way Tom does, because a gay guy would have snapped so much of me, his fingers would have fallen off, and he'd be in the hospital for finger repair. What else cake looks good? I know. What if we just threw knives at him? What if we shook cake in his face? <laughs> he went to the What if I peed on him? Tom. We're at this table. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you might want to put the food in front of us. Tom was a terrible waiter. There, I said it. Hey, Tom. Yeah. How is it waiting on Kathy? It's, uh, that's a full-time job. Will you leave that for Tom? I'm begging you. Yeah, but I'm gonna need, like, reimbursement, though. Oh, God, I'll give you 20 bucks and a blowjob. Relax. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Yes. That's why you're my new favorite boss. Wow. <laughs> this was a test of Tom's loyalty, all right? If he's willing to wait tables for a fan, then what else will he do? I'd like to know if he would ever go out on stage when he puts my notebook and bottle of water on the stool if he would ever do it bottomless with just a cutoff workout shirt and a headband. That's next week. All right, you got to do them together. Got One, two, three. I can't get my mouth around it. Do it. Around it. Oh. Mm. Oh, what a perfect ending to a perfect day. Tom may think he's paid his dues, but I'm not done with him yet. Earning your place on Team Griffin is a lifelong task, so he better get used to it. Good job all around. Next, on My Life on the D-List. I'm doing Rosie's Gay Cruise, so I asked lesbian hottie Jackie Warner to give me the inside track on what will make these ladies laugh. Jackie is really hot. I can totally see turning lesbo. We need a handyman around this house. But good help is so hard to find. Am I the biggest celebrity you've ever handymaned for? Um, I'm sorry. I, I can't say I, I know exactly what show you're from or... In my own home. What the f are we doing here at 9 in the morning? I was doing a corporate gig in Vegas when I found out my dad was in the hospital. Yeah, he's up in ICU. <laughs> Don't know, I'm worried. Previously on My Life on the D-List, 
I came up with an ingenious plan for getting publicity. I don't think I should go out with any guys unless he can help get my picture in a magazine. But my parents aren't thrilled by my dating strategy. I'm just gonna f around. You're gonna what? Oh, who cares what my parents think anyway? My assistants got me a date with Backstreet Boy Nick Carter. The date was a success with Nick Carter. The paparazzi was there and it's on tape. Oh, sweet. But I still gotta make a buck. So I shot a corporate video that's gonna be shown at the company sales meeting. All right, so you're maintaining that you're heterosexual. Yep. In the hair business. In the hair business. That's your story you're sticking to all day. Absolutely. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin. I have a hot news flash. Jessica, you know my assistant Jessica from the Bravo show? You know Jessica, right? <laughs> Jessica's gay now. If anybody cares. Yes. Okay, but I have to tell you what, her, what turned her gay. MySpace. <laughs> I said, look, honey, don't pull your Anne Heche fake dyke sh with me. Yeah. That's all right. Because you know what? I called that one and you all turned on me. I called it. I knew it. And let me tell you why. I had dinner with them one time. I sat right across the table from her. I knew that was a fake dyke a mile away, all right? I did. She wasn't even wearing a tool belt. What the f kind of a dyke is that? Company meeting. All right, so what's going on with the gay cruise? I've never been on a cruise before. Neither have I. Well, this one's very specific. It's kids and the lesbians who love them. I'm doing stand-up on the Rosie O'Donnell cruise, and I really have no idea what makes lesbians laugh. Even if Jessica just thinks she's a lesbian, then this is clearly a market I need to crack. This is my new focus. And I don't need a bunch of snotty-nosed kids getting in my way. Keep the kids away from me. Okay. That's your main job. If you see any children running toward me... <laughs> we'll push them off the boat. Take them out the knees. Trip them. That sort of thing. I want to see somebody hung up on a hook by their jacket. <laughs> Cut it out, lady. <laughs> lady. Um, all right, well, I'm looking forward to it. I've written some new lesbian material, so I'm going to try it out at a casino gig I have in a little town called Santa Inez, which I guess is named after Saint Inez, who I've never heard of. But who I'm hoping is a proud lesbian. Oh, sh who's got directions and stuff? I have uh, some directions. This is an important bonding opportunity for me and my new crew. And I'm saving money by not flying. Let the bitching begin. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Tiff, can we delete some? Yeah. I've been dating some guys for photo ops, but I can be sluttier than that. However, the one-nighter numbers are cluttering up my cell phone. Who knew it was this hard to be a hoe bag? Alfonso. Delete. <laughs> uh, and don't call him by mistake. I call him the clit flicker. Meaning, he was too rough down there, and he, like, here's my clit. And he'd be like, <laughs> like that. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what are you flicking the clit for? Yes. <laughs> like, my clit was livid. <laughs> you went on a date or something? Yes. Or did he just come over no. or something? And start flicking my clit like crazy? Hi! <laughs> flick, flick, flick! Ow, ow, ow! Ding dong! Ow! <laughs> I remember though, I went out with him one more time after he flicked my clit, and the whole time at the restaurant, my clit was like, don't even think about it. <laughs> I swear to God, I know this guy. I've seen him. And it, my, my clit did that thing like a car when you back up and the beeps get faster. <laughs> 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 Luckily, on our route was a weird, stuck in some sort of a Danish time warp town of Solvang. Apparently, Danish people like two things stuffing their faces with sweet things and windmills. Hi! Hi. We're starving and we hear you have delicacies. Oh boy, you gotta have an Abel Schemer. Oh no, what, no, what are these called? Abel Skeevers are Danish pancakes and they're Ooh. yummy. They make these weird pancakes called Abel Skeevers or Abel Skivers. I don't know what they're called and I don't care. They're delicious. <gasps> Look oh. at this. Yeah. I have a very intimate relationship with food, which is I love it and it is on the fence about me. 
So it's like that guy you bang, and during it, you're like, this is great. And then afterwards, you're going, ugh, why did I have to wear that French maid outfit? I feel stupid. This is a two or three day process. It's not uh, something that just happened overnight. I know? stopped talking and give me some chocolate. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was rude. That's I'm, you would. I'm sorry. I... Can you hope you like that? Give it to me. Give it. <laughs> I shame the town. It's not the first time, sweetheart. <laughs> Danish meatball. I want, do you think it's like a Swedish meatball? It looks like muffins. <laughs> Are you gonna get sick before your show? Yes. Someone's holding my hair. I overrate in solving, okay? I admit it. Don't tell Bobby the trainer. I'm like a guppy. I will eat till I explode. That's how I'm gonna die, I'll tell you right now. Tonight, my act will be solving jokes. Yeah. All right, pamphlet. Daneland. Did you read Daneland? I'm gonna write. <laughs> I have Danish form from Daneland. <laughs> what else happened in solving? Uh, you tried to steal candy from yeah, a baby. Yeah. Okay, candy from a baby. Look, I like talking about fried, powdered sugar, jelly-filled dough balls as much as the next straight girl. But I've got lesbian material to work on. Let's go. Tom Chunk, Jessica's gay now, Tiffany. <laughs> Just write it. Gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tonight, we rock Santa Inez, mother <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I spent the day in solving. Uh, yes, I, uh, I had Abel Skeevers. Yeah, pancake balls with jelly and powdered sugar. Sweet. nauseated right now. I had like 17 of them. They're so goddamn good. All right, so so I'm doing stand-up on the Rosie O'Donnell Lesbians and Their Children cruise. And uh, so I call my mom to ask her to go on the cruise and this is her response. What? We're not going on any goddamn cruise for Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Son of a bitch. God. Damn it. What the hell kind of a cruise is it? Lesbians and their children? How the Christ do lesbians have children? Jesus Christ. God damn it. Moses and the tablets and Peter and Paul and the other ones. Christ's sake. I need a drink. Click. during the show. But I had like 14 fried dough jelly balls before the show. So afterwards, I had to have a little lie down. Kathy, can you eat anything? You have chocolate. <laughs> if I could puke, oh, from my mouth to God's ears. I don't know how those girls do it. So, Tom, you apparently have no skills and can't do anything. Oh, chance. So, <laughs> You're my only friend. <laughs> Tom was supposed to be the man of the house and also fix things, but he can't fix anything, and usually he breaks things. So basically the house is falling apart, and we've got to do something about it. Uh, no, what, what needs to be fixed around here? Lots of stuff. All right, exhibit A. I'm Tom, 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 Tom. What else is broken? Besides Tom's spirit. Um. Is there anything outside? These lights. Oh, what about broken lights down there too? Yeah. The drive-up lights. Oh, the drive-up lights are a disaster. So we need a handyman. A hot handyman. The guys have to have a pretty tough skin if they're going to work for me. Do they have a spirit that can be broken easily? Because if so, don't even walk in the door. Can we have auditions? Like my Super Sweet 16? <laughs> yeah, yes. With a table? Yes, yes, and they can take their shirt off. While Team Griffin rounds up Candyman, I mean Handyman, 
I've got research to do for the Rosie O'Donnell Cruise. Jackie. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's so nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> My pleasure. So I'm getting the advice of Jackie Warner, star of that show Workout, and maybe she can tell me what the lesbians really like when it comes to humor. I know she knows what they like, you know what I mean? You are very, very beautiful. Yeah? You're the fantasy. This is the whole, Aww. this is Showtime After Dark right now. Jackie is really hot. I can totally see turning lesbo. Super lipstick. Because you know, one thing that I always say to my guy buddies who love girl on girl porn, right? Is I always say, okay, well, you like to see chicks getting it on, huh? It's kind of hot, right? They take the clothes off. One thing leads to another. Maybe they're oiling each other. Well, that happens with Billie Jean King and Janet Reno. Now picture it, fellas. Now, I am determined to crack the lesbian audience because I thought the lesbians would laugh at the same stuff the boy gays do, not so much. Mm -mm. Okay, the lesbians don't like sexual references as much as the men. The really? men, you know, you know, yeah, they like love the, the body, yes. huge penis jokes. Right. Who, the who, lesbians, who wants to go barebacking? Me, I do, girl. Yeah, lesbians okay. hide from that a little bit. You know, I'm not really coming from the same place they are. A lot of lesbians I know are very nurturing. I'm like, not that nurturing. They're super into having kids. I don't care for children, and I don't want to get to know yours. And they're super into like nesting and stuff. We have a tiny little circle and they all sleep with each other, which is, you know. Oh, kinda... like a, it's like a gay Melrose place. Uh, absolutely it is. And then jokes about how you go on three dates and then you buy a house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to get them to that place where they're just doubled over. Yeah. What? Sex toys are good. Sex toys? Yeah, lesbians like to talk about that. Is it just, what would the toys be? Like every t type of strap on and vibe uh, everything. Maybe gentle, womanly strap ons. What is a gentle woman? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I got some great tips from Jackie. Now if I could just look like her, muscly and yet lipstick, I'd finally win over the lesbians. Good. Okay, ready? You're gonna turn loose. Big oh. steps. Big steps. Good. Yeah, you got it. Good. You're working your inner thighs. You're working your butt on this. You're working your calves. Everything. I'm working my panic muscle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Obviously, you love doing this. Obviously. All right. Let's go outside. <laughs> Squat and kick. All right. <laughs> it's me. Oh, what? I want you to hit me. With my foot? Yeah, no, hit it. Here, watch. I can't get my foot up there. Now faster. Ten. Oh. Nine. Seven. One more. That, a push-up, is a perfect upper body exercise. If you but did, did you have to wear the strap on? I felt it, honey. Don't act like I wasn't in the room. <laughs> I can't help it. She's a little tougher than Bobby. I don't know if I can handle it. You know, when I work out with Bobby, it's difficult, but it's fun and... Go, 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 go. I can walk the next day. I can still use my bowels. Kathy, go, go, go. Yeah. Nice job. 10. Did I have a baby? <laughs> Do I what? I something came out. I think I had a baby. <laughs> now I want to get some good shoulders in and back. Okay. <laughs> that bitch almost killed me. It was a tough workout. Again. <sighs> I'm going to be sore the rest of my life. How are you? I'm Kathy. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Gage. What a shock. Afterwards, I ran into a gay guy <laughs> who likes me. And of course, he turns out to be a gay porn star. I just wanted to feel him. Ooh, but can I just feel your body? Sure. I know that's inappropriate. And I, I, I you can feel my boobs, except you probably don't care that much. But God damn it. Seriously. Can you spoon me? Sure. I really like to be spooned. Oh, come on. Seriously. Now look, I'm not putting down the gay community. But can't you gays throw one back every once in a while? All right, that guy was insanely hot. And he also thought I was hot in a way that no straight guy ever would. Do you turn a lot of gays? I try. God, I try. First Actually, place. I was called the gay maker in my high school. <laughs> I would meet men and accidentally turn them gay. I think I got some good tips from Jackie. I think I can crack the lesbians. I'm, I'm going to try my damnedest. And also, I'm going to be throwing Jackie's name around a lot. So you guys, you know, I'm totally in with Jackie. She's one of my best friends. Big lesbian. Okay. Good luck on that cruise. All right. All hey, right. bye. All right, so the goal is for me to find a handyman who's actually competent. Am I the biggest celebrity you've ever handymaned for? Um, I'm sorry. I, I can't say I, I know exactly what, what, what show you're from. All right, so the goal is for me to find a handyman who's actually competent and for you girls to have someone cute to look at. So the mansion is falling apart and we've got to do something about it. So we've advertised for a handyman and today is the day we get to interview the candidates for the job. 
All right, so we're ready for our first guy. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your name? My name is Zachary. Zachary. All right. What's your favorite tool to fix stuff with? Um, I just got a new drill for Christmas, and so I'm, I'm very in love with it right now. Why don't you marry it? <laughs> <laughs> you say that you can fix anything. How would you fix my career? Uh, we'll start with some visualization, some meditation, some positive affirmation. I'm a certified massage therapist. Oh, I'm also a musician. Jessica, Bass. trying to, to f*** on the way out. <laughs> I've devised a surefire test to see which one of these handymen deserves to be my guy. This is not attached, and as you can see, it's very easy to dislodge. Mm -hmm. We've tried glue. How would you finally put this glass on top of the table and make it stay there? Mm, and you've already tried glue? Yes. It's simple. You don't know how to fix the table, you don't have the job. Next. Hey, Violin. Yeah. What is your special trick for getting semen out of a swimming pool filter? Um, have a hooker come suck it out. <gasps> oh. <laughs> well, you, you know what? You want a job done right, you go to the pro. Exactly. All right? It's not like the first filter she sucked out. <laughs> I know. Now, this table, what would you do? I would take it to the uh, manufacturer. No, <laughs> you're not gonna go to a store in Tucson. Next. Do you have any cute guy friends you can introduce me to? Yeah. Do you have pictures of them? Uh, on my phone? Anyway. Okay. Yeah, wanna see it? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you take pictures of your cute guy friends on your phone? Well, it's with me. Next. Am I the biggest celebrity you've ever handymaned for? Um, yeah, I'm sure. Um, what's, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't say I, I know exactly what, what, what show you're from or... <laughs> In my own home. Next. Hey, Robbie. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your favorite tool to fix with? I like the airless sprayer. Just because you get to go nuts, you know? When you go in the. Did you ever do that to the dogs? <laughs> you know what? I, the worst thing I did to a dog, I got one of my clients' dogs hopped up on caffeine and he jumped off the balcony. <gasps> to his death? I hope not, oh. but that's the last I saw of him. But it wasn't that high. So I figured maybe, you know. Next. What are your areas of expertise? Like, would you say you're better at electrical, plumbing, carpentry? What are you good at? Carpentry. All right, you, you say you can fix most anything. Let's start with my career. I wouldn't even know where to begin. I wouldn't either. <laughs> Boy, for the Boy Morris Agency? All right, how can we just freaking attach this top? All you would have to do is switch to rubber grommets. What do you mean? See these rubber pieces right in here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take those off and put new ones on that have an actual suction coat, that'll take care of your problem. Okay. All right, with the bolt in the nose, and the earrings, and the tattoos, he does kind of look like one of Jessica's exes. But he can fix the table. What else does it say he's done? It says, system installation, carpentry on yachts, mechanic, specializing on foreign cars. Front-end specialist. I'm highly- me on my ass. And this is my new living lover. He speaks sp Spanish fluently. <gasps> oh. All right. Right. Um, so he's clearly the best one. Yeah, he actually he has. actually know how to do shit. <laughs> yeah. So Congratulations, you won. <laughs> <laughs> James has no idea what he's, he's in for. See, the channel up doesn't work, because this okay. is driving me crazy. <laughs> are you gonna make, are you gonna save the day? Oh yeah, sure. All right. All this upkeep at the compound, that costs money. Mrs. Kathy's gotta go back to work. So I'm here in Vegas for a corporate gig I'm doing tomorrow in the morning. Hello? Hey, it's Kathy. Hi. It's really bad timing because I've just heard that my dad has gone into the hospital. Is dad well enough to talk? Oh, I'm so sorry he's asleep. He wanted to talk to you so bad. I hate to wake him up. I... No, no, don't wake him up. Don't wake him all up. All right. How is his pain level? He's just so tired all the time. And he's in the ICU? Yeah, he's up in the ICU. And he my dad's been in and out of the hospital for about the last six months, and uh, you know he always puts on a really brave front when he's at home. And so, what's different about this is that I guess he has a lot of fluid around his heart, and they have to go in and do another bypass. 
They yeah. can't do anything till they stable. So I don't know what they can't stable. What do you do then? You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. My mom has been so strong with my dad's health problems. And it's interesting because my whole life, my mom was the frail one and my dad was always the strong one who took care of everything. How are you doing, Ma? How are you sleeping and stuff? Well, I'm, I'm all right, except I just, I have, have, I have little meltdowns every so often when it hits me, you know. Yeah. Jesus, he's coughing a lot today, a goddamn cough. It's uncomfortable when he coughs again. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking to my mom and I'm thinking, he's gonna be okay. I'm so used to him being okay. No matter what, he always pulls out of it. I didn't tell him yet, but I even called a uh, good shepherd and asked him to, uh, at all the masses to pray for him. Well, the priests were probably real busy molesting kids anyway, so. Well, that's right. So. Probably, they'll, you know, they'll get to it in their own time. If eventually. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I'll light a candle for you here in Vegas. Okay. I know. I know you'll be visiting all the churches and all that. <laughs> you know me. Can't, can't just go from church to church lighting candles for Dad because that's the way she is. <laughs> I'm going to try to call between my rehearsal and when we go to dinner. All right. I love you. I love you too, hon. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye. The doctors are not sugarcoating it, and they're saying it just doesn't look very good. And they have to stop the heart, which is really frightening, you know, at his age, and they're gonna try to start it up again. Okay, what exactly is happening in the next few hours? You're doing sound check, a little run through of what's going on tomorrow. Okay, now, whose ass am I kissing tonight? Uh, Sandra? Sandra? Sandra, everything Humphreys. is Sandra, signed Love Sandra. Humphreys. It, it's really hard when I'm away and I can't run to their side. Not that it offers much comfort, but you know, it sucks to not just be able to get in the car and drive over there. Hello, hello, hair breakfast people. It's definitely hard to, to be on and be funny when, you know, your dad's facing a serious life-threatening operation. It's now my pleasure to introduce a man you know very well, and I just met yesterday. He's my new best friend in the world, and he promised me all the product I can stuff in my bra. All right, I'm out. I'm gonna call my dad, he's in the hospital. Yeah, I know, it sucks. Congestive heart failure. I know, so I, I told him I'd call him around seven, so. I'll call him now. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Okay. See you later. Hello? Dad? Hello? Hey, it's Kathy. Uh, uh, Kathy? Yeah? Oh, hi, hon. And uh, you're in Las Vegas, I take it. I am. I was just um, out of rehearsal for the uh, corporate thing I have tomorrow morning. I'm sort of the entertainment for their morning meeting at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning in Vegas. Oh, boy. I know. Uh, you can do it, Kat. I'll try. Very, very proud of you. Aw, thanks, Welcome. Dad. Now, how are you feeling as of this moment? Yeah, I got all kinds of goofy little, little things wrong with me. But none of them are is it, until I get the goddamn operation. And how is your fatigue level? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of crappy. I, I, uh... I'm talking to my dad on the phone, and I thought, you know, he just doesn't sound up to snuff. And not in a way that's necessarily because he might be on drugs, he's in the hospital or something, but I, I really am worried he sounds very different. I think I'll get through it, Kat. Yeah, well, I... And then I'll be in better health to do a little more things. Well, sure, and that's what you want. You want to be able to get out and get around like before. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't played with the dogs. I know, they miss you desperately. They're very neglected. I know, I, I just said, what do they think about me? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you very much for calling on me. I love you, I, Dad. I, I love you very much. I love you very and much, too. I'm very proud of you. There's a little part of him that I thought had an urgency in his voice. Like, I, I want to say these things. There's a chance I may not ever get to say them again. Not come dead. I will. <laughs> All right, honey. All right. Bye. Whoa. He just sounded, like, tired and stuff. I mean, he is tired. He's in the hospital, but I don't know. I'm worried. You'd be going under when you're 90 years old. I mean, geez. I'm sure he's thinking he's probably, you know, lucky to have a 50-50 shot. And he just, he says the shortness of breath is too much to live with. And he just, he just has been expressing in the last six months, I don't feel like I can live this way. I don't feel like I have the quality of life that I can really bear. And I'm so scared for my mom because to know that her partner is gonna be going under the knife, I don't know. What the f 
are we doing here at 9 in the morning? Jesus Christ, it's Sunday. Good morning. I heard just one thing. If uh, there could be a few uh, mess. God, this is going to be a long freaking thing, right? Yeah. Sunday morning in Vegas, I'm doing a corporate gig. But I'm finding it kind of hard to focus after that phone conversation I had with my dad last night. Shoes, bullet points? Shoes. Bullet points. Okay. I feel extremely guilty, extremely guilty that I'm not able to be there for him and for my mom and the rest of my family. But I really do know that my dad wouldn't want me to cancel a show or leave a job in the middle of it to, you know, run to his bedside. I, I really do know that. Okay. There are thousands of stylist type people here at the hair care convention, which means I can probably just gay it up for an hour. Plus, they're showing the corporate mockumentary that I made for them. All right, so you're, you're maintaining that you're heterosexual. Yep. In the hair business. In the hair business. At your store, you're sticking to all day. Absolutely. Did you ever get hit on by the stylist? I have. They tell me that some hairstylists are of a homosexual persuasion. Now, I've never met one, but I hear they're okay. They were all out very late last night, partying it up stylist style. So they may not be in the best mood to hear my stand up early in the morning on a Sunday. We are thrilled to have as a host for today's proceedings the hilarious Kathy Griffin. What the f are we doing here at 9 in the morning? <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's Sunday. I'm hungover. I need a little hair of the dog. Be a beautifully styled hair of the dog. Who went to Pure last night? <laughs> How many people puked? Anybody? Come on. But this is the perfect crowd to be like, hold my hair. Is it too early for that joke? It's what? It's good morning. All right. Um, some of the stuff's just biting it. So my ego's, uh, you know, it's taken a little bit, a little bit of a hit. That's okay. Um, but I get paid either way. All right, please welcome Senior Vice President and General Manager Redkin, U.S. Pat Parenti. <laughs> They're over me. They're so over me. It's ridiculous. I heard just one thing. If uh, there could be a few less. They'd be happy. I, I'm, I'm the messenger. So. I've already been told that I swore way too much. And the example was, can you please stop saying, what the f are we doing here on a goddamn Sunday morning in Vegas? I said that or one of the other performers? <laughs> it must have been. It wasn't uh, Pat Parenti? I, there was a little bit of like, how many of the commandments are, are you going to break? You know, <laughs> Before <so>. lunch. <laughs> They've just dropped the bomb that the audience isn't hairstylists, it's salespeople. That's a big difference. I actually, I actually have been asked not to try to not swear as much. Um, apparently the quote, what the f are we doing here on a goddamn Sunday morning was a little much. I don't recall saying it. I believe I said, what the fudge, but now I feel like they're totally over me. And they'll just look at me like, mm, not so much, not so funny, funny lady. By the way, during the coffee break coming up, I'm going to be live on the red carpet, and don't be shy, I come and I'm gonna just ask you silly questions, and I promise not to be mean, it'll be fun. I still don't know exactly what they want, and I'm almost done with the job, but I will tell you this, I'm dreading the red carpet thing, dreading it. They've set up this kind of cute, phony, paparazzi, red carpet scene. It's very much like the Oscars, except it's nothing like that. <laughs> Point out someone here that you can see who really, really made a fool of themselves. Oh, I can't see her. There, how come that one woman is volunteering? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. You look like you're still a little half in the bag. Am I right? A little bit, right? Well, I think I'm need to preach to you this morning. It's Sunday morning, and my name's Christian, so that only means one thing. More swearing? Uh, actually, a little less would be nice. <laughs> oh, f that. Right. This is just what I need. Jesus with the weird bangs. What would Jesus do? He wouldn't wear bangs. All right, let, let go of me. Now, did you go to Pure last night? I didn't go to Pure last night. Stayed in your room and read the Bible? No. That's what I did oh, all night long. All right, hi, Mom. I think I've seen you on TV, but I'm not sure. Tell your mom that Kathy Lee Gifford signed the shirt. Please go back inside, take your seat, and enjoy the rest. All right, you guys, we're out. Thanks for everything so much. Whew, that was a little rough, but the gig's over, and now I get to go home and see my dad in the hospital. We're just trying to get him stabilized. 
This time is different. I can tell by my mom's voice. And I thought, wow, she's this worried. I better be this worried. It just seems to be going from bad to worse. I don't know what to think. It's very emotional. Yeah, I know. So anyway, all right, I'll talk to you later. And uh, I'm, oh, I'm so hoping for good news, you know. I know. But, you know, you just, I just want them to start getting better. My mom holds it together very well, better than I could for sure. But I know that she crumbles, especially when we're not there. And that's what makes me the most sad. They have my dad in intensive care now, and it seems like he's taken a turn for the worse. He's, he's sick. Uh, yeah, um, tubes in his throat, uh, cannot speak. Uh, you don't really know like what he can understand, what he can't. Uh, real frustrating because he really wants to communicate and he, he wanted me to hand him a pen and paper and the nurse tried earlier and the nurse showed us and it's his scribbles and you know he's sort of writing and you can see he's, he's like, what, why can't you read this? It's so obvious. I'm optimistic based on nothing. So it, you know, it's, it's abject optimism. For have they age, given any kind of a chance, like he has this 50-50 chance? I haven't heard that. My brother John has flown in from Chicago and hopefully he and I could lean on each other. They have not had that talk with anybody yet. Yeah. We've got to watch, you know, his uh, breathing capacity and that they want to get him off the respirator. Yeah, if he can just breathe on his own, I yeah. think that's huge. Yeah, right. And then worry about the rehab and getting right. back home and all that stuff. But if right. he can just breathe on his own and then he can talk. Yeah, right. All right, I gotta um, so catch a plane, I gotta job. All right, very good. All I right. gotta, I'm, gonna, I'm heading back tonight myself too, so. All right, I'll see you, all all see right. you. Of course I wanna stay with my dad, but I do have this commitment to go to Miami and do the Rosie O'Donnell cruise. And part of me is grateful that I have something to distract me, and the other part of me is racked with guilt. Because of course I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what if I never get to see him again? It's terrifying. They took the breathing tube out, he wasn't able to breathe on his own, and then they had to put him back on it. I think if you can't breathe on your own, then it's decision time. You know, and that's my biggest fear is that, that they would have to turn to my mom and say, okay, well, what do you want to do here? I don't know. I mean, how much can you expect someone at that age to be able to recover? I don't know. We're all flying out to do the Rosie O'Donnell, our family cruise. And yet, I don't feel good about leaving right now. It's here. That moment I have been just dreading my whole life is here. It really just hit me like a baseball bat. This afternoon, we're all flying out to do the Rosie O'Donnell, our family cruise. We gotta get moving. Is that a threat, Tom? Yeah, I'll get go in. down there and kick your f ass. <laughs> I just got back from visiting my dad, and even though my mom said, I can't cancel, I shouldn't disappoint people, of course I don't feel good about leaving right now. Thanks very much. As soon as the plane landed, I checked my cell phone, and I had nine voicemails. The second one was from my sister, Joyce. And she had an urgency in her voice, and then her voice started to crack, and then she just said, Dad just died an hour ago. I, I just, I just felt like, it's here. That moment I have been just dreading, my whole life is here. And I was so mad, I was so far away. I just, I don't know what happened. I think I put my head down or something. 
I just remember like crying, like I just remember making this weird sound, crying like a weird sound, like a, like an animal or something. I've been trying to plan for it in my mind, but it really just hit me like a baseball bat. And I just kept thinking, I can never talk to him again. Of course, I canceled my gig on Rosie's cruise and took the first flight back to LA. dad's memorial service and we're all going to go to the church. Still, I keep thinking he's going to walk in the door any minute now. You did an awesome job. It looks really, really nice. Thank you. It just brings a smile to my face. All right. All right. We found out a few days after he passed that he summoned one of the doctors at the hospital and I guess he wrote down something like, you know, I want to take the tube out. He didn't put my mom in the position of having to pull the plug. So apparently what he did was he had them put golf on the TV because he was a golf fanatic and they took the tube out and he passed right away with his golf on. And I'm sure he's in heaven not regretting that decision. special. He was one of a kind. Hi, we're here. Your okay. favorite company. Hello. Hi, hon. He was no nonsense, no BS, and yet everybody knew how sweet he was. Mr. Romano. Hey. I understand you're to be here, what, 10 minutes? Yes. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, not don't you think around and leave early. Have you met my parents? Oh, yeah. I, oh, I met them. They insulted me already. I, <laughs> he was extremely supportive of my career. We take yeah, so you watch me on The View, but you won't listen to me on Howard. Well, Howard is like 6 a.m. Who the hell's up at 6 a.m.? Yeah. People who care about their daughters. I'm deeply in love with you, but $15.99, no. Well, how much do you think it should be? Two bucks? I was in the three ninety nine, four ninety nine area, <laughs> yes. Kathy, don't take any crap from those people. I won't. I don't care if you never work again. <laughs> in the event that we are captured by insurgents, mm -hmm. what can we count on you guys paying? Well, how, how about the 9025? Then we go You're back. You're going to give up the condo? Do you think that an Iraqi is going to want a condo in West Hollywood? Well, you never know. Kathy, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. He was very, truly young at heart. Yeah. Pinot Grigio, followed by some more Pinot Grigio. I'll just sit here and uh, have a little wine or something like that, and uh, Captain and I will talk. <laughs> yes. I asked him one time, I said, Dad, what's the secret to a happy marriage? Everybody wants to know. He goes, well, Dolly, he goes, the guy's got to think the girl is just the greatest gal in the world. And the gal's got to think the same thing about the guy. And I said, that's it? He said, yeah. And I don't think I was ever sexy, so. You were not blatantly <laughs> sexy, but I never was <clears throat> hidden sexy. Oh. He truly passed his sense of humor down to me. I think that's what I'm going to miss the most. It's the day after my dad's memorial and I'm booked to do two shows in Vegas. I'm nervous because I do want to talk about him in my act, but I'm not sure if I can get through it. Are you going to be okay talking about him on stage? I don't know. If it's a tepid audience, it's going to be so hard. Yeah. If they're like, I mean, I don't know. I already don't know what to say about my dad, you know. You mean on stage? Yeah. It's my well, first show after my dad. Right, exactly. I'm going to definitely say thank God for you guys, because I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for this, so let's have some fun. I'm grateful to have this show, to get out there and get my mind off my dad's passing. It's something to do besides just cry. I got to pack. OK. OK. I feel like sometimes she tries too hard to be strong, and she needs to just feel what every human would feel when they lose something very important to them. I'm just scared she's gonna fall and like 
fall apart on stage or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of afraid yeah. of that too. Mm -hmm. Start telling the story about her dad yeah. and just lose it. She's choosing to work. I wouldn't do it. I would break down. So I'm nervous. But how full is it? If the first tier is completely full, okay. but then on the second tier where, where it goes up, the yeah. middle section, I don't know if they're blocking that whole section off uh -huh. or and waiting to fill in the rest, but that part's empty. I'm a nervous wreck. I am afraid to like start to cry or something crazy. All good. You're gonna hold my hand as I walk up? Red to key, she's ready to go. I don't know if this is a good idea. I could fall apart out there. I don't know if I can keep it together. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mandalay Bay Theater Las Vegas! Thank you so much for coming. I have a notebook full of new material. I'm so excited to be here. First of all, let me take care of the elephant in the room. I'm doing two shows at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas the day after my dad's memorial, and I'm definitely worried I can't keep it together. Please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin! Hello, Vegas! Thank you so much for coming. I love this theater. It's a gorgeous theater. They normally do Mamma Mia. Tonight, it's Mama Usa. So thank you, hello, hello, hello. First of all, let me take care of the elephant in the room. I don't know if any of you know, but my father passed away last week. So I know, I know, it sucks. So anyway, I just wanna thank you guys for coming because if it wasn't for tonight, I'd be like at home crying. So thank you for coming, we're gonna have a great time. Thank you. As soon as I mentioned my dad, I could tell by the audience's reaction that they were right there with me. So I have to just tell you one thing, and this sort of set the tone for like why he was so special. When I was a little kid, he had this best friend named Mr. Gillian, and you know, it was the 70s, and Mr. Gillian had just redone his rec room. Remember rec rooms? <laughs> Remember with like the paneling? What do you do in rec rooms? But we thought it was great. So Mr. Gillian had just redone his rec room, and it was Sunday after church, and all the kids were there, and he's looking at my dad, and he's like, so what do you think, John? And my dad pauses, and he goes, what a sh box. <laughs> Cool so anyway, I, I am, I have a whole notebook full of new material. I'm so excited to be here. I don't even know where to start. Uh, let's dive right in. Bald Britney beat up a car. I don't know what Britney's plan is, but I also like how she's getting tips from Mariah Carey. <laughs> Who's bonkers, right? So... That's the blonde leading the bald right there. She's nuts, but Mariah Carey can really sing. So no matter how nuts Mariah Carey gets, she's gonna show up at the Oprah Legends Ball and sing the out of some gospel song, right? And then she'll be back on top. What the is Britney gonna do? I mean, seriously. She's gotta like start Dakota Fanning or some It's not my fault, it's the grief talking. So anyway. At the end of the day, I'm actually glad I did this gig. It helped me a lot, it was kind of therapeutic. She just did it. I absolutely know it's what my dad would have wanted. I wanna thank you guys sincerely. I don't know what I'd do without you tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good night! Next, on My Life on the D-List. I'm going to do a guest appearance on HSN. If someone gets me a pretzel, I will eat off that floor. In fact, I'm gonna sit on it, because that's how clean it is. I'm at the Roosevelt Middle School, where my nephew Johnny attends, and I'm gonna do kind of a Q&A, who wants to get into television kind of a speech. Also in show business, girls, it'll help you if you get boob jobs, and boys, if you're gay, that'd be great. It'll just move things along faster. How you doing? Pretty good. Hanging in there? Now look, I wanted to talk to you about um, maybe you moving in. Well? Previously on My Life on the D-List, I'm here in Vegas for a corporate gig. Hello, hello, hello! What the f*** are we doing here at nine in the morning? And it's really bad timing because I've just heard that my dad has gone into the hospital. They yeah. can't do anything till they stable, so I don't know. As soon as the plane landed, I checked my cell phone and my sister said, dad just died an hour ago. It really just hit me like a baseball bat. 
but I know my dad would have wanted me to get out there and perform right away. I don't know if any of you know, but my father passed away last week. I just want to thank you guys for coming because if it wasn't for tonight, I'd be like at home crying. Uh, let's dive right in. Bald Britney beat up a car. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. All right, so I'm very famous. I have two assistants. I'm building my empire, much like Suzanne Summers. Anyway, um, <laughs> do you hear the choir of angels when you just say Suzanne? I worship her. She's my idol. I worship. You know why? I like people like that that are like a little bit of a joke, right? But laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> I do. I love her. She's got a an empire, right? She has everything. She's got the QVC and all that stuff. And here's what I love about her. She's got her own plane. Yeah, ha, 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 she's a joke. How did you get here tonight? <laughs> all right, she took her plane. She's going home on Air Summers or some shit. <laughs> Company meeting. Watching TV? Well, I'm watching HSN. I'm going to St. Petersburg, Florida because I have my big audition for Home Shopping Network. If I can become a top spokesperson at HSN, I can develop my own products, and then I can finally become Suzanne Summers and make loads of money. What am I doing exactly? And I know it's with Jennifer Flavin Stallone, right. which is very exciting to me. What are her products or whatever? I'm assuming it's a full top to bottom skincare line. It's called Serious. Serious skincare. Serious? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, I'm serious about looking good. Seriously. I'm going to be a skin model naturally. For Jennifer Flavin Stallone, married to, of course, Sly Stallone, I'm not going to have to like take my makeup off and put it on to prove. I hope not. No, it's a no that's a deal breaker for me. No, are you prepared to call in if no one calls? Sure. My okay. grandma's an avid watcher. <gasps> What's your grandma doing right now? Babysitting. Let's call her. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in the What's middle What's your name again? I forgot. Millie. Hold on. Millie. Hello. Millie? Yeah? It's Kathy Griffin. Hi. How you doing? Tiffany showed up to work drunk again, and I wanted to talk to you about it in private. <laughs> oh, no, I don't believe that. She was high on pot? <laughs> no. She's bringing a bunch of guys to the house? No, I wish she would. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask your advice. I'm going to do a guest appearance on HSN with Jennifer Flavin Stallone. Can you give me any advice on how to be a good salesperson? Like, what would make you pick up the phone and call in and buy the product? Well, I like it when they put it on right there, you know. Are you afraid to be without makeup? Yes, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing that at this stage of the game. What's next? Oh, maybe if you show a close-up of your cellulite, people will want to buy anti-vomit potion. That's not a good plan for me. <laughs> However, I think it would be a personal touch if I volunteered my assistant, Tiffany. Well, she's my granddaughter. I think she's so pretty. Okay, whatever. Cut the crap, lady. <laughs> if Tiffany gets you the phone number, will you call in and act like you want to buy the product? Of course I will. Say that um, you only called in because you love Kathy Griffin so much and that there's something about Kathy Griffin that makes you want to spend money on products. Okay. I'm going to have Tiffany email that to you also and fax you your script. <laughs> All right, I told her exactly what to say. She better not screw it up. All right, thanks, Millie. I will kill her. Bye. Thank you for calling. <laughs> I had to hang up. She was hung on, on. up on it. <laughs> um, all right, so we're all set. <laughs> I invited my mom over to my house today because I want to see how she's doing. Ma? Yeah. Hey! Hi. Hi! Since my dad passed away, I'm nervous about her being on her own in their condo because, you know, we don't really know where she is right now with the grieving. Chance. Hi, sweetie. Hi, nice doggy. I don't want her to fade away. That's my biggest fear. I have friends that say, oh, well, once one spouse passed away, the other one just kind of faded away. So I'm going to make her an offer she can't refuse. Now, look, I wanted to talk to you about um, maybe you moving in. Well? Because, I, I mean, I am nervous about you just, you know, being alone at the condo and everything. Yeah. So I didn't know if you wanted to move in. Um, oh, God. Well, I don't know, KSIP. 
You know, I thought you had burst into tears. Oh, thank you. What would I do without a daughter like you? Maybe we'll just try this for a couple of days. And days? So I'm on probation? You just want to see uh, how things will go. Just to see. Mother, I'm being generous and I letting you into my being, empire. I know, you're being very kind. You know I don't kind. like house guests. You're very all. kind. I have some ground rules. Oh, OK. And what are they? I don't want you to have guests. <clears throat> and of course, you can't just use the phone whenever you want. Keep your music down to a oh shout. Oh, my god. A little light well, cooking. I'm not saying you have to clean the house. But a little I'll keep light, it tidy, like, a little lighthouse keep work. A lighthouse work. Wouldn't uh -huh. kill you. I want my mom to come live with me because I want her to be surrounded by love and have a nurturing environment and do my laundry. Mostly the laundry part. You will have certain freedoms. Oh, uh huh. Freedom to clean. I'm actually really teasing her really hard because I want to cheer her up. So I'm trying to use the old Griffin sense of humor to kind of ride her and tease her a little bit. All right, well, let's go take a look at your potential new dates. My, the, the uh, home. Yeah. <laughs> How can you resist? Look at the, it's a I lifestyle, know, it's mother. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's a lifestyle. It's gorgeous. You want to go say hi to the girls? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. I was envisioning more of a hotel stay, uh, oh, like a spa. Ah, you serve me. Ah, me. All <laughs> right, so she's gonna go look at her potential new guest suite. So is that I have Thomas? To look at it today. Yeah, oh, Tom's getting the axe. Poor Tom, oh. I feel very. Should we put his stuff on the lawn? What kind of shape is it in? I haven't looked. I'm. Well, it better be in good shape. That's all I. Whoa! Know. Call the concierge, it's lady. <laughs> it's really hard to stun Tom. Tom's gonna go from his beautiful guest suite to a small room. Almost a closet. Tom, hey, get out. I, what's going yeah, on? Tom, this I, is you really feel clean. terrible, Tom. This isn't right, but. What's going on? Um, Mom might be moving in and taking your room. Oh, okay. Well, oh, welcome see to how it. how nice he is. Yeah. Kathy's given me lots of chores to do. Oh, really? All light, though. But I don't know. It's, it looks like a lot of work to well, me. Welcome to Wayne. Everything is light, yeah. I never thought a year ago that I was going to have two roommates. A guy whose last name I still don't know, and my mother. We're I promise you. I won't bother anybody. I will. I'll be no bother to anybody. That's because you're be locked in. Yeah. <laughs> you're damn right. You won't be bothered. <laughs>while my mom decides if she wants to be my next roomie, I'm off to my hometown of Chicago to play the Schubert Theater. And I'm going to see my siblings, who I haven't seen since my dad's memorial. And I'm going to see my niece and nephew, too. I'm also going to see my high school lover, Tom Murphy, who has a lover of his own, who's a dude. I've been connecting more with my old friends since my dad died because they all knew him so well. Tom Murphy is a choreographer for Disney World, like all straight guys. Fantastic, Tom. Look at you. You haven't aged a minute. Come on in. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. Come into the Kathy Griffin suite. Hey, how did you, you guys doing? ever meet? No, I sure didn't. Oh, I'm Tom, Tom, tour manager. Oh, hey, Tom, how Tom are you doing? Tom Murphy, so, ex-boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. I'll Ex lover, if yeah. I might say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Tom was gay in high school. There's no way that guy was gay. He he looked just like Ryan Seacrest. Well, I brought some oh, geeky things. You. I brought some geeky things. Oh, the yearbook, my... Tom. That has my old nose. Uh, That's yeah. two noses ago, that yearbook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for So how are you doing? Sake. You look great. Good. You look fantastic. Okay, look at your place. Isn't it great? Here, have a seat. Tell me about tomorrow night. Do you have tickets? Are you all set? Yeah, I guess there's tickets that are going to be waiting for at the Will Call office. I can't wait. Okay. We're gonna I can't remember where the Schubert is. I can't either. You know, the only time I ever went there was to see Ben Vereen and Pippin. What know, was gayer, gorgeous. kissing me or seeing Ben Vereen, Vereen and Pippin? Because <laughs> that is a toss-up. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's a pretty close toss-up. <laughs> Kathy and I were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes, we were. And uh, I did I did make out with her once. I didn't technically turn him gay, but he didn't really have a fair shot at being straight once we made out. I think it's in my saliva. Oh, my God. Now, what's the exact moment that I turned you gay? Because um, I think you were on the bubble, and then one kiss with me. I think that's what did it. <laughs> at that moment, um, I, I really do. I think at that moment, I knew that I wanted to dance. Oh, great. <laughs> he was adorable. He was a great guy. He was a catch. I just love him. He's still one of my best friends to this day. Do we have a little bit of a shot? Tom, 
Come on, my figure looks good. Okay, I right. work out. Maybe, Give it a shot. How about if I show you some pictures that might spark some romance? All right, just, I just romance. want you to have an open mind. Okay. An open mind. Okay. <laughs> oh. Now you're not smiling. Because I, I, bitter? I hated school. I didn't like. I was, you know, I only liked hanging out with you guys. <laughs> look at you. What is that crazy? Well, look, geek here. What do you mean? There. Tom, you are cute. You are such Total a cute geek. kid. This is a funny one. I remember us at the castle. I don't even remember what I was doing. No, I'm in a bonnet singing. No, we never or knew. We never even knew. You know, we were. What was this play about? We don't know. We were at the cast party. Remember, we were all. Does anybody even understand what this show's about? We had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> so I'm so excited about tomorrow night. I'm excited night. too. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Good. All right. So right now I'm going to. Do you know about this? This is so sick. What? My nephew JP, who's 12. Okay. I'm going to his middle school to do like a Q&A and like a speech about what it's like to get into show business for a bunch of 12 year olds. Oh my God. I know, so I'm not exactly sure how to speak to 12 year olds. Right. <laughs> what do you know about 12 year olds? Uh, what are they like? I have no idea. Well, today they're a lot smarter than we were. You know, If that was me, I would have been like, when will I get my period? <laughs> and that would be the question. All right, well, I so All look right. forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night. I can't wait. We're Please laugh at everything I say. Okay. I can't wait. Okay, good deal. That'll be fun. All right. All right, take those yearbooks and burn them. <laughs> I'm at the Roosevelt Middle School, where my nephew Johnny attends, and I'm going to do kind of a Q&A, career day, who wants to get into television kind of a speech for 12-year-olds. It's crazy. It's crazy hair day. Okay. So you'll see kids with crazy hair, hats. Okay. Hi. That's good. Hi. I'm nervous about the 12-year-olds because I'm afraid they'll throw stuff. They might throw pee or poop at me. I'm going to wear my stab vest. Larry, what's the plan if they start to heckle or get rowdy? They won't. They'll follow your lead totally. All right. What can I say? Can I say, uh, damn? You, you can say that word. Maybe. Even I know you're not supposed to just say fuck all the time around 12-year-olds. So I want to get it out now. Fuck. Okay, Will you, you go out and look at the audience and give me okay. a demo breakdown? Cool. I'll go check it how out. How many gay guys? How many couples? It's about 200-seat theater. You get about... 30 people out there. Already this is a disaster. There's 30 kids came. So you guys know I'm not supposed to swear or use bad language, which is very difficult for me. It's in show business, you swear a lot. Um, also in show business, girls, it'll help you if you get boob jobs, and boys, if you're gay, that'd be great. Today, I'm here at my nephew JP's school in Chicago. I'm going to do a Q&A about show business for 12-year-olds. Hello! This turnout is pitiful, let's be honest. All right, hi, you guys, how you doing? Good. I'm here to just, it's sort of like a career day thing. Johnny, how you doing? Good. Are you in trouble today yet? I thought it would be fun to embarrass JP to the point where he didn't even have to go to school anymore, and he could just go get tutored in a hut somewhere in some hippie forest. I'm just glad she's not in my, uh, one of my uh, teacher conferences. That would be a nightmare. Uh, so you guys know I'm not supposed to swear or use bad language, which is very difficult for me. It's in show business, you swear a lot. Um, also in show business, girls, it'll help you if you get boob jobs, and boys, if you're gay, that'd be great. I'm bombing in front of children, and it hurts. I blame their parents. It's bad parenting. My grandma wants to sue you. What did I do now? <laughs> she doesn't like your comedy. She's she gonna sue me for it? How about if she just doesn't come to my shows? When uh, did you first air on your first TV episode? My first show was Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And it was, Jimmy, focus. All right. He's, I'm answering his question. He's bored talking to this one. How many Emmys have you won? Okay, you know what? None, and that hurts. You had to rub salt in my wound. I was beaten by those bastards at the Extreme Home Makeover. <laughs> Ty Pennington can suck it. All right. <laughs> of course the kids only like me when I swear. Because I'm fun when I swear. Dumbass. <laughs> Cocor. <laughs> like, right now, I'm slightly interesting, but watch this. <laughs> Way more fun. I should not have said that in front of you. <laughs> I am trying to shock the kids because I've got to get my audience no matter how I can. And if that gets me expelled, then too bad, because I don't even go here. Am I in trouble again? Sorry. Sorry. I swear I would not look at one adult, because I knew I'd be in trouble. So I, I hung with my peers, the 12-year-olds. Go enjoy your spring break. Thanks for coming, kids. Woo! You earned it. Don't act like you don't know me. Don't act like I'm not your aunt. You don't know me. I I've never seen Certainly. you in my life. Ah, I don't care how much I'm embarrassed you. Get out of here.
out of here. She's a great aunt. Your aunt is so cool. Yeah, I know. You got your scarf? She's awesome. She's, we love she's you, the best. Johnny. Especially when the girls are all up on me like that. It's, uh, it's great. Thank you. All right, all right. thanks okay. so much. Okay. Bye bye. All right, bye, John. Thank you. All right, I'll take care. Nice to meet you. Okay, now JP is taken care of, so I'm off to my brother John's house to corrupt my niece Claire. We have a double date tonight. Well, look who's here. Hey, how are you? Are you letting in any peddlers or solicitors? Hey! Thanks for hosting my night of romance. I'm having my niece Claire pimp me out. Hey! How are you? Good to see you. Since there are no celebrities in Chicago for me to date, besides maybe Oprah, and she's already got a boyfriend, Gail, I decided to just try a normal guy. So Claire fixed me up with the only person over 15 she knows, her tennis coach. All right, so tell me about my date. He's really cool. He's been my tennis instructor for a few years. And um, what's his name? He, um, Marty. You know, I'm sure he's a good Chicagoan, Oak Park stock. Probably, you know, not like a highfalutin Hollywood type, Midwesterner like myself. Now, should we have a uh, signal? Like, if I want to make out Okay. My signal is Understand. I drive the car through the uh, plate glass window that says it's time to stop making out. I know. Why is John driving us on our date? Dad, you're driving us? It's called c**t block, John. All right, girls, All right. Go beautify yourselves. We will. Okay. Wait, we're kind of done. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys. Brian, how are you? He's cute. Are you smart? You can. <laughs> I'm making my moves on your date. Um, well, screw it. Claire and I have some pretty hot dates. And we can also switch. You know, we don't have to stick with the guy we came with. Oh, girls, we have two eligible uh, bachelors down here. Oh, Hello. Right. Well, you look a little young for me, but I'm Oh, <laughs> hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Marty. Oh, oh, right. Right. I have those, so or are you going to hold them all night? Let's go. Okay. Brian, keep your hands in your pockets. Dad. That's all I can tell you. Dad, I'll pockets. drive the car. I don't Marty, need you. Marty, you're on your own. <laughs> Please put your hands in my pockets. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's let's go. move this thing along, Marty. So my brother's driving on our date to try to <laughs> block Claire. You can't <laughs> block me. There's no <laughs> that I don't have a block that you can get right through. I'm experienced. I'll <laughs> break through that thing like the Karate Kid. Well, wax on, wax off. Have you, you date a lot now since uh No, you're just you. I only have ice cream, Marty. <laughs> hey, you know what to say. I'm a virgin, you, you should know, know that. <laughs> Take your pants off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kathy lives for awkward moments. Oh, I love them. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how you doing? How's it going so far? Good. On the menu, how's, how's Brian as a kisser? I'm not gonna answer that. My goal is to embarrass Claire as much as possible. I never get enough of it. Brian, what are you gonna do with your life? It's got a band. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, you do not have a band. I do. I'm sorry, right? Brian, get out. It's a new date. Get the B date. Uh, Go to wrong, plan B. What's wrong with music? No, no musicians. Yeah. You're not in a Christian band, I hope. I'm not in a Christian band. Oh, Stay away from He's them. The They're the worst drug addicts of all. <laughs> all right, I feel a little old on my double date. All right, I, I'm trying to relate to them, but I do feel like I'm out with my kids. What's your story, Marty? Talk, what's your dating history? Have you left a trail of broken hearts? How many girls have you slept with? Ballpark. How many digits? Okay, uh, you're going to get me in trouble here. Where are we at? Where are we at? I'll say two okay. hands, at least two hands. At least two hands. <laughs> at least okay. two hands worth. Well, you what, what's your type, Marty? Uh, my type, pretty. Okay. So you're shallow. Female. You're straight. <laughs> you're a typical shallow straight guy. Shallow straight, yeah. Just basic shallow straight guy. Marty's a very sweet guy. He's not going to get my picture in a magazine. He's just a nice guy with a nice personality. And who's got time for that? What, what's he going to get me in? The Chicago Sun-Times? BFD. Where's our pickup? Oh, so embarrassing. Oh, so fair. You have a show to do tomorrow night, and you've got homework still. Where is Russell? Oh, I did, I did my homework. a little bit too late. You know what? You're uh, not the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's the thing. Dating a normal guy isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I got a free meal. I didn't get free press. Anyway, I got to go home and rest. I got a big show tomorrow night. Tonight I have a show at the LaSalle Bank Theater, which used to be called the Schubert when I lived there, which is an iconic Chicago theater, and I'm very honored and thrilled to play here. I'm definitely thinking about my dad more here in Chicago because, you know, it's where we lived and it's his hometown, and I know he would have just loved to be front and center at the show. I'm starting tonight with, um, Bush is more of a bitch today than usual. I want to think about that. <laughs> I love playing Chicago. Chicago audiences are great because they're very smart, they're very quick. They can see through the BS right away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Come on, Chicago! Wow. My hometown! It's true. 
I'm, first of all, you know, I, I come home about four times a year. I love it. And I'm from Oak Park, the throbbing metropolis of Oak Park. I went to St. Bernardine's with the nuns. <laughs> F*** them. All right, so... Oh, those crazy dykes, right? All right, so can we unravel the mystery that is Sanjaya? I... Sanjaya! Sanjaya! Does, shouldn't it be an animated Disney feature on a carpet, right? Sanjaya, the story of a little gay boy thinner than Michael Jackson, right? The idea that he sang a kink song is so f***ing hysterical to me. With that crazy hair and those eyebrows. Girl, you really got me now. You got me so I don't know what I'm saying, but smells like fish. I mean, thanks, you guys have been so nice. I appreciate it. Good night. It was cool playing the Schubert Theater after my dad passed away because my parents went there many times and I felt like he was looking down on me saying, all right, you made it to the Schubert, which is now called the LaSalle Bank Theater. I'm pretty sure Dad's not in heaven saying, yay, you're playing the LaSalle Bank Theater. He probably still thinks it's also a vaudeville house. Hi. We know you have your games. We're your trannies. Oh, I need it. <laughs> My trip to Chicago was great, but I learned a lesson. Dating a normal guy isn't going to help me. I need my picture in magazines. So now I'm going to date someone, an actor, who has been in more films than any other actor on the planet. Perhaps you've heard of him. Ron Jeremy. So what do you wear on a date with Ron Jeremy? Who's seen it all, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know how I like this little outfit? It's yeah. not sexy. You know what, this is a good cleavage top. Plus it's a little too fancy. What about, what about this? I can't pick out my clothes myself. <laughs> Dating's hard, huh? It's, it's exhausting. <laughs> I, I call and cancel. <laughs> All right, so what should I do? What's, uh, I've uh, never uh, done more than one guy at a time. Is it an exciting thought? Now this morning, you're gonna be the expert for two products. How about that, people? Oh, That's right. Working. I swear, if someone gets me a pretzel, I will eat off that floor. In fact, I'm gonna sit on it because that's how Your clean it is. I'm getting ready for my big date with film actor Ron Jeremy. I need some quick publicity before I go become a family spokesperson on HSN. Hi, Ron. Hi, Kathy. Are you ready for a big date? I can't wait. I might go yeah. down on these heels, Ron. Get ready to spot uh -oh, really? me. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, Ron, it's going to be you running for me at the end of the night. You've, you've never wait, seen wait, trouble what? like this. There was a paparazzi photographer who took our picture. Mission accomplished. Give me a kiss. All right, come on, take my hand, Ron. Come on, it's a date. I don't think I will have another date like this one without getting an infection. But so I'll... what are your tips for me? What's your advice? You were together for six years. Yeah. After three or four years, did it become more autopilot? It did. That's why I think sometimes bringing in another person or bringing in another couple. There's something maybe, not even all the way, but something with another, another, someone else. Pretty much Ron's advice is, if you're going to get into a relationship, be prepared to get it on with another chick and multiple dudes. Nine I've never done more than one guy at a time. Is it an exciting thought? I'm, 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 makes me nervous. Like, I don't know, like I- Let me call the waiter. <laughs> but since I'm not really into chicks, I don't really do anything with her. And I, I guess I watch them or he like cuddles with me, but then grabs her boob. I'm, the logistics are confusing to me. So I'm gonna, I I'm think I'm gonna stick to one-on-one -on -one boy girl action. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Thank you very much. So have you done any strolls on Hollywood Boulevard before? Um, it's, I'm a virgin. How are you doing? That's a legendary brunch. How are you doing? How's it going? What's going on, man? How are you? Still doing your thing? Yes. Oh. I am with one of the most recognized men in the world. I you going to see Ron Jeremy, right? What? Yeah. How do all the homeless people know your movies? I am fascinated that so many of his fans don't seem to have teeth. Please tell me you want my picture and not Ron's. How many, would it be too much trouble to get your autograph? Sure. My husband loves you. He just came back from Iraq. 
Don't I laugh. went to Iraq and performed. I can't it's imagine. Because he does porn. <laughs> now, I'm going to sign it. I don't care if your husband it's, wants it or not. No, it's the cat. I think it's a great thing that I'm seen out with Ron Jeremy. Wait a minute. The straight guys are going to love that I went on a date with Ron Jeremy. You know, that could be a new demographic for me. Porn fans. I think I've upgraded my marketing value on the stock market. I probably lowered hers. <laughs> Now this is called the, the, the E-list. They're going, what is Kathy Griffith doing with him? No, they're Isn't thinking that? you married up, Ron. <laughs>
camera, the big wows with it are that it has a hard drive as opposed to tapes. You can do anything from seven hours to 14 hours. The other big wow with it is a two hour battery. With so how it, do you do seven hours with a two hour battery? You know, whenever people teach you this stuff, they're coming from this place of like, well, it's so obvious, it works like this. So I felt it was a little rushed. Stand by. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to HSN. I'm your host, Colleen Lopez. Today, you're going to be introduced to our new special guest. Her name is Kathy Griffin. She is a hilarious comedian. Welcome to HSN. So I know all about camcorders. I know you I have are a reality hurt. show. I have cameras in my house at all times. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, first of all, it's got a lot of memory, which is great. And I think the remote is a really great feature, too. You don't even have to get up. Yeah. More excuses to not get up to me are key. I did manage to kind of BS my way through that segment. Then they pulled out the steam cleaner. And I thought, holy fuck balls. Right now. Every so often, even someone with my level of fame does have to clean. They didn't give me any prep on how to use the steamer. I swear, I was thinking, I hope when I press a button, steam comes out. First of all, this floor is filthy. So it, whoever, filthy. if they were in my empire, they'd be fired. Because this <laughs> okay. is not allowed. And I would say, where the heck is the steam cleaner? Okay. And then I would turn it on. Right. Oh, I think it was on. Right. Actually. And I would use the handle. <laughs> I think you just push Press it. button. <laughs> Wait. How about that, people? Oh, That's right. It. That's how it's done. <laughs> Huh? Look at very nice. Dirt done. be gone. What's happening here? Um, it, well, it wouldn't suck up any dirt. Then oh, it's maybe loosening squeegee. the dirt. It loosens the dirt, mm -hmm. and then I squeegee it to the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. Loose dirt is better than firm dirt. <laughs> that is what I know. But then we have to get somebody else to come in and actually wipe it up. Oh, 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 ah. God, a towel. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Doesn't that towel wrap around this? I Are you busting this thing wide that open? towel. Will right. Right to you? I'm, yes. <laughs> if you just have a simple towel at home. Product then, expert. <laughs> yes. And then you steam it. Oh, and, oh look at people. It. It's working. That is great. Works. Okay. Okay. Oh, there goes the little brushes, which are included in the low, low price of $99. Exactly. <laughs> you know, go ahead and laugh, Colleen. And laugh at my shame, but that is a clean floor. All right, and if, and if a clean floor is a crime, then take me to jail. You could eat off that floor. Exactly, I will. I swear, if someone gets me a pretzel, I will eat off that floor, and I'm not even kidding. In fact, I'm going to sit on it. Because that's how Your clean pants it is. Are white. I don't care. That's how clean it is. <laughs> My behind has never been cleaner. Where? Okay. Scary What's me. it gonna take for you people? Buy this thing. You know what? Not a spot See? on. See? Look at my clean bottom. Alright, fine. My audition didn't go so well. I didn't know how to use the steamer yet. The rag kept falling out. I don't want that to happen tomorrow live on the air. Then the Kathy Griffin Empire will crumble right before Kathy Griffin's very own eyes. So I'm on one from, from two to three. You have the steam cleaner, which is probably about 20 minutes long. That the steam cleaner? We have your assistant's grandmother. Hi, Millie. Hi. Millie, Hi. Millie, what do you think of the computer? Oh, I love it. You should get two of them for your assistant. <laughs> Today's my big actual tryout day for HSN. So I'm going to be on air three times, and it's live. First, I'm gonna be on the air with Jennifer Flavin Stallone selling skincare products. They're gonna do a before picture. I had to be the before model, because let's face it, I'm not an after model, and I just had to. You know, I gotta play ball to try to live my dream and become an HSN spokesperson. You're clear, thanks. Thank you. So are you excited? Yes, of course. Ready for the modeling debut and home shopping? Yeah. I'm scared shitless. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. First of all, you have to be on every minute. Some of these gals are on for two hour chunks, three times a day. That's a lot of live on air time. Mm -hmm. When you see that flashing, that'll be the camera that they're gonna take. Okay. And we'll cue you too. These bitches work. And I wanna be one of them. Oh. Do we have a pretty model 
today or We what? have a gorgeous model today. Wait, that's Kath Kathy Griffin, and many of you know her from her Emmy-nominated show. It's super funny. I mean, Thank to you. be a comedian, it's hard. And to be this beautiful. It's I know. It, it, it's a lot of work. But funny I mean, and modeling. But, but the makeup helps. Let's face yes, it. I'm wearing the pro mineral, mineral right now. I really love it. And look at her before, look at her after. And Come on, you know I'm a fan great. if I come and do the before picture. Well, that's I'm bitter great. about I'm bitter about it. I'll tell you You know what? You should be. This <laughs> I know, I am. Jennifer Flavin Stallone's got to get a dig in, right? Typical model. And I made some joke about being the before model and that I was bitter about it. And she's like, you should be. <laughs> and then hugged me in that mean cheerleader in high school way. And the other co-host lady had to make up for it the whole time and say like 50 times that I didn't look hideous. Because, you know, on the inside, I was like, <laughs> but on the outside, I'm like, oh, that's OK. That Kathy, I still it. think your before is unfair. Oh, OK. Wait, wait. That's all I'm Thanks, saying. Ladies. Making up for the pretty girl. I still have two more live segments to do today, but first I have to go meet with the big mucky mucks, the head honchos. I gotta impress these guys. I wanna get my own product line. Is this where they print the money? <laughs> I wish. You're here. Hello. So what do you think? So far, the little bit that I just saw. Did you like? Yeah, I did. Good, where shall I sit? You I'm sit. sure they're gonna look at the results of how my time slots did. So if they didn't do well, I get blamed. If they did do well, Jennifer Flavin will get all the credit. I'm hey, Kathy, friend. how are you? Welcome Good. to HSN. How are you? Thank you nice so much. Nice to see you. What role did you see yourself falling into straight away? Is it the, the host role, or is it the expert role, or is it, in fact, a combination of A both? combination, for sure. Because okay. I like doing the hard sell, and I like doing giving the item number and the prices. We're not, I, we're not hard sell. I don't want us to be hard sell. I thought that they were about the hard sell, and they're not. So I made the hard sell about the hard sell, and he said, we're not about the hard sell. And then I tried to, like, backtrack and go, no, no, when I, when I said hard sell, I meant not at all hard sell. I meant what you said. So now what you just got to be able to do is truly understand the product so mm -hmm. that without selling, but just in a conversational way, be able to impart information. That steam, steam cleaner you need to work on a little bit, don't you? I asked them for a whole steam cleaning training session. You needed it. They obviously hate me and are never going to ask me back. So I have to prove myself in these next two segments. All right, well, so I'm, I'm looking forward so this to the, afternoon, the 2 o'clock and the 9 o'clock. I will yeah. be there with you. Good. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, thanks, guys. Okay. You bet. It's very stressful but I will sell whatever they put in front of me. What do I care what it is? I could sell poo to a toilet, all right? I don't care. We have a very special guest. Let's right. clean. Let's okay. over with me, Kathy. I'm okay. gonna help let you help me out with the next demonstration. Please ready? Do. All right, thank God they had the product expert do the steamer with me. Nobody told me that I didn't even really have to be the product expert. She did all the heavy lifting. I was just the beautiful face. Okay, apparently somebody was in heels and scuffing themselves, <laughs> which is not appropriate. Just go for it. Pull the trigger? Pull the okay. Trigger. Woo! Oh my goodness. It's that, flying right? off the surface. <laughs> Look, I could, I could have sold anything. I could have sold that product where you put it up your piece and you don't have to douche anymore. I can sell it. Tears. I'm not tired yet. <laughs> uh, what else can I clean? I finished my first segment and I have a little break before my last show. Ten minutes before we go live on the air, Gateway Joe from Gateway says I'm going to be selling a laptop PC. It's just like a regular computer, mm -hmm. but then you can flip it around. I use a Mac, and when I say I, I mean Jessica. I think our hook is that I'm the dumb one and you're the cute one. I don't mind it. Okay. Of course you don't. You're not trying to get your own show selling handbags and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I really think they just wanted me to be prepared to be unprepared. No, wait. They wanted me to be prepared to be prepared. They wanted me to be prepared for anything. All right, so when is your grandma going to call? Whenever you want her to. She's on call all day long. Like, who wants to be a millionaire? She's my um, lifeline. Lifeline. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get our expert out here right away, Gateway Joe Harrison, who is a true authority when it comes to computers. Excuse Whatever me, excuse me. Yeah, I have yeah, a note yeah. for you. Come, come. Oh, look it. Oh, isn't she cute? Look it. Dear Colleen, I love Gateway Joe. He is a dreamboat. Oh, Kathy, <laughs> you think he's a dreamboat? Gateway Joe was voted the sexiest man in TV shopping. Gateway well, Joe. While well, he puts up a slideshow, would you like to say we have your assistant's grandmother yes. on the phone? Hi, Millie. Hi. <laughs> Millie, Hi. Millie, what do you think of the computer? Oh, I love it. You should get two of them for your assistant. <laughs> okay. Why did I know it was going to go this way? <laughs> for your That's assistant and your really assistant's mother. Help them. Okay, enough, Millie. I, I, get, I get it. Okay, I get it. I have to go buy 20 of them now. Well, I was calling in because I, I really, I saw Kathy and I thought, oh my God, I really love Kathy. Oh, thank you. Person. She is a doll. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be 
I have to send her a crisp new twenty dollar bill for saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Millie. for calling in, Millie. Bye. 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 Well, apparently, I have five seconds to buy one, or else <laughs> Millie's going to uh, withdraw Tiffany Very from my company. Cute. Producer Pat was just telling me in my ear that we're shortly going to be calling these computers sold out. So glad you're getting it. They're flying off the shelves. My product Thank sold you. out, exactly. and it was a high price product. Call Millie and say good one with the real person thing. <laughs> She's She's good following the script. Yeah, yeah good following the script. Yeah, and we're going to send her the rewrites tomorrow. <laughs> because I want her to call in other people's shows and go, I'm not going to buy anything unless that wonderful and real Kathy Griffin is on the air. <laughs> <laughs> well? You were great. What'd you think? Don't give it away. Oh, come on. Come that on, they're flying off the awesome. shelves, right? Oh, Congratulations. Boy. Thank you. Did you just see the sellout? Yes. It was awesome. You sit down. Talk to me. You worked Better. really hard and yeah. it shows. Good. So thank you. Yeah, thank I you take for being this stuff so committed. Seriously. Yeah. So we're celebrating our 30th birthday in July. Oh, oh yes. And we're really excited. We have a lot of surprises planned. Okay. And and one of them I think should be that you should come back and do a show. Yeah. And that's There's awesome. definitely a future for me at HSN. Susan Summers better look out cuz I'm coming. And I know that she sells her homemade sugar substitute and thigh masters and what have you. But I'm going to sell something women really need. Hope. Hope in a jar. So you're, should I put these in, in, in my room? room? In your it's your room. room. Oh. Well, it's, yeah. So it's, you're going to do Tom's shirt and not mine? Yes. Well, my shirt has more wrinkles. No, your shirt looks fine. <laughs>so my mom finally agreed to come live with me on a probationary basis. And I'm the one on probation. Chaos and the audition process begins. Oh. <laughs> Tom? 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 A little heavy yeah. for me. I don't see why my mother has to carry her own bags. Hey, look who's here. Hi, Tom. <laughs> so should I put these in... Yeah, where in, are we going? In your room. In, in my her room. room. In it, your it's your room. room. Oh. Well, it's... Yeah. My mom has serious reservations about moving in here. Number one, she doesn't like the driveway. She has a lot of issues about the driveway, and she doesn't even drive. Number two, she knows I'm gonna work it to the bone. Number three, uh, she has odd sleeping habits, not unlike Chance, where she's up for three hours, down for two hours, up for three hours, down for four hours. Basically, she'd like me to move out. And then she'd like to level the house, make it one level, and just move in some of her friends. So that's an issue. The fact that she uh, likes it here, except that I'm here. Well, here we are. Oh, boy. Oh, you couldn't even make the bed? Well, I didn't know we were having guests. Oh. Guests? Oh. She lives here now, Tom. We have to see how things okay. go first. <laughs> you may be back here sooner than you think. Well, uh, Mom, I'm right here. I can hear what I you're know. saying. <laughs> Do you want to show Tom his new room? This room is nice, too. It's I've not quite that. as I've nice. I've never really looked in here. Ma, it's do a better sales job. Where's Tom going to keep his porn? Oh, well, that I don't know. That's Tom's... <laughs> That's Tom's business. But here, you know, it's a little crowded, kind of. Now, will you at least be making Tom's bed? Well, I don't know. Maybe in... Maybe one, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday? You can well, make his bed? maybe Mondays. Well, come on. Well, I know I'm going to be happy in Oh, that for years and years and I'm years. I'm going to be very happy it's in gonna that It's going to be great. You're going to be long, sorting laundry. Long time. Going Kelly. over recipes. Uh-huh. Oh, it's yeah. going to be great. I might put her on the payroll, depending how she does. I will be doing weekly evaluations. So you're going to do Tom's shirt and not mine? Yes, I'm going to do... Well, my shirt has more wrinkles. No, your shirt looks fine. <laughs> my mom's in good spirits when she's around other people. So hopefully we'll keep her busy and distracted and drunk. <laughs> Next on My Life on the D-List. What are you doing down here? I'm hosting the Gay Porn Awards. I know that maybe we're not technically on the same team, but can I just have a little kiss on the cheek? I'll f*** you so fast you won't know what hit you, honey. Where? In the prison, will I be performing? In the dining room, in the chow hall. Can we talk about Britney's position for one second? I'll tell you right now, I looked at it. I wanted to see if it was discolored like a chow tongue. <laughs> I'm sorry, I actually shot prisoners. Thank you. Previously on My Life on the D-List, I flew to Florida for the next step in building my empire. I'm having my big tryout to try to live my dream and become an HSN spokesperson. I swear, if someone gets me a pretzel, I will eat off that floor. In fact, I'm gonna sit on it, because that's how clean it is. I'm still dating other celebrities. 
for the publicity. Uh, Ron, it's gonna be you running for me at the end of the night. You've, you've never seen trouble like this. My mom finally agreed to come live with me on a trial basis. So you're gonna do Tom's shirt and not mine? Well, my shirt has more wrinkles. No, your shirt looks fine. <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. I work twice as hard to get half as far as you. Cause I ain't no ass to kiss when you're living life on the D-list. So the Mel Gibson arrest is fascinating to me, but what I don't understand about that arrest is this. How did it get from, may I see your license and registration, to the Jews. Like, how did that even come up in conversation? And I know this is me just being a dumb chick, but if I've ever been pulled over, even for a broken tail light, I swear to God, I just burst into tears and just start saying to the officer that I don't want to go be ass raped in prison. I just panic. I didn't want to be ass raped in prison, officer. <laughs> In a few weeks, I'm gonna be performing at Perryville State Prison in Arizona. I'm gonna be like Johnny Cash with tits. Today, I have a call with the prison warden. Okay, so the questions are, have they ever had performers? Where in the prison? Um, who gets to come? I do like to challenge myself as a stand-up. Went to Iraq, went to Afghanistan. Why not prison? Denny Harkins, please. It's Kathy Griffin. Hi, this is Benny Harkin. Okay, so I have some questions for you. Can I dive right in? Yes. Which day am I performing for the women and which for the men? Okay, the first night is for the women. Monday night. Right, and Tuesday night for the men. All right, now, um, where in the prison will I be performing? Um, you will be performing... <laughs> Did he just hang up on me? Hello? That was not my fault, Denny. Okay, I don't know what happened to that, but I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I'm so scared. <laughs> Denny would not cut it in this office. That's right. For one second. Denny's fired. God. I wonder what happens if the governor calls, right? Is they're gonna throw the switch? <laughs> <laughs> We've overturned the order for the death... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, Kathy, this is Denny Harkins again. Why are you trying to mess with my head, Denny? <laughs> um, I don't have an answer for that. Okay, is there anything special they have to do to qualify to come to the show? There's gonna be a reward for those inmates who are doing the best. All right, do I have the authority to have anyone executed? <laughs> um, no. Do I have the authority to, to have a stay of execution? No, sorry. All right, you guys are playing hardball. Um, all right, I look forward to meeting you guys, and I look forward to putting on a good show. Is it bad that I want to get someone executed? <laughs> yeah. I just, all right, yeah, well, what if bad. it's a bad person? <laughs> hey, that's a philosophical question. Though. That's for God to decide. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> My assistant's got me a date tonight with a celebrity poker player named Mike Matisau. It's good for me to be seen with Mike because he's straight. All of his fans are straight. And he's kind of helped me break into that heterosexual demographic. Hey, Mom. Oh, hi. Hey, hey, hey. Let's what? See. What do you think? Look. Oh, wow. Let's say, come here. This won't button over. Oh, my God. It's not supposed to button over. Wow, man. This won't button. Oh. No, nothing buttons. Oh, I hope he's uh, a nice guy. Hello, doggy. Hi. Hi, I'm Cat. I'm Maggie, Kathy's mom. Maggie, yeah, I'm hi. Mike. Come on, uh, nice Michael. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You want to sit here, Michael? Sure. Kathy comes down. I've heard so many wonderful things, and I'm really excited. And oh, you, you've never met Kathy before. Oh no, it's a blind date. You do you know her work though? You've seen uh, her perform. Uh, actually speaking, Michael. Uh, no, but oh, that, Michael, but, did, shame on you. But my you mom know. was appalled that he didn't recognize my mid-level of fame. I can tell she's not really behind this one. Hey, it's so nice to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. Are you really? Yeah, Good. absolutely. I'm a big fan of you. I just heard you say you know nothing about me. Well, that's why I'm a big fan. How could you hurt my mother like that? Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't want to lie to your mother, you know? Mom, I'm going to take care of her. Okay. If she gets on my nerves, 
Oh. 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 Right where it goes. Oh, gosh, guys. Yeah. Trouble. Yeah, oh, I don't take nothing God. from him. Oh. I ain't gonna I'm, take nothing. No, I am gonna worry. Okay, Mike is in perfect for me. He's clearly physically violent and has no idea who I am. The bottom line is, I may get a little publicity out of it. Here's your wine and sake list. Thank you. Wine and sake. Yes. Yeah, fire Enjoy it up. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Now, would you say that you have what is thought to be a typical sort of poker intellect, which is really, really smart at one thing, and then an absent-minded professor at other things? Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm a complete moron. <laughs> nice to meet you. No, no, I'm very stupid. But, but you're like a math genius, right? Which, I don't know what that means. Mike, focus. What is the matter with you? I, these things kind of like interest me. I just wanted to go like this real quick. Okay, but you're talking to someone. <laughs> <laughs> so... He emotionally is about four and um, likes to look around and get distracted by shiny objects. And apparently my boobs were two shiny objects. You enjoy the breasts? Yeah. Straight guys are tough for me. And he's definitely straight. There's no doubt in my mind. He's not on the down low. This guy's straight. He, he, he looks at my tits instead of my eyes. <clears throat> it just is killing me. You just, by the way, you just burped. I didn't know if you I noticed. Know, excuse me. I Thank apologize. you, Mike. I like Mike. He's a pig. Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> He's also very good at burping. Hi, how you doing? Hi. This is your special. Oh, oh. wow, this looks You're good. Albacore. I'll try it, but... Hey, hey, <laughs> eat the sushi and don't give me the bullshit. If you don't eat it, I'm going to have to beat your ass. He has mentioned uh, physically beating me three or four times. But, you know, he might be kidding. What are you doing? <clears throat> We went outside and there was a paparazzi photographer, which was an accident. I don't know how that happened. Hi. Damn, you are famous. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you're famous. This is kind of cool. <laughs> Can I touch your hand? <laughs> Mike was a little inappropriate when he saw my level of fame, which is three degrees higher than his. Wow. <laughs> All right, I have Did to get you lose your of cabbage patch? You were this close. I probably wouldn't go out with him again because I want to live. Oh. Yeah. But my date with Mike was a success because we did get photographed. I'm getting ready for a very important gig. I'm hosting the Gay Porn Awards. So my friend Eric, who's a very funny comedy writer, is coming over to help me prep. Yes. Eric? Yellow. Yeah, Come on in. I have a box of gay porn. Great. I mean, yay. Uh, whoa. Oh. Hold on. Just saw some guy's anus. <laughs> All right, let's guess what the story of justice is. Toby Connor clearly did something wrong. I'm gonna is guess... he looking for justice, or does justice find him? I'm going to guess justice finds him... In his butt? In the butt. Okay. <laughs> Why doesn't the policeman button his shirt? <laughs> That's not up to code. So, how big of an event is this? How many... It's big. It's at the Castro Theater, which I think is about 1,500 seats. Do you have a date? For the K-Point Awards? I'm just bringing Team Kathy. Okay. But I think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna leave alone, if you know what I'm saying. Are all the gay porn guys gay, or do they? I think if you're taking it up the butt like 50 times a week, <laughs> you've probably jumped over to the other side of the fence. <laughs> I just think this is a good opportunity for you. I do too. You're gonna shine. I'm with my people. Yeah. <laughs> and I can say I've hosted a major award show. Well, I think this is really exciting. <laughs> I have to some directions. Today, I'm off to San Francisco for the event of the season. I am hosting the Gay Porn Awards. Who says a little girl's dreams can't come true? Hey, Kathy. Hi, hey. handsome, handsome, and handsome. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, can I hug you? I love you. Thank I'm sorry. You know, I love nice her. <laughs> How are, what are you doing down here? I'm hosting the Gay Porn Awards Shut tonight. Shut the f up. At the castle. This is the one place in the world that I am, I'm Brangelina, here. I love your show. <laughs> These are my peeps. I'm actually really happy to be doing this job tonight. Knock him dead. All right, thanks. After feeling the gay, I went back to the hotel to get ready. It's 8.30 now. We're getting to be extremely late for uh, the Gay Porn Awards right now. Kathy needs to be walking down the red carpet right now, and we're still uh, 
in the hotel room. Should I change? Yeah. yeah. Go change. I just want to get there. Okay. Here we go. Do we need to call anybody and say we just left? Hey, Jeff. This is Tom with Kathy. Is red carpet all over with or what? Uh, we're going to be there probably in about 10 minutes, so. We f***ed up pretty big time. It was raining and the traffic was terrible. I was very stressed out. Well, they can't really start without you, right? I hope. I don't know. Yeah, it's Tom. Uh, we're about five minutes away. We're no, right at a... No, we are about five minutes away. I don't want the porn-loving gays to be pissed at me because I'm late for the red carpet. If I lose the gays, I'm screwed. I know that maybe we're not technically on the same team, but can I just have a little kiss on the cheek? I'll f*** you so fast you won't know what hit you, honey. Was late going to the red carpet for the gay porn awards which is very bad i'm sure ellen was right on time for the oscars can you unlock the doors unlock all the doors we're jumping out pretty much right now ready yeah the gays were thrilled to see me i should have known they wouldn't really care about punctuality you know, when you're doing drag and you're not sure which wig you're gonna put on, or you've just finished doing a threesome scene and you're wiping off, time isn't as essential at that moment. Hey guys, yeah. big laughs. Hi, gorgeous. You look fabulous. Ah, I just threw something, you know how it is. Good evening, gentlemen, ladies, and everything in between. This is the 2007 Gavian Awards Show. me on my nipple because I can't even believe I'm here. This Looking in the audience, I saw a very, very hot guy toasting me. I knew it had to be done. Would you mind taking your shirt off for one second? <laughs> Don't let me stop you. Yes! Yes! I know that maybe we're not technically on the same team, but can I just have a little kiss on the cheek? You won't know what hit you, honey. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Let's start the show. I couldn't do any better than that. All right, boys. Here to present the award for best oral scene, which I guess is someone reciting a monologue from Shakespeare. Our presenter is a man who has twice taken home the award for Gavi and Performer of the Year, Mr. Monster Dick, Michael Brandon. How many suckers in the house? Some looks are timeless. A harness never goes out of style. Just the right ring, there's no bad season for that. Assless chaps, Merry Christmas, or Happy Fourth of July. Would this be the oddest crowd you've, you've worked for? The this gay is, porn crowd? has to be a dream crowd. Because it's like, <laughs> not just the gays, but the let's go there gays. Yes, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Gays flying everywhere, I can't keep track. All right, the, the next two I'm introducing, we're just up here for best, I don't know, seven some, I can't keep track anymore. The categories were hilarious. The names, hysterical. Just one great porn name after another. Best all sex video, that would be that slap it, spit on it, stick it in your ass, kind of video that you'd love to see. Best leather video, 
Black and blue. Best sex comedy goes to Going Under. I didn't think it was funny. Did you think it was a funny I movie? I didn't think it was funny. I didn't but... either. These guys took it way more serious than the Oscars. As far as I am concerned, every one of you in the gay porn industry is doing God's work. I need to thank the country of Lebanon and Israel for being strong neighbors, and hopefully one day there'll be peace there. Who knew? Take the Gay Porn Awards to bring the Middle East together. <laughs> Finally, what they couldn't do at Camp David. All right, it's time for best non-sex performance. I... Wow, that's a niche market. I mean, how many people can say I do gay porn, but I don't do the sex? I just do the acting. So good for them. They're thespians. The winner is, I know, oh, this is really good. You're gonna love this. Savannah Sampson. <laughs> Finally, what I've been hoping to see all night, a female porn star. Thank you so much, Gavian, for this award, and Tony DeMarco for making me act. Thank you. Tony can't even talk. He's so excited they saw a girl porn star. He's like, yeah, no, she, 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 if I ever took Tom to the Straight Porn Awards, I would have to get one of those dog harnesses, not just a regular choke collar leash, but the kind that would then go around his chest as well. Hasn't Kathy Griffin done a wonderful job? Can Kathy come out here, please? What? Oh, thank you! It is my honor and privilege to award Kathy Griffin the first ever Naked Swordsman Award. Thank you. I want to read the inscription. It says, Welcome to the F list. And I assume tonight the F for fing. I love you guys. big hit, let's be honest. I brought the gay house down. She was so funny and so real. She just knew exactly the right buttons to push. I think it's wonderful that mainstream celebrity actually have guts, have balls to come to such show. Bye, honey. Bye, thanks. Back at the hotel, the real party started. Good vibes and naughty pleasures. They did have a gift bag. It was a little bit different than my Emmy gift bag. I thought it was candy. I thought it was a big piece of chocolate. <laughs> a big lollipop. It's a, a giant purple two-headed dildo. The sex toys were frightening, and there's no amount of lube that's gonna get me to put that stuff up my butt. I'm sorry, I guess I'm a prude. Here is a bath toy. That's pretty loud. Are you kidding? <laughs> We don't know what you're if you guys doing ever at hear all. this, just <laughs> leave the door closed. I can't relax if I'm yelling at my own vibrator, going, Psh, keep it down. There's people here. So I gave it away. By the way, when I say I gave it away, I mean that Tiffany and Jessica were fighting over the myriad of vibrators that I was given. I don't have one left. <laughs> oh my God. Tom. Oh. Allowed near any sex toys anymore. All right, he lost control. The lube was flying everywhere. He wanted to act like, oh, I don't know what to do with these. And you know, he's thinking of all these weird scenarios with him and, you know, Helen Mirren. Have fun tonight with your new toy. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Talking to me. <laughs> I'm back in LA and I'm meeting with Paul Rodriguez. I admire him as a comedian tremendously. Okay, I need your advice. Okay, can we sit yeah, down for a sec? Love, yeah, here. What can I do you for? Okay, um, so I'm going to play some prisons, and I want your advice, because you've done prisons before, right? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. No, I mean performed. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're going to go to a woman's or a man's? I'm going to go to both. Well, you're a bigger man than I am. <laughs> I'm a pretty big dude. <laughs> the first thing that I would recommend is be real. I'm telling you, they could smell phony. Mm -hmm. They're very intelligent in a lot of ways, you know. They're con. They're con. And they'll, they'll, they'll smell if you're afraid of them. Would you suggest I do meet, uh, anything one-on-one -on -one before or after the performance? Get in a day early. Get in a day early and, and walk around, you know. Walk yeah. around. There's a lot of material to be had. They'll give you the punchlines, you know. You out there, you ask them something, they'll be forthright. Did you ever ask them outright things like about the violence or... Never ask them what they do. Fighting what do you, or... Don't, don't, don't say what you're in here for. Now, they volunteer it, Yeah. Uh, but don't be curious about that. You know, you are not the judge and jury. 
you should find a cute, funny way to say, look, whatever it is you did, you know, you're paying society. You're do that's not what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. Forget it's a prison. It's just another audience to you. Mm -hmm. Only difference between that and other audiences you work for is that they, they, they have killed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, I thought I killed. Yeah, but exactly. They really killed. Yeah. <laughs> Today, I'm touring Perryville State Pen. I'm really curious to know how many of you guys are here because of a guy, meaning you got drugs for the boyfriend, the dad molested you, and you finally stabbed him. Oops. She's like, whoa, we're going there. I'm at Perryville State Prison in the town that is unfortunately called Goodyear, Arizona. Tonight, I'll be performing for the female inmates, and tomorrow night, I'll do a show for the men. I'm doing this because um, it's a challenge as a performer, and you know, not that I'm coddling the prisoners or excusing them or anything, but these are people that at least are paying their debt to society. That's code. That's clearly code for let somebody over the wall. Okay, Hi, how are you, Denny? So nice to meet you. <laughs> so what do we do? Where do we start? What well, happens Well, you need first? to check in here. OK, and what so, do I take off? Um, anything that's metal that may set off the metal detector. OK, you're going to have to All use right. the hand scanner. I'm sure that they're going to be uber concerned with security. Nobody wants to lose TV's Kathy Griffin. OK, that's it. OK, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Felt like I wanted to just kind of frame a little bit of what you're going to see, okay. and then ask questions as to maybe what you what you want to see. Great. Is anyone going to throw poo at me? No. Okay. That won't happen. No. Not today, anyway. Okay. What are the most common reasons the females would be incarcerated? The biggest portion of why women are here specifically have to do with drug-related crimes. Where okay. you're going to be performing is one of our transition units, where the inmates are preparing for release, and they have to wake themselves up, get to work on their own, get to the chow hall on their own without all the normal. Sounds familiar, you three. <laughs> Believe me, without I all could the use one of these units stuff. in my house. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to go over and then hit the culinary arts program. Okay. Okay? Great. Thanks. Thanks. I wanted to spend the day at least getting the lay of the land. I wanted to get to know the women, get as many impressions as I could, and get material so I'd be able to really speak to them specifically. I totally miss lunch. Now, how many hours a day are you girls here? Um, usually about eight. Eight hours a day? Yeah. Every day? The goal is from work-based education to give inmates a skill that when they get released, they can put to work in the community. I love that if you're incarcerated, you can go to a culinary school and learn how to do something you didn't know how to do before. So when you get out, you might actually be equipped to get a job that you couldn't do before you ran over the old ladies. If you notice the knives, notice they're all cabled down. My house is the they're same way. locked up What's or they're cabled excuse? down, yeah, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. voila. Can someone take a fork out of the cage? <laughs> I was trying my brand of humor around the women because I wanted to take their temperature about how much I can make fun of them and their situation, which I hoped would be a lot. <laughs> That's so good. My show's canceled. I'm going to stay here and eat back-to-back -back sandwiches. Can I get some? Yeah. What crime do I have to commit to get in this class? Because this is a very good class. Never mind. Don't answer that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't answer. <laughs> I almost did. That's <laughs> I've lost control of my staff. <laughs> uh, you know what? Lights out. Lights out on the sandwich. Let's finish. Thanks very much. Nice meeting you. Bye, girls. Thank you. Thank that was you. delicious. Keep up the good work. All right, I will. Take care. Bye-bye. So next, I went to the motor pool, where convicted felons learn how to fix a car. And the problem with that is... Let me introduce you to Larry. This is Kathy. Hi, I'm Kathy. I've seen you on TV. So nice, nice to meet you. you. Hi. The guy who runs the motor pool said the inmates maintain the fleet of vehicles used by the prison employees. So let's hope, you know, if you're the driver that day, you didn't piss anybody off. Hey, I'm Kathy. Hi, I'm Johnson. Hey, Johnson. Nice to meet you. So how long have you guys been doing this? I've been here for seven months. And when I got here, I didn't know how to change oil. <gasps> That's like me. Yeah. That's great. And so you guys will try to get jobs in this when you get out, right? I'm definitely getting it. OK, yeah. now when you go to apply for a job and you say that you were incarcerated, does that hurt you? Do they already know before you've applied? The mechanic industry, they kind of require that you're a felon. <laughs> exactly. Believe me, I've worked, they're all crooks. I've worked with them. 
when you send in your resume, you have ASC certifications. Most guys that apply for a job can't say they're ASC certified. Mm -hmm. The girls I'm going to be performing for, what's cool about them is they really seem to be actively trying to give themselves vocational training to have something to do when they get out. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm Kathy. Hey, Kathy. How are you? I'm all right. Hey, what's your name? Mia. Hey, Mia. How are you? Yeah. Can anybody come to the show tonight? Are you coming? Yeah. Please laugh at everything I say. <laughs> Sight unseen. I don't, oh, is there any lingo you can tell me? Like, what's <laughs> some initials or something that normally wouldn't get a laugh at a comedy club, but will kill here? Roy. What's Roy mean? Rumor on yard. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Roy. Alert. What's alert? Lesbian like until release date. <laughs> It was great to go early and walk around the prison because I wanted to know what their lingo was, what their relationships are, what they laugh about themselves in prison. So if my sort of normal celebrity stuff isn't working, I can just talk about them. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Keep working, girls. <laughs> Thank you. My next stop was the women's dorm. Now I can really get up close and personal and meet these women. Hi. Hi. I'm Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Oh, nice to meet you. See you or K? Kay? Kay. Me too. I saw you, Kathleen. Yes. Yeah, me too. What are you watching? I don't know. I just turned it on. Can I see what magazines you have? Yes. I was definitely concerned that um, the inmates wouldn't be up on, you know, what crazy thing Britney is doing or any of the pop culture stuff. But they've all got the tabloids and they have their own televisions. I don't want Jessica and Tiffany thinking they can just have their own TVs down in their ward. Hey, what's your name? I'm Joanne. Hey, Joanne. Good to meet you, Ms. Griffin. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you came here to do this for us. Yeah, it's fine. Joanne. Joanna. Hi. What's your name? Hi. Don't get up. Don't get up on my account. There's only a television show here. Solitaire? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's trying to look like she's in prison. <laughs> Um, she is. No, I'm just kidding. I, I have to admit, though, there are a couple that I really just want to go, what are you doing here? What, I, what, what guy got you to put a heroin balloon up your peach? Because you're not supposed to be here. If Tom was here in the, uh, in the ward, would he be the new meat, or is he not hot enough? Considering, the, you know, the lured thing here, yeah. it would probably be one of them. Oh, here we go. These two are hot tickets. <laughs> I'm telling you. Pass around. Exactly. They're, they're lured candidates. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Tom, Tom didn't do so well here. He's used to it. Officer Hawks, though, was very interesting to everybody. Everyone, everyone's watching you, Hawks. They clearly want to see me give you some shit. They it's do. obvious. Definitely. Yeah. So what, what happens when um, a, riot, a, a riot erupts? Do you just leave? Pepper spray. <laughs> no, it's, this is a good unit. It, these girls are behave quite a bit, actually. So nobody's trouble in here, except my, my own crew. All right, I'll see you later. Take care. OK, Hello. bye. When the ladies applauded for me when I just walked out of their dorm, I thought that was a really good sign. Or they thought I was the governor and I was just gonna pardon them. Before I do my show tonight, I have one more stop to make. The warden was taking me to meet the Inmate Community Forum, which is a group of inmates who are working to improve life on the inside. Hey, hey ladies, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, I'm Kathy, everybody. I, I kind of just want to talk to you guys, and if you wouldn't mind, I, I, part of the show is I'd love to kind of hear your stories, and I'm really curious to know how many of you guys are here because of a guy, meaning you got drugs for the boyfriend, the dad molested you, and you finally stabbed him. Oops. <laughs> She's like, whoa, we're going there. I came right out and said, how many of you are here because of some guy? And most of them raised their hand. It didn't surprise me. And how many of you ladies have kids? Any teens, teen kids? It's my son. It's, it's, but how do you talk to him about it? Well, you know, when he comes to visit, um, I'm very straightforward with him, and I just tell him, if you do drugs as a young teenager, this is what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And then the warden pointed out a woman who was pregnant. Oh, are you the lady with, with child? Yes. <laughs> oh! I hope so. I'm hoping that's just bad. No, no, no. <laughs> oh! All right, so what's that like? How do I put it? I mean, being stuck in the cell, 23 hours a day, especially on weekends. <laughs> Missing my family. Yeah. And even knowing I'm not going to have a normal childbirth. How long do you get to see the baby? A uh, minute. Minutes? That's it. And then the baby's, the baby's gone. And next time I'll see him is if my husband brings him, you know, or until I get out, whichever, whatever happens. Man, I don't know how you can be behind bars and not be able to see your kids. I mean, even like the worst drug addict mom must get in prison, sober up, and then 
be hit with this realization. I mean, it's awful. And it's hard, but I've learned and I've come to accept I put myself here, you know. These women really got to me, so I was just trying to hold it together and end on a cheerful note. Well, I, thanks very much. Good luck to everybody. Thank you. Very impressed. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. I didn't want to cry in front of them, but I thought if I cry, then they might cry more. And I was just like, yeah. Because I'm, I'm sure, especially when that one girl said, you don't want it, like you. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm going to do a show tonight at Perryville, Arizona State Prison. We do have a few extra seats. I'm not sold out at the prison. <laughs> it's pretty full. What do you mean it's pretty full? <laughs> what the hell are they doing? <laughs> I spent the whole day preparing for my performance tonight at the prison, and now it's only minutes away. OK, so. Here's my special material. I'd like to thank all of you for not throwing poo at me. Do you think that's rude? Some of it's a little. It right when you say it. I know. Mm, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Just as I was finishing writing my act, the warden came in and dropped a bomb. We do have a few extra seats, and I got to tell you why. Oh no! I'm not sold out at the prison. <laughs> prison break is on right now. You're going up against prison break. Seriously? I swear. Oh. It's, it's pretty full, but there's a couple rows in the back that aren't full. What do you mean? What the hell are they doing? <laughs> Whatever, I sold out Carnegie Hall a month ago. And now I can't sell out the prison cafeteria. Well, I, I hope they're all executed tomorrow. There, I said it. I know that might seem like one strike you're out, uh, but uh, too bad. Little... This way. We're gonna uh, go my staff would like to know meeting. if they can watch Prison Break on uh, somebody's Blackberry. I want to find out what happens to the president. Thanks. Now, you know her from uh, Suddenly Susan. You know her from many, many, many talk shows. I want to introduce to you Kathy Griffin. Thank you, lady. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I can't believe that we're not sold out because of the fucking prison break episode tonight. <laughs> Sad. They actually probably paid these girls like two bucks to come to the show. This is pitiful. They're like, I'm missing prison break for this shit. You better be funny. I'm trying to learn the lingo, so I'm going to start a Roy that I'm alert. That's right. I still got it, ladies. All right. So, so anyway, um, I wanted to start another Roy, which is that um, Officer Hawks. He's right here. But what I was going to say is it's very obvious that he's very, very deeply in love with me. And it's very, yes. I mean, maybe not a rumor. Maybe not a rumor. Okay. The women responded really well when I made fun of them and their situation. They really loved it when I, when I made fun of the staff. Like any good corporate gig. Are you guys watching American Idol? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Did you see Paula had like Muppet hair? She had this crazy Muppet hair. And then two nights later, she's got the same wig on with this nuts ponytail coming out like a tumor. And I thought she pissed off the wrong queen. That's what happened there. Right? She pissed off the wrong queen. They liked the celebrity stuff. They were up on everything. They were hooting and hollering. That's it for me. I want to thank you ladies for being so nice to me. the day really trying to get to know as many of the women as I could and I think it paid off because uh, I kind of killed. Can I just say that I almost didn't come because I wanted to watch Prison Break <laughs> but I came and I, I enjoyed it. We've done things that are wrong you know and we're trying to make amends and it's just nice to be recognized and, and know that you know it's it's worth it for us to do good. I was sort of tempted at the end to do something like mushy, like, oh, I hope you guys, you know, get out there and do some great stuff. I know you will. And I was like, oh, I don't know. It you know? wouldn't work. Yeah, I mean, that's really what I was thinking. I truly was thinking, you know. You could have gotten the whole group crying or oh, something like that at the no. end. You, you could have. I'm going to make the guys cry. Is it weird tomorrow for the guys' prison if I wanted to have a kissing booth? 
<laughs> that would probably be weird. You know, like an old timey state fair. Yeah, I mean, it could work. <laughs> I mean. Today I'll be meeting the male prisoners and performing for them. But before that, the warden has one more stop he'd like me to make in the women's prison. We're about ready to enter our special management area, and this is where we have death row and maximum custody after you. Hi, how you doing? Hi, nice meeting you. Kathy. Hi, ladies. How you doing? I want to kill you. Oh, yeah, take a number, honey. I really can't be anywhere for two days without someone wanting to kill me. Normally, it would be Gwyneth Paltrow, but uh, today it was a woman who actually is kind of a murderer. So the warden let us go in a cell while the inmate who normally is there was having her rec time. This is just a uh, standard room. It was small and oppressive. I can absolutely see how any prisoner goes crazy just by virtue of being in that cell all day. And they, they get fed how? They get fed through the food trap. Because she's a max inmate, she can't go to the chow hall. Now the warden is taking me to meet some of the maximum security and death row inmates. The rule is you have to wear a stab vest, which you'd think would scare me, but I'm used to wearing one around Jessica. I have one at home. This person escaped because there's no one in there. Hi, how you doing? Good, what's your name? Hey, Wendy, how are you? Good. So how's life in there? It's all right. So how many phone calls do you get to make? I get 20 minutes a week. 20 minutes a week. And so what do you do when you go out for your hour of recreation? I only get to go out three times a week. Oh, three times a week. Yeah. Walk around in circles in the, in the little cage. Look, it was hardcore. When she had her exercise time, it was by herself in a cage, basically, and she could listen to music and walk in a circle. All right, take care, Wendy. See ya. Later, the warden told me that Wendy had been convicted of killing a family member. It's incredible to me that she seems so calm and normal, considering what the jury had found she had done. I have to tell you, I couldn't stop thinking about Wendy. But the warden wanted me to go meet the guys, and of course I wanted to start working on my material. Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah. So at Prairieville, there's only one male unit, and it's for the guys that are doing well and transitioning out. Hey guys. Hey, 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 Hi, I'm Kathy. How are, how are you? Good, yeah, good. Yeah. Were you gonna have lunch? I think I am, right? Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm very nervous about tonight because, um, you know, it's a bunch of dudes. May I, sure. fellas? By all means, man. Why not? I think they're going to be tougher than the women, for sure. Now, this doesn't make us a gang that we're sitting together, right? No, no. All right, because we could be the foxy ladies, no, you are right? Foxy ladies. foxy ladies. We're tough. Look out. Yes. My jokes went over OK with the guys, but there was one guy who really knew a lot about me. You have two brothers, right? How'd you know? Your favorite color is blue. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you still have the Mercedes? Yes. Stalker. <laughs> I have a stalker. And he openly responds to the name Haystalker. I know a little bit about you. I like that. You're Maybe he just you're is a fan. I, I would, I'd like to use the word fan instead of stalker. So you guys have all done something right to be here, yeah. right? Yeah, right, right? All right, yeah. so it's the good behavior. And have you guys all participated in the programs and stuff? Yeah. Yes. Like what programs? Nutrition, culture diversity. Drop program. And when are you getting out? Uh, hopefully within the next 30 days. Provided you don't um, stab anyone during the show tonight. They weren't as good as the women about me making fun of them. Like the women, I felt like I could actually make fun of the fact that they had committed crimes and that's why they were in prison. The men, a couple times I did that and they were like, ha I'm the innocent one, remember? Me in this row. All right, where, do, where does it go when you're done? <laughs> Trey return. All right. Nice big letters, I like that. It's tough, a lot of men have the attitude that women aren't funny and they might have a little chip on their shoulders since they're in prison. But I'm actually not scared of them. I'm scared of them not laughing. All right, guys, I'll see you tonight, I hope. See you, 6.30. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Tom is being kind of quiet. It's been hard for him. Not one guy has come on to him or a girl from yesterday. He can only take so much. Maybe she can come on to him or maybe can you can you call Tom Sweet Cheeks or anything? <laughs> oh, I'd be incarcerated to get away from her. <laughs> oh, sorry, Tom. Sorry. We've got a bunch of local news media that would like okay. to come talk to you. Now that I finished touring the prison, the warden wants me to meet with the news media and talk about my experiences there. Hi, guys. 
Uh, I'm really happy to be here. You know, my friends that were teasing me, you know, oh, you're going to go perform for criminals. But the men and women that are here really are taking steps to better their lives. And once they're in the programs, culinary school and the mechanics school and stuff, I guess the rate of recidivism is much lower. And every single one of my men I really am pulling for. I understand there's a personal story behind this for you. I had a brother who was incarcerated for a while. I never planned on talking about that publicly. So I was caught a little off guard when one of the reporters knew about my brother. Yeah, my uh, brother was incarcerated for a few years. And when that was happening, I was estranged from him and I didn't want any part of it. And he's since passed away. And so for me, it's interesting now that he's passed away, I, I almost have a little bit of compassion, you know, that I didn't have then. So this is kind of a healing thing maybe? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> After the press conference, I didn't have much time to prep for my show. I'm very nervous. Okay, so the main core stories are? Lots of balls, lots okay. of masturbating. Now, Warden, if, if anyone gets too rowdy, how do you guys handle it? Um, we, we just pull them out. I don't know if they're going to be accepting of my humor. I hope they relate to it. Um, I am hoping they show up wanting to have a good time. Are you ready? Yep. Let's go. I'm Sounds ready good. for you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, it's like a bad blood job. Good luck. She shocked prisoners. Finally, the moment was here. I was going to perform for the male inmates at Perryville State Prison. I was really nervous that they would just be bored or heckle me. I was nervous that anything would happen. What I want to do right now is introduce to you Kathy Griffin. Go. I learned early on uh, as many dick jokes as possible and as profane as possible. You guys see Tyra sometimes, right? I'm sure you've all uh, had a spank to her a couple times, huh, guys? Come on. Let's, let's be honest. Thank, guilty, that man right there. He admitted it. Thank you, sir. All right, I got to tell you, I went to uh, Iraq to, to entertain the troops last year, right? Before I go over, I get this letter from the Army with all these language restrictions. Profanity, vulgarity or connotations of sexual depravity or perversions will not be used. There goes all my fisting material. I, I'm sorry, I actually shocked prisoners. I thought it was kind of good where they could really let loose and we could all be saying bad words and talk about verboten topics for just an hour of their whole lives. I just want to say it's really, no, it's been my you are. I, I'm so pulling for every single one of you. Thanks a lot, you guys. They were an awesome audience. I was really glad that I was not afraid to tell them congratulations on being part of the programs that allowed you to be here tonight. I thought Kathy was insightful with her material, how she reached the audience, how she adjusted to a crowd. I'm sure she got more applause here as some of the other jokes than she would anywhere else. I killed. The guys love me. I think they're a little attracted to me. You really, really made a connection. Good, good, I'm glad. And I think that matters. I'm glad. Well, thank you for everything. That was so nice. Thanks. Thank Couldn't have so done it without you guys. Coming. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you so much. I've done Iraq. I've done the prison. What's next? Kathy Griffin does the Vatican. And if ever you're in town. OK. <laughs> sure, stop on by. Exactly. Next, on My Life on the D-List. Ooh, what's that? That's super Englishy. Team Griffin is headed to London for the UK premiere of My Life on the D-List. They love their scandals. <laughs> I'm 
Okay. And if you could like maybe sleep with a celebrity, you could sell it to the Sun magazine. So where is it to now? Your pants. So what it, would you say is the difference between the UK gays and the American gays? British gays are not afraid of being drunk. I'm worried still... about doing this because people think, well, he's a gay then. If he's hanging out with Kathy Griffin, he's definitely gay. I... <laughs> this is going to be my UK comedy debut. This isn't the room, right? Yeah, it is. That's the stage? It's kind of a setup to fail. Previously on My Life on the D-List. What are you doing down here? I'm hosting the Gay Porn Awards. I know that maybe we're not technically on the same team, but can I just have a little kiss on the cheek? I'll f you so fast you won't know what hit you, honey. Where in the prison will I be performing? Thank you very much. Oh, looks like a bad blowjob. I'm sorry, I actually shocked prisoners. Okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My favorite is I love when Madonna adopted the kid from Malawi, little David. For some reason, it's a little more disturbing to me that having a kid named David from Africa, which is a little weird, and yet somehow that kid has made Madonna more British than ever. <laughs> right? Did you see her on Oprah the next day? Holy shit. She's like, I'm so thrilled to have Master David in the home. I shall feed him tea and scones with cluttered cream. Who will buy this wonderful mo- She's like fucking Oliver Twist now. <laughs> Company meeting, exciting news. Everyone has to come. Hey. Company meeting. We're coming. We're here. I love Company my... meeting. Where are we at? There's oh. a big announcement. Let's get on the big couch. I have a very exciting announcement. We're all going to London. Wow. Because of the show, <laughs> yes, it's true. E has bought seasons one and two of My Life on the D-List and two of my stand-up specials, and yet I was fired from E in America. That's right. Europeans get me more than you guys. I'm gonna go and do a week of press and you guys get to all come. I wanna be like Posh Spice, where everywhere I go, people are interested in my weight fluctuation and my giant head. You can't wear a bra. She never Ever. wears a bra. She doesn't? No. Her nipples Ooh, she are paid always a lot poking through for her the boobies, shirt. so. Yeah. Buy me a bra with fake nipples in it. And then maybe I can find my Bex. I can bang like one of the guys from Big Brother 2 or some, something, I don't know. You know the guys' dicks aren't circumcised. <laughs> the whole country. I, you know, I think the whole country has foreskin. Do you think your gay crowd will be different overseas? Than overseas? I gotta get the London gays. And I don't know what kind of gay they are, what makes their London bridge fall down in a gay way. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of Googling. Okay. Where the London gays are, who I should be photographed with, and what <laughs> no uncircumcised support. guy I should date. <laughs> okay. We're on it. Prince Harry would be good. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Adjourned. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye, love. So I'm hoping to take my UK gays by storm, but before I do that, there's a certain US gay that I have some unfinished business with. All right, girls, I need the house to be perfect for Perez. You know how the gays are. Perez Hilton is this guy with a blog, and he just trashes celebrities, like really trashes them, and defaces their pictures. He used to write favorable things about me, and then we had a little falling out, and then he wrote vile things about me. Vile, untrue things. When my dad passed away, Perez wrote a nice little message about my dad. I make no apologies for anything I've ever said about him, but Anybody who's willing to write something nice about my dad, of course, then I let bygones be bygones. Perez! Hello! Oh, it's so good to see you. Come here, you f. <laughs> Hi. Hi. All right, let's start with a house tour. I want to dazzle okay. you with my beautiful home. You came on a good day wow. because you know I hosted the Gay Porn Awards. I know how to get to the blue haired gay bloggers. I gave them my best sex toys from my bestest gay gift bag ever. Hope he appreciates it. <laughs> An anal plug. Yeah. Oh, that's a treat. Look a lot. Very important people back here. What's happening? Tell me. I think what? it'd be fun if I tipped off the paparazzi that we're gonna be there, and then maybe they accidentally they'll showed up. They, oh I would God. love it if that accident happened. Let's try to make that happen. Okay. When we got to the restaurant, I thought Perez and I should talk about our differences. 
Because we had had a bitchy queen fight. It was just us two gay guys going at it for a while. I didn't get an invite to your holiday party? It's okay. But I'm like, oh, I thought she liked me. Aww. And now I get snubbed. I heard his bitching, but I was ready to move on. And he wrote something nice about my dad. That always gets me. I was really touched when you emailed about my dad because it really caught me off guard. Really? And somebody sent it to me. It wasn't like that bitch had it coming, but her dad seemed nice. It was like just real straightforward, like our condolences go out. And then when I read the messages from people, that was just such like a, like of all places, your website, I didn't think I would find solace and just people going, oh yeah, he was really cool. He was really funny. And so. Here we are. It was a bump in the road. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. <laughs> You know. Kathy. Hey, how you doing? I, I, I was here last year. My yeah. daughter. For Hi, I'm <laughs> nice to meet you. I know who you are. <laughs> All right. Fair, okay. Nice Hi. to meet you. I'm going to pass out. Oh. I actually took my camera. Did I, they play I wanted, you? Is this fake? I swear to God. Paid? I swear to God. <laughs> I thought it was funny that Perez thought that when someone came up to me, it was staged. And he kept asking if I had paid the person or told the person ahead of time. You know, sometimes people come up to me and want me to sign something. I'm semi-famous. When are people gonna get it? Look, there's paparazzi. I was amazed that Perez was able to just call the paparazzi and they were waiting for us outside the restaurant. <laughs> Perez had a genius idea that we should pose holding each tabloid so that that tabloid would print it. So we just sat there and went through one tabloid after another. <gasps> Picks and pans? <laughs> Don't anyone look at us. Stop looking at us. <laughs> One, two, three. Say Clay Aiken. There's no better way to settle a fight between friends than a lot of press. And that does bring us together. It's a week before we go to the UK, so let's see what research Team Kathy has done. All right, what have you found for me? How am I going to crack the Brits? Uh, where, and where am I going to find the London gays? Soho. Okay. It's the heart of the gay nightlife. Why do you have the Inquirer? Oh, because you're in it. <gasps> yep, about your prison. Two pages? Yeah. Celebrities who have been shredded by Kathy Griffin's biting wit have been granted their fondest wish. The comedian has gone to prison. What? <laughs> this thing writes itself. <laughs> the tart-tongued redhead performed two shows at the Arizona State Prison Complex in Perryville, and the Inquirer was there as she took no prisoners, get it, with her no-holds-barred humor. All right, so here's a nice picture of me hugging a rapist. Five pictures and two pages in the Inquirer. Oh, this is great. And this makes my day. See, I've got to get this, but in London. So Whitney is stopping by because she's obsessed with all things British. She loves the tabloids, and she's going to tell me who's hot there and who's famous and for what. And I think it's looking really good to meet up with Ricky Gervais. <gasps> That's so incredible. He gives me the straight guy cred. I have hero worship for Ricky Gervais. He's the original creator of The Office, which we copied here, and Extras, which is a hugely popular, awesome show. Um, Do they revere him completely over there? I think they absolutely adore him Do they there. pick on him in the tabs or just love him? No, I think they really just like him. I must have a moment with him. And if I don't, then, well, nothing will happen. But I'll be upset. Okay, so I brought you your homework. Okay. All right, so these okay. are the tabloids. Skinny girls have bellies, too. Tell me about the tabloid business. If, if this is a bigger market, do I have a better shot of getting in one of them? Oh, I would say so. They have like 13 or so like tabloids over there. Oh, dear. Ronaldo's clothes have fallen off. Who's Ronaldo? He's a footballer. So that's the key over there. It's really big. Like, a this is a footballer's girlfriend. OK. I have to date someone um, who's well, a celebrity you're there. and you're dating, right? Right. So, so how do I approach a British, boy. a British boy celebrity? I know footballer might be a little lofty. Is there like an old sickly footballer or someone who's <laughs> Maybe almost Maybe a manager? Dying? The company is finding me a date. I don't know if they can pull it off. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of guys. You know, they're hit or miss, let's be honest. I think what's probably going to happen is Tom will end up just reading a bunch of articles about the English music scene, and the girls will just read all about the new Marc Jacobs line. But eventually, I will get a date with some poor guy that doesn't even know what hit him. The last gig I have before I leave for the UK is a daily nationally syndicated radio show called Women Allowed. 
One of the radio hosts, Mo Gaffney, was on the British mega hit AbFab. So she's going to be able to clue me in on what makes the UK audiences laugh. You're listening to Women Aloud with Mo Gaffney and Shauna Ride. We are presenting a new segment called Funny Women We Love, a celebration of women in comedy. So what better way to kick it off uh, than with Kathy Griffin? Hey, Kathy, thanks Hello, for being Hello, everybody. On the show. Thank you. I'm the perfect person to be on Women Aloud, too. I'm loud. And I'm a woman. Right? And you're allowed to be a loud woman. I hope I am, although I was just told I can't swear, no. so I feel like I've been taken out at the knees. Well, no yeah. t well, we have to do it every day, not swear. We get uh, it. Is, do you find it difficult? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I have a question, and now you're talking about going on, uh, on tour. Um, are you going to England? Yes, I'm going to go perform in England for the first time, which I've never done. You're kidding. I'm do, yeah, but I would love some tips on UK audiences. They really admire women who make them laugh. I was on uh, AbFab, of course, and it's, mm. so that show is so over the top and so like nutball. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I especially loved about doing it and especially loved about the English people really allowing you that. Mo says the audiences are really open and open to wild things and you can't shock them. And it kind of sounds like uh, gay audiences. So it sounds like a bunch of heterosexual people with a British accent who have bad teeth who laugh like gay people. my passport it should be in your purse today's a big day because we all get to go to the UK and I'm gonna do press and promotion and talk shows and uh, I get to meet British luminaries maybe <laughs> why do I have to carry this by myself <laughs> all right we have a bag out of control <laughs> Hold on, we got a runaway bag, people. We got a runaway bag. All right, use my ass to stabilize it. Okay, kids, let's go to the UK. I'm going on a hot date with a UK actor, but of course my goal is to be photographed with him. All right, now you know if there's no photographers there, I'm ending the date. Boom. Sorry, I had too much to drink. arriving in the UK to promote the airing of My Life on the D-List. This is my chance to become an international superstar. I've got to convince the UK audience that I'm fabulous, and i got to meet a lot of UK stars. So I do for sure get to meet with Graham Norton? Yes. Oh. And in the gay part of town, which is old. He's the ultimate UK gay. Everyone in the UK knows who Graham Norton is. He's like the Jay Leno of Britain. But funny. The point is, I'm very excited and honored he's agreed to meet with me. You got me a date? Yes, with Chucky e. Bennett from Footballer's Wives, which is the big, big show. Oh, no, I know. It's a huge show. Great. This is lovely. Did you have your flowers? Wow, lots of flowers. Oh, how lovely. Dear Kathy, welcome to London. I look forward to meeting with you later to discuss how to best execute your... Introduction to the UK audience. Cheers, Kevin, from E. Ooh, he's the big gun at E here. This trip is going great already. I've got a beautiful hotel suite, which is like my London flat, gorgeous roses for me, and now it's time to get the lay of the land. Well, as a special treat, I'm very proud of this, I rented a double-decker bus just for us. Really? Yes. Ooh. Awesome. Ooh. Just us, so we can see whatever you want to see. Well, let's go. Oh, any update on Ricky Gervais? Not yet. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be optimistic. I'm actually gonna bring a change of clothes. Just in case? Just, yeah. I really wanna meet with Ricky Gervais. So if he calls, I'm dropping everything and I'll be there in two seconds. You guys realize that in a couple of weeks, I won't be able to do this. Why? My fans will bum rush the bus, oh. rock it until we all get killed, probably. Yeah, right. Right? If it's not Big Ben, it's a big slot. <laughs> All right, wave to the bus. <laughs> you know what? The girl's look. You know what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you too, lady. Oh. Oh. Pictures very famous. Very famous. You need to do the queen wave. <laughs> look, it's Ricky Gervais. God, I hope he meets with me. What park is that? Do you think the 
queen is inside watching the movie The Queen over and over in a loop. She's <laughs> two, three. <laughs> I, know, I know it's not the most mature picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's your my favorite. Yeah. Are you a big fan of my life on the D list? Mm. I know. It's good. It turns out I've gone international and I didn't even know it. There were a group of people taking my picture and they were very excited to be doing so, even though they don't know who I am and didn't speak a word of English. Which was your favorite episode? Thank you. Me too. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Great news. I hear Chucky Venice, the guy I'm going on a date with tonight, is very well known for his role on Footballers Wives, which is kind of like the British version of Desperate Housewives. That means free publicity for my stand-up show, if I work it right. So I'm having high tea with a very popular UK comedian named Julia Morris. I hear she's really funny. I'm hoping Julia can give me the lowdown on dating UK men, since she's been around the block. I'm a tired old lady, but have no. I got some tips for you. <laughs> So you recently got married? I really did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky to have found anyone who said yes, to be quite frank with you, because I'd, you know, I've been through a few. Really? Oh, yeah. One or two. <laughs> You're my kind of gal. How lovely. Thank you so much for your kindness. Gosh, what about a cucumber sandwich? That'll be filling. Yeah, I'm not going to take a crap for a week. There's no roughage here. <laughs> now, um, UK guys seem to be a little bit doughy. They are. Am I going to get the six pack? Well, I've heard rumors that you're going on a date with a boy who's got more than a six pack. Oh yeah, now, th do you know who this guy is? I really do. He is really quite delicious. Is he, he well known here? Yeah, absolutely So he's someone it. who's in magazines he and they indeed, all know yes. him? Yeah, he's, an, he's uh, quite a famous actor, but he's also terribly handsome, stepping out. Now, when I, if I see paparazzi, do I act like I want to be photographed or I don't? No, you do that whole, um, don't take the photo one. Yeah, yeah please, people, heaven. back away. Oh, they love getting a bad snap of people. This is the shot. You know, yeah. they, they love printing that one. Mm. That's fine with me. Yeah, well, that's why I think all the sort of the Paris Hiltons and all of those jazzy ladies, you know, don't wear the underpants. Yeah. I can't bear it. I wouldn't if anyone cared. Do you suggest that when I walk out of a club, I stumble? Yeah, for sure. And okay. do half-eye, just one half-eye. OK. Like that, because that'll give the impression of way too many wines. OK. Thank or maybe you. Chucky could hold me up. He totally could. He's a big, strong guy. Hi, tea with Julia. It was fantastic. I got a lot of good tips. I think Chucky Venice is going to be a great guy to be photographed with. So I just hope the paparazzi show up, or the paps, as she calls them. Oh, darling. Darling, my darling. God bless you. Thank you. What a pleasure. Just get started. Oh. Please be lucky for me to have an embarrassing photo. Yeah. In some really cheesy rag. Whatever show that I'm going to be working on, I'm going to say, oh, and look at this, Kathy Griffin. Drunk She's again. seen out with that Chucky Venice. I'm going to practice. Love. So watch my practice. Get out of here. You guys leave me alone. I'm just trying to have fun. Shut up. Leave me Chucky. So I'm all ready tonight for my big date with Chucky Venice, the hot as hell actor from Footballers Wives. So for my date, I did what all the big classy stars do. I had my people call the paparazzi themselves. All right, now you know if there's no photographers there, I'm ending the date, boom. I'm gonna say Before I Before you even get in? Yeah, I'm gonna say I have female problems. Itchy okay. female problems. Girl, I'd, lo I'd love to have dinner, dinner, but my crabs are multiplying. <laughs> and my people care right Just sit right there now. like Tom. They're acting up. Scratch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need an entree appetizer and I'm good. But if the press is there, boom, drop my pants. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Don't wait up for me. All right. All right. <laughs> you can wait up. I'll be back in like half an hour. <laughs> Tonight on my date, I can either meet someone I care about or get my picture in a British magazine and become an international celebrity. I choose the latter. Is that Kathy? Yes. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hi, sweetie. Oh, God. Sorry, I had too much to drink. My drunken fall out of the cab went off without a hitch, except for the good Samaritan. She's a lady, man. She... Thank you very much. Sorry no, about lady. that. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. I'm okay. Thank you very much. I'm very friendly of you. It almost screwed me right out of the picture. Her with her help. I've caused quite a stir. Uh, indeed, you have, man. But that's Hello, you. it's you right? so great to meet you. Likewise, darling. Likewise, man. How's it going? You're very, very handsome. Oh, I thank can you. Can I stumble on you? Of course you can okay. stumble on me. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, oh. I'm going to be honest. I could have dumped him after the picture. 
all right? Just like a beautiful piece of meat. But I decided to go in and chat with him because he was so nice and so cute that it was kind of a real date for me after all. I skinned my knee. Are you serious? Yes, I skinned my knee trying to get oh, my precious darling, photo man. stumbling out of the taxi. <laughs> Come on, Kat. That's the price for fame. Your muscles are actually showing through your shirt. Are they really? That's obscene. Maybe You're like 40, the old 40, five minute joggers. Hey, she, man, she exactly. Care. Yes. You know, you feel my guns? Hey, man. Get ready. Hey. Are you okay? Out. Yeah, man. I don't want to. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Are you drunk yet? Getting there. Okay. Getting there, you see? Unfortunately, what happens is I tend to talk a bit more when I drink. I will be sitting on your lap so fast. I'll shut you up, honey, believe me. I'm stronger than any drink you could have. You know, if I didn't have my press junket tomorrow, I'd have a junket in his pants, and I'd answer every question. I don't know if we can see each other because I'm leaving and you're busy, but can you at least think about me when you pleasure yourself? Oh, well, Throw definitely. me a bone. Hello. Thank you. you Hi. Had, you oh. know what? Send me a kinky shot via email. You know I, mean? I have some really beautiful airbrush pictures. Yeah? They look nothing like me. All right, all right. Hey. Yeah, actually, I'm making them hand out flyers for my show tomorrow night because I'm afraid that not enough gay guys are going to come. This is tough street for flyers. Right. <laughs> Mostly the flyers promise sex. <laughs> <laughs> draw, get out of the marker and draw, start drawing yeah. penises. penises. Yeah. <laughs>a huge day for the beginning of my career as an international superstar. So first I have a meeting with the E! Channel exec, then I'm on a women's chat show, my debut on British TV. If this goes well today, then um, we could all probably live here. Sweet. And if it doesn't go well, you're all fired. As, no, as usual. My first stop today is to meet with Kevin, who's the executive who bought the show. I'm dying to know his plans for airing my life on the D-list and for the big live show tomorrow night. Will you guys check your emails and see if there's anything from Camp Ricky Gervais? His schedule's very busy, but they're doing their, the best that they can and they will make it happen. I know what that means. It means don't call us, we'll call you. But maybe the Brits are different. Maybe for them it means we'll try to make it happen. Hi, how are you? Hi, it's nice so to great you. to meet you. Let's walk out here. Okay, uh, great. We've got a whole launch campaign, including cross-channel television. Okay and a bunch of the female-oriented cable and satellite networks. Any billboards, magazine ads, any uh, of that yes, stuff? Yes, huge magazine ads, mostly magazine ads. What? And in what magazines? OK Magazine, Heat Magazine. <sighs> Heat is like the Us Weekly. Oh, that's great. So good. So now, do you know anything about the show tomorrow night? Do you uh, know people that are coming? Do you know I how many do. people are coming? Loads of advertisers are coming. I don't mean to bore you. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've got like 40 advertisers. It was really important. There's a bunch of agents coming, we have agents oh, and things like that. Put a gun to my head. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst of the bunch. Actually, Those right two are on the Blackberry the whole time. I'm nervous about doing stand-up for advertisers and agents because they're notorious for being bad audiences. They're distracted. They're wearing suits. They, they're not drunk yet. They're not out of the closet. There's a lot of barriers there. Really, what we sort of had to talk to you about today, though, was what you could and could not say. Because even though you're not bleeped, mm -hmm. there are certain words you can't actually say. So when you do your stand-up show, there's this massive list. I'd love a copy. Okay, <laughs> we'll find you one. Let me get Jane, okay. and then you can have that conversation. Okay. Great, thanks. Sure. Jane? I thought he was kidding no. about a list. Hello? A list. Okay. It's little, it's it's Jane, who works with us in the legal department. Hi, Jane. Jane there. Um, How do you do? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a very long list, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, you have the list. We have. We've got it ready. All four columns? All four. I don't even know what baddie boy means. <laughs> What's a slag? A loose woman. Okay. F should only be used very sporadically. And artistically. I do. I really choose mm -hmm. carefully. I'm like Picasso with a bright yellow. Jesus in Christ is just funny. <laughs> and I'm just going to fight for that one. What's bamboo? I don't know. Okay, then that's I'm using one, it. Okay, one. screw you. Yeah. I mean, it's in. <laughs> Things like mother and c are the ones that you must never, ever use. Ho, pimps, and bitches are terms that are never acceptable. Beat off? That's a staple. Mm -hmm. exactly. Come on, give me beat off. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Talking with the E people was terrifying because it was a lot of don't do this. And, you know, that's, that's not what makes this flower flourish. What makes me flourish is um, there's nothing you can say that would ever shock us. If I wasn't already worried enough about my UK stand-up debut, I sure am now. But no time for that. We're off to our next event.
Today we're at the show Loose Women, which is very similar to The View, a ladies chat show. And I'm promoting my life on the D-list and hoping to make a good impression with an audience that doesn't know who I am and doesn't know my humor. This is my debut on UK television, so I have to nail it. Hello, Kathy. Hey, how are you I'm doing? Sean. I spoke to you on the phone. Yes, of course. How are you doing, Sean? Bad. How are you doing? Good. So I'm just here to tell you about the show. So what we're going to be chatting about is handbags. Um, do you love your handbag? Can you live without your handbag? Do you go for designer handbags? Or do you care about having a designer label? Okay. What's always in your handbag? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you love handbags? I do. Yeah. What do you love about handbags? That they are a statement that I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Kathy Griffin. <laughs> obnoxious it just says Prada oh my uh, goodness right? yeah, that's the idea just it's an ugly real. display it's of wealth yeah. it's all right it says I'm a rich lady back off are you sort of a, a materialist consumer yes driven? I'm shallow and materialistic so you're perfect in I Hollywood. find that fun that money and things make me happy all right look the first couple of minutes were really scary the show is called loose women it should have been called chicks who don't get me but then I was able to turn it around when I started talking about stuff that they were familiar with well, you know, the Posh and Bex thing is not quite happening in Hollywood. It isn't? Yeah, so they all think he's handsome, uh -huh. but, you know, they're not sure if he's, like, a metrosexual or, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> I mean, we've thought it. And then Posh, we can't figure out her head as relative to her body oh size. It's a big, you know what I mean? Oh, come on, now, 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 now. I have to pick you up on that. Now, Hollywood is the home of the size zero. Yeah, exactly. I am you dreaming have been... of getting an eating disorder. Oh, from my mouth. Well, you've been very open about your own plastic surgery. You yes, I've had, had plastic surgery. Surgery. I've, I had liposuction and it all grew back. No. Like a, like a potted plant that someone watered again. It no. was a nightmare. I didn't know that you could just run and eat less. <laughs> <laughs> Please join me in thanking Kathy Griffin. Woo! Loose Women was tougher than The View, because at least I know those four. And with the British ones, I didn't even know them. I was trying to win them over. At least with The View, I just look at all of them and pretend they're rosy. That's what I tried to do on Loose Women. I tried to put Rosie O'Donnell's head on all four of those British uptight chicks. And it worked. So the press is done, but of course I'm still worried about my stand-up show tomorrow night. So I'm headed off to Old Compton Street, the gay part of town, to find my UK gays, accompanied by A-lister Graham Norton. Graham Norton has had over five shows on British TV. He's one of the most recognizable people in the UK. If you don't know who Graham Norton is, you're a crappy Brit. So normally this would just be a gay date that I would have by myself. But I need you guys to help me with the flyering. Right. You know, if you could do it in a snowstorm in Michigan, you can do it in jolly old London. I want the gays at the showcase tomorrow night because we all know that they're great laughers and they're pretty much unshockable. And that's what I need. And if they know that Graham Norton was walking down the street with me, I've got his seal of approval, then I should be in. Hi! Hello. Oh, it's such a pleasure to meet Hello, you. I'm so... such a fan. Yours. I feel like I have met you, but I, I have I feel like I know you a little yeah, too, but... but I may I introduce the group? Oh, yes. Hello, group. Hi. Hi. I'm making them hand out flyers for my show tomorrow night because I'm afraid that not enough gay guys are going to come. This is tough street for flyers. Right. <laughs> Mostly the flyers promise sex <laughs> at Draw, the end of the night. Get out of start drawing yeah. penises. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 And she will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In here are gay sandwiches. Now, this is gay coffee, which tastes <laughs> slightly different. It goes down a lot easier. <laughs> Just being with Graham Norton created quite a gay station. I didn't even have to call the paparazzi. They were just there. Graham was helping me recruit audience members for my show the next night, but these gays were not like the LA gays I'm used to. Oh, can you guys say oh. Hare Krishna? Oh, this is a lot of words. All right, cheers. And he's give someone money, <laughs> and you know what? He won't take more one, and he's give someone a note, and he didn't take it. Does that make sense? Right. I'm not following yeah, the logic, but... Okay. No, honestly, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, let's go see these guys. We're doing some chocolate. Great. Great. We're going hey, milk. Yeah. Okay. Hang on, do I have any left? Okay. Hang on, do I have any left? Let's see. Um, I am going to be honest, you have the craziest fans I've ever seen. They're insane. 
The people have, have wanted money, uh, put you in a headlock. But also, what's weird is, if you notice, my fan base consists mostly of homeless people. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I had to hear Graham's take on the list of naughty words. Here's I'm sure he's used all of them. There's, there's different categories. Oh, I and love here, here's, this. Here's the never use. Baddie boy? Mm -hmm. Now, people were shouting that at me only yesterday. I'm not joking. <laughs> I have never heard of blad clat. What does that mean? No idea. What's but, a blad clat? What's a blad clat? A blad cat? Blad. What's a bum boo? It's probably me again. <laughs> I'm looking down the list. Some of these you really I'm shouldn't say. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> All right, baby. You are such a doll. I really appreciate no, it. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to throw. All right. I'm going to throw you to the homeless. All right. <laughs> it was an absolute delight hanging out with Graham Norton. But the old Compton gays are not necessarily the people I want in the audience. I want people who can stand up, function, laugh at a Streisand joke, and these people can only do the latter. Um, Kathy? What? You made your UK press debut. D-list funny woman Kathy Griffin got acquainted with asphalt in a spectacular nosedive in a London parking lot yesterday. Perfect. Okay. So it's nice. and not a bad picture, really. Yeah. Your hair is perfect. Your hair is perfect even on the, in the gutter. <laughs> I'm a cover girl. You are. Hopefully this will end up somewhere and they'll have one of those titles. Like, um, Daffy D-lister <laughs> dives down. <laughs> And they didn't get that woman. Remember that woman yeah. who tried to save me? Yeah. Oh, thank God. The paps, they got you. That's, I've been had by the paps. <laughs> oh. Job well done, team. Yeah. yeah. You called, they came, team I fell. Perfect. That's right. <laughs> Turns out the club for my stand-up is a dump. This isn't the room, right? Yeah, it is. It's kind of a setup to fail. I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Griffin. We just got word that Kathy gets to meet Ricky Gervais, and obviously she's super excited about that, so she's on her way now. I definitely want to ask Ricky Gervais about UK audiences. I mean, he's the expert. He created The Office. He created extras. He stars in them. He gets giant A-listers to be in his projects, like Bowie and Ben Stiller and Kate Winslet. My whole mantra is to just shut up and listen, because I'm afraid to get excited and then just talk nonstop and make an ass of myself. <laughs> I'm here for my audition, my meeting. What's funny? This is, <laughs> this is natural. I'm just sitting here at my desk and you walked in. What's, it's not natural. It's, it's like a job This interview. is a real documentary and I always sit here mic'd up as well. This is what they call jumping the shark. This is now the decline of your career by just doing this show. And I was worried so... about doing this because people think, well, he's a gay then. If he's hanging out with Kathy Griffin, he's definitely gay. I, this you, is going to make you a little gay. There's a big magazine, a gay magazine here, where they do a, um, a straight guy and how gay are you, give you gay points. Mm -hmm. And um, they ask you sort of these, these questions. One of them was, what have you got in your fridge? And I got 75 gay points straight away for this answer because <laughs> I had a bottle of champagne in there given to me the night before by George Michael. Anyway, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> First of all, what's your feeling about the paparazzi and being famous for not for being famous and all that stuff? I don't want to be lumped in with those celebrities that do anything to become famous. I don't want to be lumped in with those people who, who are never famous enough. They read the paper going, what, where's me? When I met with Ricky, he was telling me how he doesn't like to be a media whore or associated with people who are media whores. So I didn't even tell him about my stage picture where I was falling out of a taxi. In fact, if he ever sees it, I'm just going to tell him I have a drinking problem. It's easier. Why do celebrities love you when you are a comedian and make fun of people too? I have a go at dead people like Gandhi and Mother Teresa. Yeah. They're, they're, they're that. That bitch. Although I wouldn't want to say something that wasn't true about them. But can I say stuff like, um, did you read how, you know how Oprah opened that school? <laughs> no. In, in Africa? She opened and like... Oprah, junk... if I laugh, it doesn't mean <laughs> I agree with anything she's saying. You're the most powerful woman in the world. <laughs> Yeah, so go on. So what, okay, so oh, she shit. opened. She did an amazing thing. She opened a school called the Leadership Academy for Girls mm. in Africa and gave these girls a chance that they would never have. And then, like three weeks later, came out in the press that the students were calling it a prison, and the parents were complaining that it was a prison. Now, I think that's funny that Oprah <laughs> opens a school that's basically a prison in the jungle in Africa. <laughs> she didn't. Open. But she did. But wait. Then the real story is that Oprah personally called up the parents who complained, and you know she rimmed. No 
asshole. Like, how scary would that be to get the call from Oprah? Like, what'd you say about me again? <laughs> say it. Again. And it turns again. out. I doubt she actually did that. You know she was going, excuse me, prison? Bitch. I swear to God. Do you know I am? I'm you will fucking root. But how do you get in with the A-listers? What, what about is... you and Winslet? But that was a job, wasn't it? I don't, I don't, you, would you think I sort of like I hang out with I them? I do, I think you're like ball. in a, the, the discotheques with them. Um... <laughs> the discotheques. <laughs> yeah, yeah, playing gramophone records. Yeah, with a great beat. If you're going to turn this on, what would be on right why now? Would I, why would I turn that on? I'm just asking. That, that, that would be Is really porn? rude. Because it sounds no. like you're nervous, like there's porn on there. No, of course not. And not just porn, but kitty porn. Oh, you, well, God. Well, you have a kitty porn look. I usually just use emails and... Are you going to email Kate Winslet what, what today? Are doing? What are No. Why, why not? Well, why would I do that? Because I, you I, miss her. I've spoken to her about three times. Well, time number four. Let's go. <laughs> Dear Kate. Do you want to go through my number of phone to see oh, famous people? Oh, yes. That's my dream. Can you at least tell me what celebrities you've met that are just blowing you away and you've gotten excited? Because I was going to ask you what you think of Madonna, but I'm sure you're going to say she's lovely. Uh... Yeah, she, she, she was very nice you, to me. Right? No, sure. she came and she said because she that. likes comedians. Um, yeah, she said um, she was a, a big fan. So um, yeah. Um, what are you I, doing? I was some fluff. You look there. like you're not telling the truth, and you're shoving away imaginary dust. And in your head, it you're thinking that, something about Madonna. You're like that. C I better not say <laughs> that. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I made him laugh a couple times, which is always a great thing when you can make somebody really funny laugh. So that made me happy. This has been such a pleasure. Oh, it's been fantastic. Please um, tell people to watch My Life on the D-List. I will. I've, I I've, I've, already, I've already talked about it. There's some people I can't tell. I... Kate Winslet? I, I feel like if he North finds North. me funny, then hopefully his countrymen will. This is great. You can see yourself out, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn out the door, hit me on the way out. Don't nick anything. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. All Good right. luck. See, uh, cheers. There's Ciao. some photographers outside. Oh, shit. I got a powder. She's forgotten her powder. Yeah, look, I stole it. I didn't even ask Ricky Gervais the stuff I was supposed to, but I think just being around him will be good, and I will be funnier through osmosis. Now we're headed to the club where I'm doing stand-up tonight. But first, I've got some on-camera promos to do. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you too. Good. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. 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 This isn't the room, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's London, so it's really, you know, they believe it or not, they fit 150 people in here at night. That's the stage? Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is not uh, the Kennedy Center. It's not even the Kennedy Center bathroom. So it's small, dark, depressing, and I have crabs now. It's kind of a setup to fail. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. Okay. It's going to be rough. All right. I'm All right. Sorry. Keep your expectations low. This is a shithole. I'm f This is gross. When I was banging guys in my 20s, even their shitty apartments were nicer than this. But I had to suck it up and do my best because those promos are going to air before the D-list show. So I want everybody to want to watch. I, I need this removed. Okay. All right, that's more makeup than I have on, and I'm a girl, <laughs> right? Point, Kevin, point there. You can have this removed, I assume. <laughs> I'll make sure that happens. I need a lot of whiteout. I'm going to okay. just take a minute and really make sure. And um, action, Kathy. You're watching My Life on the D-List with me, Kathy Griffin. You're watching Kathy Griffin's Wild Celebrity Kingdom. There are strict libel laws in the UK, so we had to do these promos where I was allowed to make fun of celebrities without saying anything negative about them. Well, I think it should be, hi, I'm Kathy Griffin. I've gotten some very special gifts from some people you may have heard of. Action, Kathy. This is a great CD that I got from Graham Norton. It's called, Now That's What I Call Gay Anthems. Jude Law got me this for the plane. It is a quick read. Kira Knightley said I should put this on my table in a restaurant to reserve it. Robbie Williams sent me this. It was hard to pack, and it was empty. Hmm. And, of course, this from my gay lover, Dame Judi Dench. She's not a dame anymore, honey. Not in these. Cut. Well done, Kathy. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. Good, good luck tonight. Nice work, everybody. Thank you very much. So I finished the promos, and then I went over to the hotel to prepare my set list for tonight's show. So my new material is Homeless Person Who Called Me a Fuckwit, um, Paps, um, Graham Norton, Toothless Gay People. That's the new good. stuff is all risky and new and who knows. Let's what go to the show. I'm hoping to wow them and I hope they'll get my sense of humor. And I'm afraid that I'll make a joke and then the British people will say, well, what do you mean by that? How are you? 
actually didn't write down anything about Ricky Gervais at all. Where's my pen? Damn it, Tom. Hello, I go. Oh, God. Now make sure you have your list. List is right here in my pocket. Do you think there's any no. chance I should do my Tom material? It's the only heterosexual chunk I have. Girls, get stand in the back and get drunk and laugh. Let's go. I'm worried because it's a nightclub, because they don't know me. People will be mingling and drinking. And it's very different from a sit-down theater audience. I got to win him over. Um, okay, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the wonderful Kathy Griffin. Well, I think you should know that they gave me a list of words I'm not supposed to use. I was f***ing this black clap the other day. Um, okay, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce you to the wonderful Kathy Griffin. This is my first time being in London, performing in London, and this is a beautiful garage, isn't it? It's a beautiful, it's a gorgeous basement. Um, no, thank you for coming. I, I'm so excited. I have lot, normally I don't like to look at my notes, but I have all new material. So I want to tell you about my trip. First of all, I think you should know that they gave me a list of words. I'm not supposed to use. <laughs> and I promise I would never share it with anyone. So here we go. <laughs> and don't turn on me because honestly, I don't know what some of these are and I'm sure they're heinous. <laughs> heinous for, and I apologize in advance. Beat off is on here. Beat off is fine, right? Beat off is just a little this, right? BFD. Blad clat? Anybody? It's in. It's back in the act then. If, it's, if I can't even shock you in your English, it's in. I was f***ing this blad clap the other day. And I, all, right. Uh, all right, I have to tell you, I, I, I had a treat last night, which is um, Graham Norton agreed to be on the show, and we walked up and down Old Compton for about an hour. And, and by the way, can we cut the sh The Old Compton gays are f***ing scary. All right, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Los Angeles and the gays there there's like a certain neighborhood and they all walk around without shirts on and they all have six packs and they've been at the tanning salon and they're drinking wheatgrass juice um, not to offend love but uh, I couldn't buy a gay with his teeth last night what? I'm sorry the audience was really nice it was packed and uh, they laughed at just about everything thank you you guys I thought the show was absolutely fantastic. She really hit the target audience really well. Her American humour somehow magically translated to the UK humour. I think deep down everyone's crying out for Kathy Griffin. I think the UK was a success. I'm definitely still D-list, but now I'm D-list around the world. And by around the world, I mean America and one other country. Next on My Life on the D-List. We're here in New York City, and I'm going to receive an award from the Irish American Magazine. I can't make fun of Ireland and there's kids here. Well, f*** that. All right, so I have an exciting announcement, which is the Irish Tourism Board is inviting us all to Ireland. Oh, that's awesome. I'm headed back to Europe after my first UK trip, but this time, it's personal. See the tower up there? Well, that's where your people are from. Oh, wow. We've come here to this gorgeous park to spread my dad's ashes and give him a great place to rest forever. I hope you like this space. I think it's perfect. Previously on My Life on the D-List, my mom is still living with me on a probationary basis. So you're gonna do Tom's shirt and not oh, mine? Yes. Well, my shirt has more wrinkles. No, your shirt looks fine. <laughs> oh, what's that? That's super Englishy. Team Griffin headed out to London to promote My Life on the D-List for British television. You're watching Kathy Griffin's Wild Celebrity Kingdom. Right. And I did everything I could to get in those tabloids. Oh, come on. Sorry, I had too much to drink. And Kathy? What? You made your UK press debut. Perfect. Okay. Job well done, team. Yeah. yeah. You called? Well, they came, came I fell. Okay. okay, here's the thing. Get out of my way, you A-list boys. My Prada shoes are as good as yours. Let's talk about 
not Oprah. All right, so. All right, I worship her. I'm human, I get it. I worship her and think she's ridiculous because she thinks she's Jesus. And yes, Oprah does. When Oprah gets a paper cut, she's like, oh, stigmata? No, Oprah. No, it's a paper cut. We all get them. But look, it's right here like baby Jesus. No, it's not. You're not Jesus. I love to make fun of Oprah because she has it coming, but she does do some good things. And I could do a few good things. I don't have the mansion in Montecito like she does. You know what I mean? I don't have the hot girlfriend. But I can still give. Company meeting. I've had another genius idea. That's going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to go to the hood, and okay. we're going to give ten thousand dollars. Ten ten thousand. Ten thousand of my own money, which kills me, to single working moms. Like we'll do bus stops, and where it looks like some poor woman's going to her fourth job of the day. I want to be the redheaded Oprah, and do Oprah-like acts of generosity. So, but mostly, I just like the tons of publicity that she gets for everything she does. Okay, so here's the key. How can I do it so that it ends up on some, someone's blog or... Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, you gotta film. Oh, yeah, it's gotta exactly. be, okay, but I'm gonna look like an asshole if I say, oh, and then I filmed it and sent the film in. One of your untrustworthy assistants leaked it. <gasps> how could you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's how it's gonna go down. I give out thousands of dollars in cash and the most reputable magazines put me on their covers for my humanitarian efforts. I've got to get the publicist on this. Can you get anybody to cover it? Like, can you call like the Herald Examiner or anyway, Star? We should try the Star. Just get it done. Now I need the cash. Got to call the accountant. I need ten thousand dollars in twenties. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> now a lot of these women only speak Spanish, so luckily one of my gays, Adam, is fluent. Hola, cómo está, mi amigo Adam, por favor. Okay, so are you free to do this tomorrow morning? Yeah. Oh, thank God. So my team has 24 hours to brand me as the benevolent and giving redheaded Oprah. All right, meeting adjourned. All right. Olay. Oh, <laughs> Mom? Yeah? I've finally done something to make you proud. Oh, good. Oh, God. Look. Oh, my God. I'm I on the cover. America. Well, I'm one of the hot 100 Irish Americans, and as you know, I take my Irish American status very, very seriously. So it's an honor. Ah, oh, you look like a beautiful Colleen. I have beautiful a little Irish, Irish Colleen. Sure. Oh, um, yeah. I like how out of all of my accomplishments, <laughs> this is what you're most proud of. That is and like your we, porn. I know. That yeah, is your is porn. This is my porn. Yeah. I'm not just a shallow cover girl. I also get to go to New York and get an award from the Irish American Magazine. Jessica! Which number? Jessica is hooking me up in New York with the latest of my D-list dates. And this time, it's rocker turned motivational speaker, Andrew WK. Okay, I've never heard of the guy, but Jessica and Tiffany know who he is. And that's the criteria. If Jessica and Tiffany have heard of him, I'm fucking him. So I'm calling Robert Verdi, host of Fashion Police and a real style guru, for help on what to wear. Kathy? Robert? Gorgeous. Oh. What's going on? Can you make my fantasies come true? I need two different kinds of outfits for New York. I need a fuck me outfit for my date with rocker Andrew WK and casual business attire for the Irish American Awards. And I don't want to mix them up. I was wondering if we could get our shop on. What are, what are we shopping for? I want anything that has a fancy label and is expensive. High fashion, high fashion. Exactly. Now, are you prepared to get me the Sharon Stone discount? <laughs> Where do you want the discount? Well, I call it the Sharon Stone discount because I have a fantasy that Sharon Stone goes to any fashion place in New York and they just give her, automatically give her 30% off whatever she wants. I would assume that she gets a lot for free. I think it's 100% off. Ouch! <laughs> All I want is to be treated like a goddamn celebrity. You are a goddamn celebrity. Well, we'll see how Gabbana feels about that. <laughs> I can get you this, Kim. All right, well, I'll let you go, and I so look forward to seeing you. Bye. God love Robert, but he thinks he can get me discounts from all the big couture houses. What do they give a shit? Oh, if we can only get Kathy Griffin to wear our gown, they'll fly off the shelves.
I've got the loot. All right, so here's $10,000 in gosh. cash. Thank yep. God. Start nice. dividing it into clumps of hundreds. Okay. Okay. Today, I'm going to be the redheaded Oprah. I'm handing out $10,000 in cash to women who need it. All right, um, videographer, getaway driver, translator, bodyguard. I hope it's like Oprah when she gives him something and she says, I'm giving you $300! Like that, and they cry. Let's go. Okay. Okay, let's get her. Let's get her. Hello. Hola. Enjoy. Solamente quiere. Why not? Es por nada. Es, <laughs> es por yeah, nada. Here. Solamente es it's para. It's women helping women. Porque todos necesitan extra al, al, algunas veces. It's a hundred dollars. Por lo que sea. It's a hundred dollars. Por... No, thank you. Wait, stop. You don't want two hundred dollars? I just want to give you this. No. Nope. Okay. Ay, lo siento. Okay. Well, all right. Well, Siento, no, we're apologizing? Yeah, I'm apologizing. <laughs> well, great, I'm 0 for 3. For some reason, they don't look at me and think Oprah. Not even a redheaded Oprah. All right, this is where we get tough. <laughs> These women are taking this goddamn money. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of negotiating. All, All right, I'm just shoving hundreds of dollars in their hand and saying, take it. Everybody needs a little help now and again. Are you Mi the mom? Darle dinero solamente para ayudarte. Okay. You're a hard working woman? Solamente para ayudarle, porque estás. Okay. And women should help women. Mujeres deben ayudar mujeres. Okay. Muchas gracias. Uh -huh. Come on. Gracias. De nada. Well, that's a start. The tide is turning. Why are you going to give me money? I do it a few times a year just because to do it. Who are you? Kathy Griffin is my name. Is it real? Yes, you can count it. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Everybody needs a helping hand. Yes, ma'am. That's what I say. So, here you go. Enjoy, enjoy. Thank you so much. All right, everybody needs help now again. It's so much. It's, it's so okay, though. Thank you. Oh, so my God. Oh, thank you. So, I give it to the grateful crossing guard lady, and then she's like, thanks. And then she grabs Tom and hugs him and starts sobbing and saying, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He's like, you're welcome. Tom took all my thunder. Excuse me, he didn't, hey, I gotta... he didn't even contribute. <laughs> Typical. Tom, did you at least correct her? I, she kept grabbing oh. me. I heard him say, just let it out. It's okay. <laughs> oh. Just let it out. This is what I do. I'm Tom. <laughs> it's The my... white male Oprah. <laughs> All right, so what's going on with the Star Magazine? Star is gonna meet us on Western and Sunset. Hi. I'm Sandra, hey, I'm Star. I'm Kathy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what are we, what are you, are you filming a movie? What are you doing? I'm being the redheaded Oprah. I'm a reporter with Star Magazine. And I came out to see what Kathy Lee was doing. I'm handing out hundreds of dollars here on the streets of Los Angeles. And Oprah is a friend of yours. This is your. No. I'm a big fan of Kathy Lee's. I've been doing this all morning. Ten thousand dollars of my own money. No, was this I'm really? Seven was this really Oprah's idea? The Star Reporter is a little confused, and I think she thinks that Oprah told me to do this, or that I'm working in tandem with Oprah in some way. She's kind of a mess. Well, that's true. So, can I see you in action? Yeah. Okay. Solamente para ayudar. Por favor, es regalo. Yeah. Sí. Thank you. Are you taking pictures or no pictures? Yes. Thank you. Did you get it? Hold on. Oh, the battery just ran out. Okay. Maybe they sell cameras. I'm gonna go. You're gonna go? Okay. Are you kidding me? I thought she was gonna bring a photographer like, with a fancy camera. <laughs> And the poor girl that I gave the money to was like posing and posing, and I could tell she was like, okay, this much hugging isn't even worth the 200. <laughs> so I'll pay you 100 to stop hugging me. <laughs> Great, I'm giving out thousands of dollars in cash, and my only hope for publicity is a reporter with no batteries in her camera. Working 
sister. Oh, Here. If this were Oprah, I'd be on the cover of People magazine. Okay. Can I when I saw the disposable camera, it was a bad sign. So I'm giving away lots of money in a very Oprah-like fashion. And my only hope for publicity is this reporter who's running around trying to find batteries for her camera. Because I think she might just be getting her nails done. <laughs> oh my god, Manny Penny's five dollars. It's your lucky day. Really? I yes, I am handing out money to women. Really? Take no all the money. Yes, why not? Oh my gosh, come on, Manny go. Candy, here you go, come on. When I saw the disposable camera, it was a bad sign. All right. There was no long lens or tripod or camera's assistant. If this were Oprah, I'd be on the cover of People magazine. Mariah Carey would be off somewhere singing. I'd have a designer gown on. There, there wouldn't be a dry eye in the house. Working sister, oh, here. Thank All right, I want a hug. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Kathy Lee wanted to give out some money and do good, which is great. It makes everybody happy. Oprah is such an inspiration. At the end of the day, I am $10,000 poorer. I don't know what's going to happen with the star because the reporter thought I worked for Oprah. And uh, I'm going to yell at Tiffany if she did not videotape it properly because I want it on YouTube in 48 hours to create goodwill. The kind of goodwill that sells tickets, baby. Put it under her collar, like little boots. I like. Oh, I love it. I'm like a young white Diana Ross. Sure. We're here in New York City, and I'm going to receive an award from the Irish American Magazine. They're Irish and they're proud. They're proud of it. There's going to be leprechauns and shamrocks and some terrorism. There can be children there, too. Oh, Christ. Why are you getting an award? Why are kids at an Irish American award show? Somebody's got to cook the food. <laughs> it's like the old days? Yeah. So they're making porridge? I am sure I'm tired making this porridge all day. I just there. turned four. Hillary Clinton is supposed to be there, as well as Martin Sheen, who are also proud Irish Americans. Although I don't think people knew about Hillary. She might be like 1 16th, because I think she's going to go get a Navajo Indian award at 9 o'clock tonight after this. I'm going to try to talk to her. I think the only way you can talk to Hillary Clinton is to probably make an assassination attempt, which I will fail at, but I also might meet her. We should go. Let's go. I'm beside myself to be a nominee. Um, I just want to thank the people who have supported me along the way, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and every leprechaun I've ever met in a field dancing on a four-leaf clover. Look, I'm just happy to have a trip to New York. All right, seriously. My dad was very proud of his Irish heritage, so this award really does mean something to me because I know he'd be happy about it. Hello? Mom? Oh, hi, Kev. I wanted to know, did both of your parents come over on the boat steerage and that whole thing? Yes, with six kids and she was pregnant. Now, Mom, and why don't you and Bill O'Reilly want the Mexicans to come live here again? <laughs> <laughs> the gays love you? Is that what they said? Yeah. I'm like Cher. That's good. Almost. Thanks. I'm like Cher Light. So I'm waiting for Senator Clinton to come, and maybe I could just say I'm a big fan, something like that. It's a brush with greatness moment for her. I'm trying to sort of get in the photo without like trying to pose. Oh, this is exhausting. Could I trouble you to wait inside in about two minutes? No, you can't. I I'm can't a, no, no, I'm a recipient of an award winner. And you're in my shot. Okay. Her 
Secret Service was more nervous about me than anybody. I'm not kidding. Like, they were eyeballing me after a while because I've been acting like an insane stalker. And you want me to stand back here? I can stand back here. That would be great. Yeah, I'll do that. Perfect. And I'm feeling alone and frightened, and I just wish that she would hold me. I'm gonna BS my way into that private reception, and I'll get a photo, even if it's just me with the back of her head. I have that same photo with Diana Ross, and it's an eight by 10 that's framed in my home. All the photographers are taking the picture. I just stood behind her and smiled in every picture. That wouldn't work. I just literally walked in front of her smiling and posing. I was practically putting my head on her shoulder. It was super creepy. I creeped myself out tonight. We have with us tonight Chicago's Kathy Griffin. Now we've warned her that she can't slag off the Irish and that there's children present and I don't know what she's gonna do, but um, <laughs> would you please welcome Kathy Griffin. Thank you. I can't make fun of Ireland and there's kids here, well f that. Look everybody. Uh, have you ever been prouder of your people? Um, what's up you crazy mix? Look at you. All drunk, I love it. Who's half in the bag? Show of hands. Come on, be honest. This, is, this award is very prestigious because you get one uh, if you show up. So thank you very much. I actually came and therefore I got one. Now look, I um, also, I, this is ironic, this is not my first award. I hosted the Gay Porn Awards. What? Yeah, that's right. And they also gave me one, so you're in good company. Uh, you know, I come from a tradition of, of wise-cracking Irishmen, and uh, my, my dad actually just passed away about two weeks ago, 90 years old, and my dad, I know, my dad was from, uh, uh, how do you say it again, this town? Caharsivine. Caharsivine? Yeah. I appreciate the Irish sense of humor. I carry it on. I hope I do you proud. Thanks very much. I appreciate this. My acceptance speech went over very well because it was inappropriate. This is uh, smaller than the Gay Porn Award. I don't mean to brag, but it was larger and gay more lick. of a... Oh, Gay Lick. Okay, good. Well, as long as there's gay in there. I had um, a lot of people come up to me and say, you were brilliant. You took the piss out of the evening. Stuff like that, which is encouraging. to go shopping with Robert Verdi, stylist extraordinaire. <laughs> oh, make my dreams come true. <laughs> I need an outfit for my date tonight with Andrew WK, and I don't know what his normal hookers wear, but I plan to look hot. Do you know who this guy is? No. None of the gays know. <laughs> Why am I wasting my time with some breeder none of the gays have even heard of? <laughs> so what do I have to wear? Well, let's find out. I think, I mean, we could start from the ground up. How about this? Oh, four to fifty dollars? Good Christ. I do love that. Love. I like Where did shoes. you get that Jack and Jill shit? Like, At the Jack and Jill Espatorium. <laughs> how much are these? Six fifty. Now how much would they be if I was, say, Sandra Bullock? Six fifty. What about With the, tax. the Bullock discount? Ain't no discount, honey. <laughs> I'm not buying the gay at Jeffrey, and here's why. A-listers, they all get discounts. They make the most money, and they get the most discounts. In fact, half of them don't even pay for their clothes. So I want a piece of that pie. Oh, I forgot to tell you, um, I'm actually getting shoes for Oprah. So we'll go ahead and take the usual Oprah discount, because she wanted me to run by and pick up some shoes. No, she Remember how she called? No discount for Oprah either, sorry. <laughs> Gail? Mm -hmm. First Lady Laura Bush, I forgot to tell you, I'm also picking up some <laughs> shoes for her. She wanted me to swing by. You think with all the 
Oprah money they make here, they could give a goddamn discount. I'm in the end stages of cancer. And my doctor suggested as therapy, I should... Shop. I can answer that. Jeffrey, no discount, even for Oprah. How may I help you? You gotta be honest. That's the key to sales, girls. Honesty. How about if I blow Jeffrey? Like, is there a Jeffrey? There is. Does yeah. he like blowjobs? Mm. No discounts here. I got nothing to wear on my big date tonight. So I'm moving on because let me tell you, there's gonna be a lot of couture houses that are gonna be thrilled to give me a huge Reese Witherspoon like discount. I just haven't found them yet. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm allergic to paying full price. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to Patricia Fields. Though. Then we met Andre, who's a very specific kind of drag queen because Andre dresses as a woman and yet keeps the full beard, which I find to be edgy, while wearing a sparkly mini dress. Okay, you know what? You can't wear this. Jean Bonnet was buried in this. <laughs> hey, what about Obsequent Beret? Patricia Fields' clothing is a little too wild for me, but I think if you're a little boy who grew up maybe wanting to be a big, tall girl, it's perfect for you. What would Britney wear to rehab? <sighs> That's what I want. Mm. I don't want her to miss one pocket of my cellulite. I'll take them. It's very specific. It's, mm-hmm. I love it, you're all fools. <laughs> This is a statement, and of course. The clothes are so nutty here that I don't even want a discount. I'm actually afraid they'll offer me one and then I'll have to buy wacky underpants with peace signs and paisley on them. Have a great day. I still don't have anything to wear for my big day tonight. Robert has to come up with plan C. They give everybody a discount. It's a discount here. store. Correct. <laughs> Lowman's is high end if you look through all the crap. We have to find the back room, which is upstairs. What's that? It's where if one piece comes in from like a high end designer, it doesn't actually make it to the floor. It goes to the back room where there's this personal shopper who places it. It's like adoption in the right home. Ha ha! Really cute. Really? Yeah, it's sexy, it's flirtatious, it's a perfect thing for a date. Like me. That's perfect. Like All right. Done? Take it, yeah. I don't think Sharon Stone comes here, but I made a score anyway. I have a really cute outfit for tonight's date. Thank you very much, appreciate it. I got a big discount here. Hi. Here at Lowman's, everyone can feel like a star. You're gonna look just as good as Sharon Stone did two years ago. I will? just a half an hour before my big date with Andrew WK, and I still don't know exactly who he is. Yeah. We have to get Andrew to sing to you. Okay, let's get the party started started. <laughs> I would like it if Andrew would sing to me one of his party songs, because he has several songs with party themes. There's party time, party hard, let's party now, partying, party girl, party boy, party mama, and party shut your mouth. Tiff wants to know the worst date you've been on. Oh, countless. Countless. Wait, what about the one where you had to sneak out? Yeah. Leave this house naked. Wait, the cockroaches. And take my cockroaches. clothes. Cockroaches. The cockroaches all over the floor. Oh, Wait, what about the midget? Yeah, and I dated a midget. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. He's like, hey, you want to go out? <laughs> make him sound like a lollipop. Hey, you want to go out? He's also a member of the lollipop guild. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I brought him home to my parents. My dad goes, she said you'd be taller. <laughs> and my mom was like, Johnny! <laughs> Jesus Christ, the poor kid. The Come poor on, he's kid. not a kid, he's 30. He's a midget. <laughs> you know, when I say I'm not about looks, I'm not kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later, maybe. <laughs> Don't leave the light on for me. Nice to meet nice you. Time. Andrew is taking me to his speaking engagement, which is sort of like performance art. Hi. 
I'm in New York and I'm about to go on one of my publicity friendly dates with rocker turned motivational speaker Andrew WK. Oh, where are we going? We're going to go downtown a bit and I'm doing a lecture there. Okay. Andrew like is taking me to his speaking engagement, which is a Q&A free form discussion off Broadway. I think I should tell you, I met someone at the Andrew W.K. show. Are you going to ask questions? I have definitely uh, tried not to think about it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not, not yet. Oh. Whoa. Without further ado, welcome Andrew W. Andrew's lecture is sort of like performance art. That's what I call something when I don't know what the f it is. Earlier today, I was thinking about what was going to happen right now. And I realized that I hadn't planned anything, and that was a big part of the plan, was to not have anything planned. That became a plan, so I had to keep canceling out every idea I had as I had it, even if the idea was to cancel out the idea. Here's the thing, he doesn't like a plan. I can tell you that right now. He does not like plan or plans, or planning, or having planned something. And he's mad at himself that not liking to plan feels like a plan. Does anyone have any questions to start a conversation? I, I was just wondering, like, noise in general, what you think of it, because, you know, a lot of people listen to it and they say this is complete garbage, but I think it's like, almost a step up from music. Not I think if I could have been high, I would get it because I would be in the same dimension as the others there. Or I could just feel- I was in the fifth dimension. We can do, we can say. They were in the third. Right now I'm uh, at the point where, because I, I really love quitting jobs. It's probably my favorite thing to do. <laughs> the world is my oyster and I feel like, I just quit my job and I'm gonna have so much fun right now. Congratulations on doing that. That's a great feeling. I like the girl whose favorite thing is to quit jobs, which is fun until you're homeless. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. I don't know if he's the guy for me, but then that would be a plan and he doesn't want to have a plan. Although to not have a plan is a plan. I'm planning, I'm probably not going out with him again. I might as well be dating the guy next to me because I'm spending more time with him than Andrew. So I'm trying to make it work. I, uh, I have dogs. I have a German Shepherd and a, and a Chihuahua. <laughs> what are your dogs' names? Heidi and uh, Josie Cuervo. Is the, it was supposed to be a boy, but it's a girl Chihuahua. <laughs> uh, and she loves along? to smoke, let me tell you. They get along, Leave except for... Leave your cigarettes. They smoke the ganj. Yeah. Hell yeah. Her name is Kathy Griffin, and she rocks my world. My brain wouldn't let me register that that was like that famous person that I've obviously seen before. It was like, who? This is a robot that, my, that is here just to taunt me. And it's like, no, guess what, dude? Not only is she not sitting with anybody, but you get to have that seat right next to her. Like, it, 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 a double dose of like happiness right there. Um, I'm sorry. And. Uh, <laughs> So did you have fun? Yeah. I did. I, I'm so glad you did. Andrew's a great guy. I really like him. But I don't think his peeps are my peeps. No one at a show had a rainbow flag. No one called him girl once. All right, bye. Bye. And no one took our picture, so it's going to be an early night. Jessica, Tiffany, send a limo immediately. I'm not taking a taxi. I'm too famous. <laughs> All right, so I have an exciting announcement, which is because of getting my very prestigious award from the Irish American Magazine, the Irish Tourism Board is um, inviting us all to Ireland. 
Oh, that's awesome. awesome. I know. Great. Isn't it great? Does everyone there look like us? Yes, a lot of redheads in mm -hmm. Ireland. And um, the kids are absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You know my mom is the youngest of 16. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Name all, see if you can name all your siblings. Michael and uh, Thomas, uh, Christine, and Catherine, Patrick, George, what? and then Mary, and Agnes, and uh, let me see, uh, Angeline, mm -hmm. Joseph, mm -hmm. Uh, John, uh, Irene, how oh, were we? James, and me, Margaret. That's only 14. You forgot two kids. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Oh my gosh, who did I forget? Is there a fin bar? <laughs> no, no fin bar. Oh my gosh, I can't remember who Seamus? I was. Oh, Francis. Francis. My sister Francis. Now you're just making them up. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm like so Anne Shaw. No, I'm not. <laughs> My parents are very proud to be Irish, so I can't imagine being in Ireland without paying tribute to my dad. So what can we do for a tribute for dad? Any ideas? Uh, we can do like a toast in a pub. Would you Fine. like that? That would be wonderful. There you go. Okay. My mom actually told me privately that she would really like it if I spread some of my dad's ashes in Ireland, in the old country. So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to doing that. That'll be nice. But it's a beautiful country. and I'm connecting with my drunken roots. See the tower up there? Well, that's where your people are from. Oh, wow. You have invited all the Griffins in Ireland for a pint. A pint on my dad tonight at 8 o'clock. You have no idea what you brought upon yourself, <laughs> Kathy. I'm finally in Ireland, the place my mom has told me so much about. So I'm looking forward to looking up her family's people and paying tribute to my dad. I have a feeling this is gonna be a very emotional trip for me. This is the first time I've driven on the other side of the street with the steering wheel on the other side of the car. <laughs> How does it feel? The first time you're driven on the other side of the it's street. It's a little yeah. nerve wracking. My first stop in Ireland is a reception in my honor in Drogheda, which is the town that my mom's family is from. reception for somebody on the do list. I'd like to take this opportunity to appoint Patty as a town crier for the town crier. <laughs> a town crier is protected under legislation uh, mm. that they can't be hindered or heckled by performing their duties. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Thank you so what much. Well, I'm glad it's not Village Idiot. That was nice. I heard I was in the running. That, I like the town crier thing, no legislation. I'll remember that when I'm in a club in Boise, Idaho, and they don't respect me. So uh, thanks very much, you guys. See the tower right up at the very top yes. of the town up there? Well, that's where your people are from. Oh, yeah, wow. This is my mom's hood. This is it. This is my mom's New Jack City. So it's amazing. What started out as one innocent evening in New York ends up with me in Ireland. We have a Michael Corbley from Sunday's Gate. No! He's a relative of yours. Oh He's my related. goodness! Oh, Mr. Corbley, yeah. it's so great to meet you. That's my grandfather's name. It's such a thrill and an honor. I met so many people that really researched stuff about my mom and her family. It's unbelievable. That's great. That's fun. <laughs> After hanging out with those straight people in Drogheda, I really need to spend some time with the Dublin gays. So I had to call an international gay favor, and tonight I'm hosting Gay Bingo. Please give your warmest clappity clappity hands together. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kathy Griffin! I'm gonna be honest. They're, in fact, they're just straight guys who are priests. So I'm very excited to see all of you. Let the games begin. 48, 4 or 8? Number 18. 3, 3. The number of brain cells Courtney Love has left. 7 and 4 is number 74. Kathy, you know big 
bingo very well, don't you? Oh, 69. I like the excitement of bingo because I think it's the game that's not just for old Jews anymore. And we don't have a very big Jewish community here in Brooklyn, but if we did have Jewish people, that, that would be a really funny guy. Is it me or did that drag queen totally diss me? One in three, unlucky for some, number 13. So is Michael Jackson. That's his favorite age. Oh, they're still so stretchy and new. Oh, I shot the gay bar. F*** you. I bombed at Gay Bingo in Dublin. I did not think Gay Bingo was going to be such a rough room. I like how they acted offended at every joke I made. Also, how do you play bingo without the letters? Yeah, I don't know. That's the letter. Yeah. Oh, 69. That's why that joke bombed. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't love you. Oh, how you doing? I did have a good drunken gay super fan in Dublin, and he wants me to call his friend on the cell. Hey, Katty, say hello to him. Ian? We're going back to his gaff, and you're coming, we're going to get mad at him. He's going to get mad over you. <laughs> mad elephant. Mad elephant. Tell him we're going to get cracked I'm elephant. I'm going to get cracked elephant. <laughs> it's my first day here. I'm getting used to the accent. I love it. Love it. <laughs> I'll let you tap it the morning to you. Thank you, Kathy. Bye. I couldn't understand him. Could you understand him? That was the weirdest He spit in my face, too, by the way. He sprayed me like a spritzer bottle, like hairspray. I'm sorry. I need Kleenex. I, I have to wipe the Irish gay spittle off my face. All right, what's the plan today? Sightseeing? Castles. We're going to go sightseeing, all of us, but first I have to embark on my international press junket, which means one radio show in Ireland. Okay, let's go. Ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. On the radio show, I'm inviting all the Griffins to come to a bar and have a drink on me to pay tribute to my dad. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Guys, Tom, my turn now. Hi, Tom. How are you? Welcome to me, too. My next guest is renowned for her merciless take on celebrities. Unbelievably, she thinks Ethan Hawke has gotten ugly. <laughs> Poor old Britney. I know. I think she's going off the deep end. But she is. And also went to that uh, weird, like, three-hour-a-day rehab. Mm. Yes. Where you go in the morning, and then you go shopping in the, in afternoon, the afternoon, and then you go to a nightclub that night. And then you go back to rehab the next day. And then you put on your underwear. Yeah, that's mm. my kind of rehab. You have invited all the Griffins mm -hmm. in Ireland. That's right to Johnny Fox's pub mm -hmm. for a pint. A pint on my dad tonight at 8 o'clock. You have no idea what you've brought upon yourself, Kathy. <laughs> but, but they have to prove it. They need ID. Yeah, you need ID up in Johnny Fox's tonight. Mm -hmm. If you think you can buy an Irish person one pint and expect to get away <laughs> at that, you have something else coming to you. Thank you so much. It was a Thanks pleasure. A million. Cheers. Thank you. We're in Dublin. We're going to see the sights. We're going to find a four-leaf clover. We're going to bathe with Irish Spring. And eat Lucky, Lucky Charms. Charms. Alright, I guess it's a... Cover girl. <laughs> yeah, like a, you're like a bad guard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Fox's Pub in Dublin, and I announced on the radio that if your name is Griffin, you get a free pint on my dad. So we'll see who showed up tonight. It's true. Need ID. All right. That way. Are you Griffins? Yeah. I'm Kathy Griffin. It's great Hi. to meet you. All the drinking Griffins have shown up for the toast to my dad in Johnny Fox's Pub. And let's face it, they just would have shown up anyway for the free drink. You boys Griffins? Yeah, we're from Christmas, yeah. Oh, really? So where are you from? Yeah, I'm from down the road. I'm from uh, just up the road, so. And where's that? Just up the road, I'm down the road. I did not understand a word you said. <laughs> <laughs> My parents have told me so many stories about being here in Ireland and they're very proud of their heritage. So it's fitting that tonight we're going to toast my dad in a real Irish pub. Could you put your hands together, please, and welcome Kathy Griffin to the stage, please. Thank you. Give her a big round of applause. Come on. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Kathy Griffin, and my father passed away on 17 February. And he loved Ireland very, very much, and he loved a pint. So this is to my dad. Slaughter. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you so much. We took a picture that's going to mean a lot to my mom. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. You know, my dad really was a special guy, and it was great to come back here. It was a much quieter way to memorialize him. Now he's going to be on the wall here at Johnny Fox's Pub in Ireland forever, where he belongs, having a pint. We've come here to this gorgeous park to spread my dad's ashes and give him a great place to rest forever. I hope you like this space. I think it's perfect. We've come here to this gorgeous park in Ireland to spread my dad's ashes and give him a great place to rest forever because he loves it here so much. I kind of feel like he's with me today. Hey, Tom, what do you think about here? I don't think you can go wrong here. I was wondering if, if each of you guys had any kind of memory about dads because you all knew him really well. So it doesn't have to be anything particularly profound or anything, but before we put him to his final resting place, Jessica, what do you got? It's really simple, but I just loved every time he called every girl a dolly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just loved it. It put me in a good mood, whether mm -hmm. I was, you know, just in the room, hey, dolly. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh. That's, we were all his dolly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, what's yours? Well, I didn't know him that long. At one of your parties, he came up to me and asked me if I would go to his funeral. <laughs> And he said he wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that big, it'd be small, just a few friends, but he'd like me to be there. So. And how long did you know him? For about three months. <laughs> <laughs> but I was happy to do that for him. Uh, I just remember at uh, Thanksgiving, you had a table set aside for desserts, and you didn't want him, you didn't want anybody to get a dessert yet. So I kept a look out for him, and he just cut into the pie and stole <laughs> some pie for himself. My mom put dad's ashes in two prescription bottles because old people love their meds. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I just want to say, Dad, that we bring you to the old country, which you love so much. It was such a treat for you to go to with Mom. We hope you like this space. I think it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so Ma says we each take a little ashes and we just kind of throw them wherever. All right. All right. Okay, in your hand. Okay, hand. Okay, you ready? <laughs> yep. Look out, I'm on the count of three. One, two, three. I love you, Dad. I wish your mom could have been here. Oh, I know. They loved it here. <laughs> okay, give me Kleenex. <laughs> here, that's all right. Seriously. I want to tell you a funny story. Okay, okay. Look, it's been a pretty rough year between my divorce and my dad's passing. It hasn't been easy. But luckily, I got Team Griffin here to lean on, and they're the best friends you could ever have. The best friends money could buy.